good morning. How are you this Monday morning? My name's Amy Burrows. I'm with you all morning today and I've got two guests, so I'm being spoilt rotten. I've got Tilly Rose and Paul Clark in this morning. And we've got some really lovely projects, some Christmassy and some just general projects that you might want to be getting on with. Perhaps if you're still not getting in on that Christmas train just yet, you're not on the way there and you want to get on with something just for yourself to enjoy. So should we have a little look at the menu of what's coming up on today's show? And at eight o'clock, we've got the Thread Star Garland with Tilly. Then nine o'clock, treat your pet. So we've got Paul Clark in, we're doing a dog coat. 10 o'clock, Tilly's Stitch Journal, which is absolutely beautiful, really lovely. And 11 o'clock, a Christmas roundup. So all of your favorites, we've got the draft excluder, a stocking, and we've also got the gingerbread doorstop back at 11. So let me show you what's actually coming. We'll have a little sneak peek of what's coming up. So this hour, we're looking at the um, Threads printable fabric, which is so clever. I've never had a show with it before. And you can print with an inkjet printer straight onto fabric as you would with paper and then use photographs or images that you want to use in your project. So we've got a star garland here that Tilly's made this morning. And you can just see some of the little photo detail that you can, um, we, we've got this morning, Tilly's put together an exclusive collection of pictures. You can just see some of those on little pockets. Then at nine o'clock is the dog coat. Now, we don't have a dog behind the desk, but what we do have is a piñata in the shape of a donkey. So we're going to just pretend that this is a dog. So here we go. Just suspend your imagination for a second or two. And there it is. A little dog on our desk this morning. So we've got a really lovely dog coat with Paul Clark in Liberty fabric. So if you are going to spoil your dog this Christmas, how beautiful is that? And let's just imagine that this is, you know, a nice little... Westie or I don't know, uh, what else could it be? A little poodle or anything, anything you fancy. But a lovely dog coat at nine. Then at 10, oh no, it's the stitch journal, it's this one here. This is lovely, really beautiful. It's like a um, sort of a mood board almost, but with stitches and it's a really lovely way of showcasing all of the stitches that your machine can do. Really beautiful. So we're looking at that at 11 with the Elna 680. And then 11 o'clock, is a Christmas recap. So we've got this lovely little gingerbread doorstop, which was so, so popular last time. So we brought it back to show you again today. And then we've also got a Christmas cracker draft excluder and some big um, stockings to share with you as well. So some of your Christmas favourites. How lovely is that? I wish they were edible. Little jelly tots on the roof. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Oh, they're telling me upstairs they are edible. I don't think I'm going to try that this morning. So let's just pop those in there. Now, also, get in touch. Let me hear from you. Come on, cheer me up this Monday morning. This is my last day at Sewing Quarter until the new year. I'm off to Panto, so I need to hit, come on, share some, share some pictures with me. Come and say hello. What are you up to today? Um, you can get in touch on the website. So if you go to sewingquarter.com, you just go to the watch icon at the top of the page and you scroll down underneath the live feed. There you go. You can see that little box there and you can drop us a message. If you've got any questions for Tilly or for Paul, you can um, ask those there. They go straight up to our producer upstairs. Say hello to Amy, please do say hello to me or say hello to our little donkey pinata. And then underneath that will be all of the products from today's show. So those are yesterday's, but that will be updated as we go through this morning. Then also, if you are going to send in some photos, so maybe you've used the um, inkjet printable fabric before, show us what you've made. You can send those, studio at sewingquarter.com. And we'll try and show a couple of those this morning, whether you've incorporated them in cushions or bags or whatever you might have used them for. Really clever. We've been looking at that today. Well, this morning in the office when we got here, we were having a play around with the printer. And you can print literally anything, any photo. It comes out in really high resolution, so it's really lovely and clear, just like a print would be on paper, but on a malleable fabric that you can use in projects. So it comes in three different uh, variations, so three different types of fabric. I'll start, first of all, um, with the cotton poplin. So as I said, you use that with an inkjet printer. It's washable. You don't have to set it with heat or steam. You can just run that through your regular printer. And with this as well, you also get a link to six um, exclusive images that Tilly's put together, a collection of images um, that you can use and you can print those out and use them in some of your Christmas projects. So that's the poplin one. I will go through with Tilly the difference in the fabric so you get an idea of how they feel different, how they behave differently. Then we've also got a cotton twill. So that's got more of a sort of diagonal weave, almost like a denim. And again, comes with those, um, that collection of images from Tilly. And then the last one is our silk. So a really lovely sort of lustrous, silky feel to this one. Um, again, just depending on what you might be incorporating it into. So that's our silk. Three different options there. So poplin, twill, and your silk. 
Now we've also got some kits. So we're looking at this garland that uh, Tilly's going to be making. So if you can see this here, so just incorporating the uh, little printed pictures into pockets onto the garland, if you can just see that. So these are some of the images, images that Tilly's chosen. So every bundle comes with two meters of fabric. You get half a meter of four different fabrics. And then you also get these printed templates. So you can use those to create the garland. So you've got some different size variations there that you can use. So the first one here, you've got half a metre of white. This is the one that Tilly's made up, actually. You've got half a metre of Christmas red, half a metre of charcoal, and half a metre there at the bottom of your teal. Next one is our middle bundle. So this is all uh, reds and greys in this. So you've got two different reds in here. This is our Scandi one. So if you, mainly if you wanted to pair it with a more um, sort of designed, a designer print. So again, you've got charcoal, Christmas red, bright red, and you've also got your softer grey there, slate at the top. And finally, is a purple. Just why not? If you want to do something a bit different, maybe you want to use the stars and incorporate your own pictures. This is our winter bundle. Winter? In purples? I'm not sure I'd have called it winter, but we'll go with that. So we've got purples here. So you've got, um, you've got your mauve, you've got a lilac, glacier grey, and your deep purple. Winter wonderland. So again, with all of those, you do get these sewing quarter templates. I'll take these over with Tilly and we'll have a little look. Let's take our star garland. Let's stack those up a little bit. Oh, Tilly, I'm going to have my hands full to give you a hug. One sec. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> How are Hello. you? Good morning. Mm, two days in a row. I Aren't know. I the lucky one? Well, uh, so am I. So, Good let, me just, let me just unload myself. I know, you look so you've been there. shopping already. <laughs> Talk to me, Tilly. How does this how does this work? Right. So this morning, um, I'm going to show you how you can use the threads printable fabric um, and incorporate it into a, a project for Christmas. But it you know it doesn't have to be for Christmas. But what I've put together is a selection of vintage images, um, and what I've tried to do is incorporate um, all the colour combinations we've got of the little fabric bundles. Um, you can use all of these photographs, they'll complement them um, regardless of which one you choose. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to print this out onto the fabric to show you how you can make little pockets. So if you want to make an advent calendar, you might want to um, embellish on top of the pockets and add maybe little numbers or yes. names so you could if you oh, I was going to say if you're sharing one you could have different ones to search, yeah, but you can't really you share could. an advent calendar can you with chocolate not in my house anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to so you could pop it onto there you could but I mean if you don't want to do a great big advent calendar you know I've only done a little star garland that I, um, I put a, a photograph up on my social media site showing how it goes across the fireplace so you don't have to all the banisters you could yeah, do a longer one you could do you, a really lovely one coming down the banisters and then all the way down um, um, but hopefully you'll enjoy using the images. So um, to talk about threads, um, print into, uh, inkjet printable fabric, um, I know you haven't used that no. one before. So and it's, it's a so, new, so clever. Yeah, it is so, so clever. And it, but it, I have to really, really um, stress that it's so easy to do. Um, I've had so many people um, say to me, I can't really use a computer it's a and I don't or maybe want to, it's a bit, I'm not yeah. into printer. Um, if you can print out a piece of paper, you can use this fabric in your crafting projects. So you don't have to use it with a sewing machine. You can do it all hand sewing if you don't want to, um, you know, do any actual machine sewing with it. You can use all your embroidery okay. threads on top. You can then... Um, so you can embellish afterwards Yes, you can. You can embellish loads of things. And then even if you're um, a knitter crochet, you can use the fabric in with another medium, i.e., you know, the, the yarns. Um, it, because it lends itself, it is just a piece of fabric. That's what you've got to get your head around. Well, it's that's the just thing as well. a piece it of is fabric. fabric. And I, because I... My reaction is, or is it going to be a bit like, you know, if you make um, a birthday cake and you get a printed picture on the top, yes. or if it's, if yes. sometimes when you have things that are made and they're personalised, yep. it feels a bit rigid or yep. a bit cardboardy no, and it's not really You get really none of that at all. It is actually, well, you can see because they come yes. in different types of fabric. Yes. So shall we talk about the different fabrics? We're, we've got cotton poplin. Should we start with that one? Yeah. And that's the one I'm using in the project today for the little star garland. Um, cotton poplin is sort of a general um, fine cotton that you would use for most sort of cotton projects, you know, so like table mats, um, runners we had on the show yesterday, yes. little stockings. Um, you can use your photographs in garments. Um, we're doing a garland today, but you could make up something that you could wear. Um, but it's a lightweight cotton. 
And then... Um, this is like what bed sheets would be made out of. Yes, that sort of yeah, yeah. Linings. Pillowcases, it's, yeah, it's anything a very, like that. It's something you would be really familiar yes, with. Yeah. And you might be looking at that and thinking, oh, but it, it does look like paper. It's going to be... But it peels off. Yes. So we've got the cotton poplin is on one side of your sheet. And then on the back, you've got this um, backing, which is... Um, it's like a plasticky feel on the, um, on the reverse. But that's... Um, to protect your fabric to go through your printer. So it gives it that stability. Um, your printer won't know that you're putting fabric through there. So you won't use any more. You kind of don't want it to. No, it just wants to it's just as a normal piece of paper. Okay. When you've printed out your picture, we'll show in a minute, um, you literally just, so you print your picture and you peel off your fabric off the backing. Um, and then you're ready to go to put it in a project. So you don't need to set the colour. You don't need to... No heat, no, steam, nothing like that. ironing, don't need to do any of no, that. No, it's all, all set in the threads. And that's why the company call themselves threads. It's the particular, um, the way that they've designed the fabric and it coats each individual thread is what picks up the ink, um, which gives you that real clear uh, image on all your um, so projects. So your ink is, is saturating that thread, isn't yes, it? Yes, really? it is. So then yeah. it becomes yeah. usable. Yeah. And for personalising things, and obviously for Christmas it really is, you know, exactly. that, that is, is lovely. Yes. But for anything, whether it's um, for a children's bedroom, if you wanted to do a little, little oh, storage gosh. box, or the, you could have there's so there's many. toiletry bags, makeup yes. bags, lots of things yeah. like that. Yeah. And then we've got the silk one. I'm sort of keen to get the printer going so you can we can show you how it works, but we'll just talk through the different fabrics. So you've got a silk version. Yes. So the silk gives you obviously um, a, a more of a delicate feel. If you're doing, maybe you're doing some projects like uh, maybe a makeup bag or, you know, um, anything connected with um, any celebrations, weddings, birthdays, you might want a, a, a different a feel, beautiful finish. So we've printed out a photograph in the silk yes. um, that you're going to peel off in a moment and we'll show how um, the silk looks. So a nice drape with that one. Beautiful. And, beautiful. Just, and, and again, that sort of really lovely silky lustrous yes, feel to it, it on the, yeah, on the no, front. It is. And, and actually then... that would be quite a good one. If you, we, We've got one of the um, packs of fabric called Winter Wonderland and I know you said over there winter. Yeah, because you plum. associate purple with, with winter? <laughs> well, you could put lots of sparkle with it in your embellishment, yeah. <laughs> but you might want that fluid, um, the silk sort of off balancing the colours. Uh, again, it's combining the fabric. So we've done the work for you as in choosing the colours. Choose your silk, print out your images, and it gives it a completely different feel than if you well, give it, it to... it breaks the cotton, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Suddenly it does. You've something a bit yeah. different to yeah. touch. And then finally, we've got a twill. So yes. Just show you this so one. the cotton twill is a I'm slightly thicker one. fabric, and um, it's got a, a, a diagonal weave on it. So it, you mentioned it looks a bit like denim. It's not as there thick as denim, but if you are putting it into a project... So this would be quite good if you're making big sort of chunky stockings okay. and you want some images on, because it's quite a nice... Um, heavier uh, weight of cloth but equally if you want to put it in a table runner or um, a, a table mat where you think actually I don't want it to be quite a flimsy fabric I want a little bit more um, you know uh, body feeling body it. that's yeah. the word Monday morning <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got my brain in gear yet but um, yeah so, so a little um, bit more durable as well yeah perhaps. if you wanted to use it with a canvas or something a bit heavier yes, weight you can incorporate yes. it with that and um, what was I going to say um, we saying table runners, was it on that line? Yes, what I was going to say was, sorry, my mic just moved, that was what it was, <laughs> I need to sort that out. Um, you can interchange all three. So if you uh, were doing a project, say a stocking or something like that, or a table runner, you don't feel you've got to just do it all in twill or all in poplin. You can interchange all the different fabrics and have a different texture to your project. To mix and match them. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at just how these, uh, what actually how this works. So you get okay. six sheets in here, so you can use um, sort of multiple, how would it work if you were going to just print on a section of it? Could you then run the set, if you didn't use the bottom part, um, or would you print all your images at once and then cut them? It'd be best to, to use the whole sheet, um, go because like you'd have to do the change the settings on your printer. Um, once you've cut into your fabric, um, it's got a particular finish on it so that it doesn't fray and, and um, you know, doesn't come back come off in the printer so once you start cutting into it you just need to be careful you don't get threads then going through your printer when yeah. if you're going to put it back in yeah. so just with all of these thread kits this morning you do get Tilly's put together this little collection of um, vintage pictures that you can use for Christmassy projects so with any of those the silk the twill all the poplin you do get a um, link through for this for these pictures that you can download so you can use these exact ones if you want to so putting it through oh we've had a picture sent in of someone oh look 
Here we go, oh, as I was on a lovely. cushion. I did this for my dad for his 70th birthday of all his grandchildren. So easy to use. Good luck with the pantomime, Amy. Thank you, Rachel. See, that's great. That's Isn't that lovely? I know my nan, she's probably watching this morning, actually. Um, she loves anything. You know, we usually get a calendar printed of all of our family photos for Christmas or, um, but things like cushions and anything like that. Really lovely because it's something that you can look at every day and it just reminds you of, of whatever it might be, whether it's a happy memory or somewhere you've been. And we've got another message here from Pauline. Morning, Pauline. Morning. Morning, ladies. I put four treat sweets into each day in my homemade advent calendar. Oh, lovely. See, that's, lovely. that's the way to do it. I've got more messages. See, up at the four in my house, if I was first to it, then... You'd be gone. Yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> and this is from Christine. Morning. Um, morning, It was Christine. a good morning until I heard you say you're not back till the new year. Oh, thank you, Christine. Aww. Good luck. And I'll put up with the others where possible to <laughs> <laughs> we've got one more I'm off to do Cinderella I'm going to the ball um, and from oh no I'm not I'm getting, I've been getting that in my ear all morning we've got panto jokes coming already and then uh, from Marcy I'm morning good morning ladies um, threads is the only thing I use to make my quilt labels oh yes that's great a good idea point. fantastic yes, product yes, yes. so thank you thanks Marcia oh thanks for letting us know so let's crack on with the um, yes, demo can we then. get printing yeah come on let's get cool. printing okay so let me just move this aside so um I just need to move that aside. So what Can I've done here, here, yes, here. okay. Now what I've go done... an angle here with the camera so I know. you can see So hopefully laptop. you won't get my hair or anything <laughs> silly in there. Um, what, I've, what I've done is uh, the image... Uh, whenever I come to the studio, I put all my images um, onto um, a little USB stick, and that's what you can see here, my collection of my images. At home, you'd have it in a folder or however you save your photographs. But it's so, so easy. Okay, um, the collage that I've done um, for you, I'm just going to click on the actual image. Are we showing that? Oh, yes, there we're we go. on. Oh, it's okay. working. So far, so there. good. We're all right. Okay, so here's, a, here's your lovely um, collage, <clears throat> and you can see um, it's on an A4 sheet, because obviously that's what our printer is um, set to. And, and it's also how that will be the format. If you do get the yes. kits this morning, that's in there in yes. the printable format. Yeah. So um, on this setting here, now your um, computer may be slightly different to the settings on, uh, you know, the, the actual way it's set out on your computer but all you need to do is click on print okay okay and it will bring up um, the settings for your printer now there's only two things that you need to remember it's really really easy um, on here the, on, on my printer at home I don't have to click on more settings it comes up it's on it already there. but on this printer it actually just says more settings um, what you need to just change as we've got our A4, which it's on here. Now, where it says type, we've got plain paper, okay? We are going to put it onto our... Um, we're going to print on silk, aren't we? Yes. Which you might think... That's a silk one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. you can see that. Okay. Of, um, that glossy sort of shine to it, but you would think then that you might want to use a gloss setting, yes. but that's not the case. No, this is where... This is the only thing you need to remember. So when you go to print on the fabric, and it, it's the same rule for any of types of the fabric, whichever one you choose to go for, um, you need to change it to a matte setting. So we've got Epsom matte here, okay? Okay. And then the only other thing we need to change is where it says the output quality. Um, if you were doing a, a normal print on a piece of paper, you just do it as a standard print. Uh, we need it on a high setting, and that's so that it coats the fibres in the actual fabric. Okay. okay. So that's the only two things you need to change, Epsom matte and then high. And just a little tip here um, for viewers is when you print out on your fabric, obviously... Um, you don't need to keep it on those settings. So when you finish and you go back to doing your normal printing, just pop it back onto the settings that they some were there. Some of them do automatically they just do. revert to, they the, do. to the standard yeah. settings. So some might do that, but if not, you could go back and check. It's just the matte setting and then the quality that the output is high, just so you get that high resolution print on the fabric. Okay, so we should be, go down to where it says print. Okay, we'll press print. Half the sock um, of the cotton has gone, sorry to interrupt you, oh. Tilly, just to let you know that poplin's really, really pop, popular, popular poplin. <laughs> so if you do like that one, that's over half the stock has now gone, so please do check out your baskets on that. It's the one on, well, actually, it's the one, it will come up on your screen in a sec, it's on silk at the moment. Now, just one thing before we press print, um, we've got a top loader printer, okay? I know some uh, viewers may have a bottom loader. Yes, I do. Okay. Goes in the so if you put, if you, uh, yours is a top loader, the fabric needs to... Uh, be facing towards you 
So obviously you'd be the other so side. it would be upwards. Yeah, and it's going to just literally feed through and come out at the bottom. If you're doing it the other way round, your printer will flip it around. And if you don't put it in upside down, it will print on the paper on the back. Okay. You'll know which way your printer works. So um, if, you're, if just, it's a, a printer that's coming in from the top, then you want to have just the fabric put it straight through. towards you. Yes. If it's going on the bottom, you turn it over and yep, load, load it on the side first. Okay. As a little test, put a piece of paper through first. And then you know what then you're you know doing. You put a little cross and then you know what you're doing. So I'm going to press print. Now it might just say on the printer. I can't see from here. Is that Let's not? see. Is it just saying with the... Oh, it no, it's wearing up. This is when we have to rely on technology and just think, please, come on. Come on, printer. It sounds as if it's waking up. It does sound like it might be. If I just move back to one side. Chris sorted it out for us this morning, making sure the printer was working. That we're ready to go. Yeah. So we are going to make a garland using these images. So this is what Tilly's made. So you get six little pictures. Yes. So you can incorporate these onto your um, stars from the kit if you wanted to. And you've done them like little pockets. Have I have. There. So um, while that's printing, um, what we'll do is, um, shall we show viewers how we're going to peel our little print off? Yes. And you can do that with the image we did before. Okay. Yeah. So shall I swap to places? To ready to go. Shall I swap you back? Yes. Is this one going? What does it say? I can't read. We'll check that in a second. Press, oh, I'm being called to press something. This one? It made a noise. Is that the wrong, the wrong one? We're going to talk that in a second. Um, but this we're going to show you how we... Um, so we've got the three kits. I was just going to quickly show you what those kits are because people are asking to see them. So you've got um, the vintage star garland. That's your greys and reds. And that comes again with your star templates. Then you've also got another colourway in the winter wonderland. That's your purples with the star templates again. So two metres of fabric and your stars ready to make a garland. There you go, Winter Wonderland, UDGC99. And then the last one is our Scandi. So that's the one that Tilly's made up here with the uh, teal and the charcoal and red and white. And again, your star templates. Oh, that one's called Vintage. We've got, we've got the name mixed up there, but that one's, there we go. Oh, no. No, you was right. No, that is Scandi. Scandi. Oh, yeah. no. In, out, shake it all about. Here we go. We're just checking that we're wide awake <laughs> yeah, we're this just morning. Yeah, we're testing us this morning. That's what it is. Here we go, it's printing now. Perfect. Okay, so okay, so when um, when it comes out of the printer, okay, just leave it a few minutes just to make sure your ink dries. Okay. okay. So this is one that we did before the show. So if I just move those forward, and this is such a lovely photo oh. of you wearing your. This is, your, the, this I is love Cin the, my Cinderella. I know. Well, this is the this isn't the ball gown. This is the before Cinderella goes to the ball and she's sweeping the floors. But this is just one of the photos that we had. So we're going to print. Here we go. I'll show you. So we've printed this on the silk. And it's such a rich colour. You can see but the it looks detail. Like a on, I know it's amazing. Gonna, isn't but that it? is a fabric. There, we're going to peel this now. Trying on the shoe. I was joking around saying, "Oh, I'm going to have smelly feet on purpose," just because you've got to put your foot out you? <laughs> when you try on the slipper. Oh, okay, so okay. what do we do next? We're going to peel. Okay. It. Yes. So what you're going to do? <clears throat> we'll choose. Go this way here. On the back, um, we've just got to be careful. I had a little bit of ink on there. Um, if I just make a tiny, tiny tear. And you see, before you peel it off, I just want to show that you can see the difference. So here's our paper, here's mm -hmm. our silk, okay. Now what you're going to do is turn that over. I should get you to do this. Just peel it so, off. So yeah, now one, so that you don't stretch your fabric, this is how I do it, this, just me personally. If I keep my hand flat and then peel very slowly to, away from you okay. and that doesn't stretch your fabric okay okay so we'll give that a go go for it so hand flat on there yeah i'm just going to peel that back and this is when you can see that it's not a hard carbon this is this no. is a fabric that you no. as you would find normally i don't want to stretch it look at the color as well you can see on the back no, where that's isn't it amazing really clever just sort of ease that i don't want to do it too quickly Once you've done it a few times, you will do it quicker. You'll feel more confident. There we go. Oh, I'm not going to do anything. Look at um, that. Yes. That's so clever. So, and you can wash this, can't you? Yes. So if you, your project needs a wash, you know, needs to be laundered, uh, just a gentle hand wash um, and your colours won't run. If we, I don't know if the camera can pick it up actually, but this is so, because it's silk, you can, I, I, 
whether you can see it through that, it's so transparent. It would make a beautiful scarf. Actually, doing your, your know turning you fabrics over all the time that Tilly likes to do, <laughs> but you really could if it was a picture that works yeah, both, the other way. Ways. You get you a very gentle quiet. image. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're like saying. A, um, I've, I've converted you. Yeah, you. you. <laughs> turning fabric around. But it's almost like, you know, when you put a filter over yes, a photo yes. and it makes it maybe sepia or black yeah, and white. Yeah. And you could do that with the... Um, and what I love as well is you could scan in... If you've got a printer, you could scan in old photos. Yes. So, say like pictures of my granddad, yes. we don't necessarily have that many digital pictures, but nope. we've got all old photos that you could scan in from yeah. the loft, get yeah. them out of the boxes and, and use them. Yeah, because that's all you need to do. Once, once you, um, it's, it's quite difficult to sort of showcase what you can do with photographs. It's in the sense of uh, some people feel quite confident to sort of reduce them and enlarge them and change them around. Others, uh, other viewers will just want to put a photograph, like you say, and scan yeah. and then print that straight out. So I don't want to confuse viewers because once, once you know what you want to do with your photograph, it is just like printing it out on a piece of paper. I, I but the fabrics... I know it is, yeah. isn't it? But the fabrics, um, because this is silk, you get a, more of a, a, a definition sort of a transparency on the other side you wouldn't get that with twill because no. it's a heavier fabric and with the poplin if you wanted to use on the reverse as well that would be a very different image as well um, so it's a matter of just playing really and then once you've printed it out you treat that as one piece of fa fabric in, as if you've as you would if that was a fat any quarter fabric, or yeah. a piece just yeah. any piece of fabric the, the, the thing i haven't mentioned i did forget just as we said about washing it's the same as any piece of fabric when you do wash the fabric it will have just a very tiny slight shrinkage um, as with any cotton any cotton yeah. yeah if your project I mean this star garland I don't um, you know envisage that needing a wash so I didn't wash those um, if you think yours is going to be sort of you know handled with children in the family and what have you and you think it does just give it a very gentle wash before you start stitching but it'll be fine Ready to go. Yeah, I'm and our pictures come out. And we'll do you want to see? Here we go. So let me just take that out of the printer. What we'll do is we'll leave that to just set for a, a couple of minutes. So this was the these were oh yeah, that's not the one. They, here they are. These are the images that Tilly had done. Now, if you actually look, I don't. I, I'm sure you can. Yes. The colour. So I'm just going to say that if you look at the depth of colour on this the actual paper, fabric, the fabric, this is paper, and this is what it's come out. It looks better on the fabric. It does. The, yes, um, it does. The colour is really bold and strong. It's such a real definition of depth. That's what I love. So, so clever. And then and now you would leave this for a couple of minutes just to Just a few minutes, calm down. yes, <laughs> yes. Now, if you wanted, if on your printer, um, if your images, we did this on an A4 setting, um, and if you think actually um, you kind of want to change them around um, and you want to do it on a, a this is, uh, portrait, but you want to change yours to landscape okay, um, using the collage. Um, again, type that out on paper first rather than wasting your fabric and think, actually, no, I prefer it this way yeah. um, in size of your labels. But again, okay. as well, you could even take those images and put them into a Word document and oh, resize gosh, you can them do if you all wanted sorts to of things. and I'm, then put them in. I am so just going you... to... Sorry, I didn't mean to no, put that's in right, there. Fine. Um, this little image here, this is one that... Um... This was the one that our producer this morning, <laughs> he thought that was me. I'm glad he's um, been paying attention to me, watching me on a screen all day, every day, and then there you can see. There you, you go. You were saying about um, uh, personalisation. If if you know how to do that on your computer, you know, you can add all sorts of um, little text quotes and words and little messages and all sorts of things. So, yeah, you can take it to all sorts. And this is the perfect time of year, isn't it, yeah, to make absolutely. those personalised presents. Well, so, also yeah. as well, it's very expensive to, to, if you, you know, you can order online, can't you, mugs or yeah. all of those things and calendars and um, cushions and notebooks. But with this, you can just, you can do it yourself. Oh, gosh, you can. And also the delivery yeah. time sometimes at this time of year isn't always great. No, it's I've had not. things turn up after Christmas and I'm like, oh, well, I did have your present, just hadn't arrived. Well, oh, sorry, I'm going to... Just to reiterate, the... Um, the cotton poplin is really, really popular, but also with the um, fabric itself, you do get those six images from Tilly. So those, it's an exclusive um, web link, yes. a collection of pictures that Tilly's put together. Yes, and I've, what I've done is I've chosen the images um, to actually match all the, the fabric bundles. So it doesn't matter which ones you choose, um, the colours will complement. Yes, they will. So... That one there, sorry, it's just your oh, tail. No, that's fine. And then we just had the um, poplin, which is very, very popular. That's about to sell out the poplin, so if you do like that one, please do check out your baskets, or you can give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. 
Okay, so we've got those pictures. Okay, so what I'm going to show you to do and how we get started on our little star garland. So um, I'm actually going to take that one out. So in the, um, the star templates, Okay, here's the one that I've been using. It's a bit tattered. Yours will be nice and <laughs> nice and smooth and crisp. Um, now I've just I want to just show. Uh, I know uh, if you've never made this sort of shape before, um, I you know it's very easy for me to come on and say, or oh, you start here and you go round and da da da. If you've not sewn before, I know the first question will be, well, where do I start yes. um, with the star? So on the templates, I always advise uh, anybody who comes to a workshop, it doesn't matter, just write your little notes onto the stars um, or, you know, obviously the shapes, if you are using the template, of where you think you're going to start. And I, with this shape, um, you can see the little blue dotted line, if you want to go inside the black bold line, that's obviously going to be a guide for your seam allowance, okay? Yes. Um, so you might want to add that to see the actual finished size of the shape because that will determine will your photograph fit inside. inside. Okay, so that's one thing you need to bear in mind. If you think actually, you know, I want to use that really big image, but that star's not going to be the right size or, you, you know, you want to expand it. Um, one of the options is just to get your star, star template. Um, and anybody who knows me, I always have these airy erasable pens So does me. Joe Carter, you can join I the do. club. I <laughs> do, honestly, they, they go everywhere with me. Um, now, I've, I did that very roughly this morning. What I've done is I've just literally gone around my star and enlarged it, okay? So no Using different to when you did the seam allowance no, on the no, inside? No, no, But it gives you then, obviously, um, a, an idea of what, what you're going to be doing. Now, uh, sorry, I've taken that away. Um, so to start and finish, I with a star, I like to, let's turn it around this way, um, I like to actually allow myself quite a bit of a gap to uh, uh, put the, the stuff in into the, the, the filling into the star. So I'm going to just mark up, just roughly, if you're not sure, um, this will disappear by the time you've finished your project, um, but it just gives you that little bit of confidence yeah. in somebody going, it's okay, stop there, start there. I always think, why not? Why would you, unless you are very, very confident, why wouldn't you just put the marker there so you've got something uh, as yeah, a reminder? Yeah, of course. And it's okay to use, you know, that's what all the little gadgets are there for. Um, if you think, okay, I can sew that without all that, then that's fine. Uh, but if you're just starting sewing, you just need that little guide. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to um, do a straight, so I've cut, I've got a double piece of fabric Okay, um, and I'm actually going to uh, go around using my uh, template with um, the little seam allowance. I'm going to use the edge of my uh, foot, okay? So uh, I'm going to, am I in straight stitch? Yes, so I'm just using a straight stitch. Now with, um, what am I doing? The garland. <laughs> we forgot to put my little photograph on there. Oh, you've got to do it first of all. <laughs> you've got to do that first. I didn't know if you were going to do it after. <laughs> I just oh, thought these eyes I'm go, sacked. Oh. That's it. I'm not coming back. I don't think I'm coming back until. Oh, don't be You're dumb. not coming so back for the new I'm, year. So first of all, <laughs> you first of all you put the picture on. Yes, we that's were waiting what, for it to dry as well. So that's, that's what. Fine. Oh dear. Do you want to use the, wait, is that the is we're that a fabric one? Yes, that's the one I've got. So you can't even. Them. No, that's fine. So I'm going to use the little baker girl at the bottom here, baking her little mince pies. And sorry, you don't peel it off before you cut it. No. Now I'm going to give you a little tip because um, you can peel it off and use it as a piece of fabric. But what I've done on here, now this is designed to put little sweets and you know little treats in there. So if I just turn, if I turn it around here, you can see just on the top of my pocket, can you see that little white line there? If I, oops, yeah. Sorry, it's flipped yeah, over. You can see that. There we go. Now that's actually paper, just on the very top on the stitching. Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you because Obviously, that's going to be forever, you know, little bits and bobs put in in the pocket. So I've just given it a little bit of stability. So all I've done is I'm going to cut out my image with the paper. I can't believe I was going to sew my little garland. <laughs> I didn't know if you did it after the dance. Oh, dance dear, oh, dear. Honestly. So you've just left a tiny bit at the top of that paper. No, just this is all, this is all to... the paper. Okay, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just check. You need to obviously check where that's going to sit in your um, image there. And then um, you're going to peel, um, just pop it on here. You're going to zigzag across the top first before okay. you peel your paper off, okay? So that's just so, creating what, exactly what you just showed us there. Yes. 
So I'm going to take, on here we've got a little preset and I think that might be just a little, I'll do it about, might need to change your setting. Um, and all you're going to do is go over the top of your photograph. Yeah, that bit just on the top there. there. You can see. So. Okay. Really effective look. Okay. So if you do this, because you're going to be sewing through fabric and paper, okay, I know you're only doing one line of paper, um, make sure you've either got a needle that has been in the machine quite a while or change your needle before you go on to, uh, like once you've made the garland, then change your needle because you might blunt the just needle a bit. just a little okay. bit using the paper. So you can see we've got the little zigzag on the top, okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. Out. I think we were just catching up. <laughs> okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm then going to take it off my fabric. So the same as you did. Where Now this is obviously a lot smaller, so you have to be a little bit more delicate. Let's move that to one side. And I'm going to peel it right up to the stitching. Okay. But I'm not going to obviously peel the stitching. Then I'm going to cut... And what we've done, that secures the stitching. So it just gives it that, that collar. Can you see? So there's the rest of my paper and there's my little collar. So let's get rid of these threads. And now you're going to treat it just as a piece of fabric. Just to let you know, the cotton poplin has sold out, but we have still got the um, silk. Let's just take that off the desk. Which one is it? This one here. We have still got the twill and the, um, the silk, which was the really lovely one that we showed you with the image that we printed out. Um, so those two are still available. God, we've only got 15 minutes. I don't know where the time's gone. Oh, we've had another picture sent in. Who was this one from? From Shelley. Oh, look, with her dog. Oh, nice. That's on a cushion and the two little dogs cushion, at the back. Yes. Dogs there as well. Morning, this is my thread project from she Shelley in Lincolnshire. And you could do a um, little dog bed, couldn't you, if you wanted oh, to personalise it? You could even put it on the uh, dog coat that we've got today we're doing, yeah oh wouldn't that That's be cute. lovely or and personalized with the name and all sorts of swimming things. bags and school bags and yeah you or could. reading bags for school so you just trimmed away that paper right up to where you stitched yes. it to give it that now collar. you don't you don't need the paper on there if you don't want your you know you can do it without the paper i just think it just gives it a little bit of stability you know if you've got little fingers taking out sweets they're not going to be gentle are they <laughs> straight or, in. i don't know about little I'm fingers i'm just gonna <laughs> say <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't want to upset you <laughs> oh no it's fine i'm not even although we're doing our what fourth show now so yeah <laughs> that's all right that's we can fine, go straight in with yeah, that that's fingers. fine <laughs> No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> There's no going back now. No, that's, it. that's oh my goodness. Did you both vintage? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you can see I'm just going around with my little zigzag. Now you might want to put um, a decorative stitch. Yes. Um, I've only put zigzag, you know, just because that's the one I've chosen. You could do straight stitch, um, it doesn't have to be. Now on the pocket, what I would stop, I'm just going to stop here on the edge because I did it at the beginning. I'm going to use my little reverse button to just go over, oh, I didn't press it in, sorry. Now I'm going really slow so you can show. Okay. And what that does is it just gives it a little bit more stability on the edge there. Because obviously, if you're putting things in, you've got a little bit of weight. That durability, really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can see that's going to be on my star. Now, I've deliberately moved it across because I know through workshops, when things happen, I, if this was in a workshop and somebody said, oh, no, I've put it in the wrong space, okay? That's the joy of using an airy erasable pen because you've gone over the, the um, line here where we made it slightly bigger with the, the, the template, um, but that will disappear. So it so doesn't make a difference. It. No, exactly. So all you do is you get your fabric, okay, and you're going to pin them together now because this is where we do put them together. Um, we're going to put this one on top of our image. Now, you're going to use it in reverse because um, what you've got, you need to see where your um, where you pocket the po is going yeah. to be, all right? So you might want to actually just go over just to make sure that you are going to have... 
as well, if you've just tuned in this morning and you're thinking that this is maybe a piece of fabric that we've cut from a print or a designer print, this is a picture that we've printed. So Tilly's put these photos together in a little collection this morning. But you can print any photo at all. So whether it's um, a picture of your child or grandchild or your dog or, or anything or of a nice view, or you can run it through your printer, any inkjet printer, print that onto the um, fabric, whether it's the silk or the cotton twill, and then you can incorporate that into projects. So. You can, and also, um, so we were talking about um, an advent calendar. If you wanted to, you could incorporate all three different um, fabrics so that you get a, an actual different image, uh, sort of a different style of, yeah, yeah. One. Okay, now I'm just cutting, I wouldn't normally cut this out, but I just want to show viewers. Because it just, okay, you might want to do it this way round so that you can definitely see where your star goes, okay? Am I the right way around? I'm just that's it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So you'd pop your just pins put in. That star on there. Okay. Now, if you think you can do it without cutting it out, you can do it that way. But this is another way, again, without it, having to draw. Yeah, around exactly. It. So I just get my pin. There we go. Just going to secure that. Now you can put pins through your fabric. Um, that was another question I got from one of um, the, the other shows that I did. Can um, you know, once you've printed it out, can you put pins? Can Yes, you can. Um, you can also sew through it. Um, don't think that once you've printed your image out, you can't That's do anything. It. No, no. So you can you can wash this, you can sew through it, you can pin through it. Yes, these you are can. These the little pictures. We're running out of time. I don't know what's happening this morning. But those, these are the little ones. Let me just go around. Come in the garland. Can and I get... in the kits with the fabric this morning as well, you also get the star templates. So with the threads printable fabric, you get Tilly's images. And with the fabric kits for the star garland, you get the uh, star templates, these ones here. Oh, that just looks like a big white sheet of paper, but there are stars printed on there. <laughs> there well, you go. Can I ask Amy, if while yes. I'm just stitching around my star, could we just show the um, images on top of the bundle so yeah, that everybody course. can see the I'll combination? Would those. that be all right? Of course. So Tilly's just going to stitch around that I'm star. I'm just going to go around the star, yes. And I'll show you these. Did we have the one that we printed on the fabric? Uh, yes, the silk. There we go. Thank you. Is that... I'm just going to pinch that one. That's it. So the, oh, the most popular bundle is the winter bundle. <laughs> Which is surprising, having when, having when I actually said this isn't winter colours um, in purples. But what Tilly was saying is that all of the pictures that she's chosen that come with um, the threads printable fabric this morning, they go with all of these bundles. So she's looked at the colours. You can see here, just picking out colours that really complement each of those bundles. So just picking out the snow or... And they're really lovely, old-fashioned, vintage images that Tilly's chosen. Again, there with the... Um, next bundle along this is the scandy one so picking out the red in the uh, santa jacket and those lovely little old-fashioned dresses and then here you can just see there how those colors do work really beautifully together and you could scale these pictures up if you wanted to if you are confident to do that and then again you've got one final one and this is our vintage so here you can actually see where the teal is picking out um, just here in these, these icy colours in the bottom of the image. And again here, picking out the icy waters. Now we have already had a sellout of the cotton poplin. So we had three different um, threads printable fabrics this morning. So it's a fabric that you put through your printer as you would with any paper and you can personalise it with photos or images and pictures, things that you can download and find from the internet or that you could use your own photos that you've taken yourself from your phone or something. Um, and so the two that we've got left are the silk. So this is an example. <laughs> it feels a bit ridiculous to hold up a picture of myself. But here's the, um, here's the silk version that we printed this morning. So you can see you just run that through the printer and you could even use that if you wanted to with a canvas or on the front of a little bag, on a cushion. And then you've also got the cotton twill. This one's a silk as well, actually. Um, but the twill has got more of a, a diagonal weave to it, as we were saying, like a denim. It's a little bit more durable, a bit more body and weight to that. So if you want to incorporate it into something that's going to be uh, used a lot, so whether it is the pockets on the advent calendar or whether it's um, even a little doorstop or, or a bag that you're using um, to carry heavy bits and pieces, take these back over. Now Tilly we've also got loads of embellishments haven't we? We so have. I could yes. get a couple of those out while you're 
if you want. Yeah, no, I'm just going to turn in. Around. I'm just going to say to our viewers, if I just move that out of the way, um, when you turn your star, if I just move this here, um, you need to just clip in your points, okay, to give your star, oh, I haven't done that one, um, a little bit of ease, and you need to chop off the um, tops to take out the bulk. Okay. okay. Sorry. We did that Lady yesterday on you, you did, were, were you did. On. Yes. Shall I turn in while you go okay, through the yes. embellishments? So we've got lots of different things. I'll start with the um, pom poms because I like. I, I think, love I love these. them. I just think they're really fun. Um, so we've got the red pom poms. You could even use these as a, a string for Christmas cards and things. If yeah, you, you, you could. Use. But you can add a little bit of. Um, but you can use them individually texture. as well, and just to cut them off like pom poms. Yeah, you could. Like little snowballs, if you wanted to. Or if you were doing something with a Christmas tree, you could add those on as baubles, couldn't you? Yeah. Sort of hang them across. So you've got those in a red. Then you've got them in a grey as well. So really lovely with that vintage and the Scandi bundle where you've got the charcoal colours coming through. So that's the grey pom-pom trim. And then you've also got an ivory uh, version here as well. There we go. Look, I'm just going to show you with these colours that they do work really well if you wanted to incorporate them into some of those other projects. And they go with all of the fabric bundles, don't they? That's the joy. Yeah, that's the thing, that yeah. with all of those creams yeah. and reds and greys. Because I know sometimes, you know, colours can be a bit of a, a, um, a sort of a block of how do I put them all together. If you don't have you know. an eye for that no, sort of thing, no. then it just takes the work out of it, really. It, it does. They, they, those colours have been mixed and blended so that they... But we've done the hard work they, for you. Yeah. <laughs> I do love John's idea, though, of having all of the bolts of different solids sort of here, so we can go, oh, that goes really well with that. And oh, that would be lovely. Them, wouldn't it? Yeah, be really that nice. would be a good idea. Now, just some other embellishments. We've also got some Swarovski crystals. So we're going for um, some luxury this morning with these lovely little um, beads that you could add on for a bit of sparkle if you wanted to. Yeah, so now these I've are the slightly those. bigger ones. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's fine. Where did you... Have you... I was going to oh, say, yes. I put them in the middle of our little star. Can you see there? Just catching they the light just there. just catch, yeah. Beautiful. You can see it on this one as well. So these come in two different sizes. You get 48 in a little pack there. These are the six millimetre ones. This is the uh, Strictly. I feel like these. Who went out on Strictly? I didn't see oh, it I last night. Oh, no. Just in case people haven't seen oh, it. Oh, no. Producer Paul, do you know? Can you tell me in my ear? He's never watched it in his life. Oh, oh no. I need to find out who went out on Strictly. I can I say? It. Or am I going to do a spoiler? Mm, maybe. Mm, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. He said Keith Chegwin. <laughs> I don't think Keith Chegwin, although the Swarovski crystals, he's got out because he was never in it, I don't think. But, oh. Then you've also got some uh, little smaller ones. Yeah, the jungle's starting as well soon, isn't it? Or just started. Just started. I missed that one too. Having an early night, I missed everything last I night. I know, I know. Those are our little small um, Swarovski <laughs> crystals here as well. These are the uh, four millimetre ones. So just depending which, which size you prefer. Or you could mix and match them if you wanted to. And that little packet there. Again, 48 in there, 4.99. Again, also nice for a stocking filler. Oh, yeah, perfect. I always think that if you're a crafter or a sewer, you know, yes, it's lovely to receive chocolates and sweets, but how gorgeous would it be to make up a little embellishment pack and put just that in? Just for someone's stuff. Yeah, I just think that's amazing. Because we do, we do get overloaded, really, with we do. chocolates Yeah, no, we do. Right, so just very quickly, because I know we're running out of time, and so I won't go mad. All I've done is literally turn my star the other way around. Now, yours would be a lot neater and calmer because obviously I'm rushing. Uh, I'm, I haven't poked out the, the real ends on there. But I've all, all I've done is added a bit of wadding, okay, and you would then pin this down and hand sew. So the little marks that we left. Now, um, on here, can you see... The invisible marker is still there. That I'm will fade that away. Oh, sorry. Bit. Sorry, just there. There you go. There we yeah. go. Okay, so that will fade away. Um, don't worry about that. And you've got your little pocket. So here's our little pocket with our paper underneath. Okay. And then once you've made a couple, what I've done with here, with our buttons that we've got, I've got these lovely, gorgeous buttons. Let's see if I've got those here. Um, we all I've done is um, I've sewn the two stars together. Um, with a button in between. Did you sew it and then add the button? No, no, no. You did that all in one go? Yeah, I did it all in one go. So I, I did a couple of stitches to secure the stars together and okay. then put the button on top so it was all in one go. And they just add a, a really lovely, you know, um, that edge to it. That feel as well, I they think, do. which is really... And then on the end, I've lost one off this, I don't know where the other one, but I've put loops on with the lovely twine that we've got on. So all I've done, I'm going to show you how easy it is. I've made a little loop, okay? Put it on my button twist it and then rip it wrap it round that's all it is and then you've got a little loop to hang it up 
I love this. Um, I love it. Twi I, oh, lo I, I like wrapping presents in like brown paper and really lovely sort yeah, of rustic no, old I do. I like, do. twine. So you can just see that there. Um, we've got a reel of that this morning if you do want to use that. Here we go. Two forty-nine. So also, um, obviously, we've seen those with the um, pictures that you've yes. done. Those yep. vintage pictures, but you can use them for photos with cushions. We will just show you yes. how they. So, so have a look at those. These cushions we had on previous shows, and we just wanted to show viewers really. Um, obviously, we're going on the the. the Christmas theme um, but you can if you're confident with changing your photographs um, you could change them down to black and white you can add um, text and detail and like you were saying about the vintage photographs and put that into a project um, you can add um, little words look at this so okay. lovely and really then um, and again black and white if you want to make your own collage so you could you could perhaps do something like that on a stocking using the cotton twill because that's what we've used on that cushion there I just and think then that's a really lovely you know, present to give to. Oh, oh for, how for, gorgeous! To give to like, I always think I, my automatic thought is for my nan. That's who oh. I always think because I know she loves to have pictures around yes. the house of yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I just think that's really lovely for cushions and yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But again, with the what was this one done with? The this twill? was cotton twill, yeah. and this one was the poplin, uh, and. Yeah, poplin, and then this was twill as well. So I've combined, and then obviously we've got the silk. And I don't know if the camera. I know we're running out of time. There's okay. just a very tiny, tiny shine on this compared to the twill. You can just, I don't know if you can see where it catches the light. No, we've pulled it apart. There where you go, you can, you can kind oh, of can? see Lovely. a little bit, just where Do it's I need to hold a bit it more silky. Bit more. Yeah. So again, just play. Um, but you could make a, a lovely silk scarf. Yes. How you were saying about your grandma, uh, you know, make her a lovely silk scarf. Just sew a couple of these together with the silk. Just How straight round with photo. I just think oh, that's, she, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, isn't that lovely? It's not um, going to be like anyone else's. And also, you wouldn't really want pictures of anyone else's family around, around your neck. Would you want a scarf? That but they don't have strange. to be photographs. No. You, you know, we've, they could be these sort of Yeah, ones. they could be uh, photographs where you've been on holiday of, um, you know, scenes or flowers or anything like that. And just print it out and away you go. Just to recap, in case yes. you did miss at the beginning of this hour with Tilly this morning, so the threads printable fabric, you can yes. use it with an inkjet printer, not a laser jet printer. Yeah, it has That's... to be um, an inkjet printer. Um, if I just turn the packaging round, you actually, there's, um, on the back, they give you a list of um, some questions that, you know, sort of common questions that are asked. That's in there. You get all your instructions in there as well. Um, and then, obviously, your... Um, fabric comes all packaged on on the paper ready to go and so they pride themselves threads pride themselves on saying print peel and that's and it create. Oh, that's go. it away and once you do once you've got your pictures on your laptop so if you've got them on a usb or you've downloaded yes. them into an yep. image file the two things you just need to change on the settings on here our computer's gone to sleep <laughs> was just to change the um yes so, paper to matte yes because you don't want glossy um and then uh, your setting needs to be high and that's for the resolution of the ink um to work with the fabric to be able to print so that was just on here yes yeah, so if you, you click now. on the dots but really easy I need to be out the way, don't I? No, that's fine. So you just go to the dots, we go to the print and the um, settings there, just loading. More settings. More settings. You just change the type of paper to matte. Yep. Yeah. And then the output quality to high, just so you're going to get that really lovely high resolution yep. saturation of colour. Yep. And then off you go, ready to print. You just pop your paper in there. Yep. Fabric side up if it's a um, top loading yes. printer. Yep. Run that through. And if it's coming from underneath, it flips over. So you need to just do a little check on the your, other way around. Yeah. Put a piece of paper through. Lovely. Yeah. And you're back in an hour, aren't you, Tilly? I am, yes. I'm doing some work on the uh, lovely Elna and, the stitch and making a stitch journal. Which yes. is lovely. Yeah. You won't want to miss that. So Tilly's back in just a moment. You, we'll, we'll leave you with some pictures. To we <laughs> just all got all, all your photos. We've kind of taken over the place. I know we, we have a bit today. Just moved in. That's yeah, fine. Sorry. <laughs> so, oh, they're asking me upstairs, am I going to take this piece of silk and make a cushion? Ooh. Maybe if we do Panto Secret Santa, I could just pretend that I was really thoughtful and, and printed a whole fabric picture of it, really. I just oh, you're going to have to put that in a project now. I should. I have yes. to incorporate it into something. Yeah. I'll leave that there, something but I will come and collect it in just a okay. moment. We'll see you shortly. Okay. Thank you, Jilly. All right, then. Um, so those kits this morning, oh, I'm just going to grab the stars so you can see. The um, three different kits to make that star garland that Tilly just was demonstrating on with the little pockets for an advent calendar. Um, we've got three colourways this morning. Each of those are two metre bundles, so you get four half metre cuts. We'll start with the traditional one, which is the, um, this one here, our teal, red, grey and white. So this one's called the vintage bundle. You've got half a metre of teal, half a metre of red, half a metre of charcoal, half a metre of white. And then with all of these... 
you get the sewing quarter star templates there. And then the winter one, is this still the most popular? This is still the most popular, is our purple. So you've got mauve, lilac, you've got the deep purple, and then you've got the um, glacier grey as well in here. If you multi-buy these kits, these fabrics are pre-cut, so you would get two um, half-metre cuts of the deep purple, two of the lilac, and they're already cut, ready to go. $13.99. And then our last option here is our greys and red. So you've got um, your darker red, then you've got a more bright post-box red, charcoal, and your grey. This is the Scandi bundle. BBGC44. And that one's $13.99. And again, you've got your template there too. So in this hour, we've had those threads um, printable fabric. So the two that we've got left in stock is the cotton twill and the silk. So we'll start with the um, cotton twill first of all. This one's a little bit thicker, a bit more durable. So great if you want to project with a bit more body or something that's going to be used a lot. So you get six sheets in that pack there and you can run that through any regular inkjet printer. Then you also get a um, web link from Tilly. So she's put together an exclusive collection of images that you can use. And that's included in that little uh, bundle this morning. Veg, V-E-G-C 44, 21 99 And then the other option is on the silk, which is what we printed that uh, panto picture out on. It's got the lovely, silky, lustrous feel to it. A nice drape to that one as well. So um, from a sensory point of view, if you want something a bit different, then that's a nice option. 29 99 OFGC33. Please do check out your baskets on those threads and um, fabrics this morning. They've been really, really popular. If you have got those in there, you do need to check them out or give the call centre ring the number there on your screens. Now, after the break, Paul Clark is coming up. I have got a little friend under here. Pretend this is a dog. It's a piñata. But we are doing a dog coat in the next hour with this gorgeous Liberty fabric and some Tim Holtz as well. So don't go anywhere. We've got treats for your pets. Get them ready. Send in a picture of your dog with you watching. We'll see you in a sec. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Hi, I'm Tilly Rose and here are my three top tips. The first would be to actually be in the moment, allow yourself to uh, be surrounded by all those lovely fabrics and cloth and thread and just take time out. Enjoy your stitching, whether that's machine embroidery or free motion or slow stitching, just allow yourself to connect with the thread and cloth and you'll enjoy the projects much more. So my second tip would be to allow yourself to go wrong. Give yourself permission to make mistakes because we all learn from our mistakes. Um, I've been sewing for a very, very long time and I still make loads and loads of mistakes. Um, but that's okay, because you can use those small little pieces in other projects later on down the line. Um, but it's good, it's okay. So my third tip would be quite simply, break all the rules. Um, if you want to experiment with different threads or different fabric, um, you might have read in a pattern or something that maybe you shouldn't do that. Um, I would say, yeah, break the rules. And that's how you learn to allow your creativity to um, come through in your designs. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com Visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Christmas has come early with a special gift to you on Tuesday the 21st of November, exclusive to our Facebook followers. Head to our Facebook page at 12.30pm on Tuesday when I will host a half-hour Facebook Live show. As well as fun with festive fabrics, I'll reveal some more special surprises and an amazing discount, so you'll be sure to grab a bargain. You won't want to miss out. 
So be sure to like our Facebook page in preparation for this exciting event and watch me, Natasha, live on Tuesday the 21st of November from 12.30pm. Good morning, welcome back. We are going for dog galore in this hour. So we've got lovely pet treats for you. And in fact, well, you could use these for cats as well or, or any animal that you like. We're joined by my lovely pinata friend. We're making this gorgeous dog coat with Paul Clark. And we're using, we've got two different um, fabric kits for that this morning. This beautiful Liberty kit, if you want to spoil your pet this Christmas, really lovely. And this is the quilting weight, so the new Liberty fabric that's um, that's slightly thicker than their um, normal uh, Tana lawn. So really lovely quality and beautiful prints. And that little collar, if you can see there, I'll turn it around. So you actually get a metre and a half of Liberty fabric in this kit. I'm going to open this out because it's just stunning. There we go. You can see that there. Just look at the print of that really beautiful ditzy floral. So you get a metre and a half of that. And it's been teamed with a solid ochre that you can see on your screen. So just picking out some of those colours coming through in the petals of the flowers. So that's two and a two and a half metre bundle there for the dog coat. But in fact, you could use that for anything. If you're thinking this morning, well, I don't have a dog to make a coat for, we could make something for yourself. So um, that's that first bundle. Then the other one is a Tim Holtz combination. So um, taken again, you've got that print influence that you always see from his um, sort of paper craft work. So you can see that there, a little bit like a tartan but in a really neutral uh, colour palette with your sandy colours. So a metre and a half of the Tim Holtz and then a metre of beige there in that solid from Macawa, 28.49. Now you will need a pattern to make this as well. So if you do want to make the dog coat with that smart little collar, this particular pattern um, you can size up to five different dog sizes. So as with dressmaking, you might measure yourself and you know take your waist and hip measurement and measure. You can figure out which size coat your dog um, will need. So you can just see here actually, extra small up to, up to extra large. So you could go from a, well, let's have a think, from a little Jack Russell to a, a Great Dane. So you can see those sizes there. And there are two coat options. I'll just show you on the front with that pattern. They've, what I love is that smart little collar. It's almost like a shirt collar. And just mixing and matching the patchwork detail there. So that one's from Quixo, 8.99. Now, on the theme of um, pets, we've got a couple of other patterns as well this morning. So we've got the, um, I'm going to show you this one first of all. This is um, sort of treats and things you might want to give your dog for Christmas. So whether it's a dog bed or a lead or there's a little harness, there's a, um, a leash or a lead, that's the American word, isn't it? Um, holder there. A, a case, a lead case. And then a harness vest and that bed in your different sizes. So you've got, um... <laughs> sorry, they're saying upstairs that this one here, I'm going to share it with you. B and C, um, look at the outfit. They're saying that this dog needs some little hot pants for a workout video in that outfit. He looks like he's ready to go to do a great vine and some aerobics and he's, <laughs> he's ready to go. Or some roller skates. He could do like the UV roller disco, that dog's just going to come in and slide in in his hot pants and harness. But there you go, that's the McCall's pattern. Really great value for all of those different um, projects that you've got in there with your three beds, your different coats and um, lead things and things. Yeah, why does your brain work like that, producer Paul? I don't know. Then we've also got another pattern here as well that again comes with two different sized uh, dog beds, like big cushions and two um, coats. So again, uh, the bed comes in two sizes and the vests come in small, medium, large and extra large. Now, something that was also very, very popular when um, we first had it on the show were these really lovely stockings for Christmas. So Jennifer Taylor did this on the, was it the 7th of November? We'll just check that so you can go back and watch on YouTube. Um, but it's a really lovely in the shape of a, let me turn it that way, of a dog bone. In the top there, you can just see it's a stocking, so you can hang that up. Really lovely. So the kit for this, you get your wadding, 
you get the template, you get your fabric, a metre of fabric, so half a metre of each, your felt, so you can add the detail, and then your thread as well. But look, you can just add that little paw print detail with the felt. Really lovely Scandi print as well. And the template that comes with that shows you how to do that. So all of this is all packaged up, but you can see there all of your instructions and templates ready to cut out. Just there. Should we open that up? I was just checking the date. Was it the 7th of November that Jennifer Taylor did this? The 7th of November at 8 o'clock. So if you want to go back on YouTube and follow the tutorial, you can. But in here, you've got your templates. And there are a couple of additional sheets in there as well. So this template, you get both templates for both. So you could, um, you could go for, with both of these kits, you could make either of these stockings. So you've got the uh, red option there, which you've just seen on your screen. Oh, that was the green option. And then you've also got the um, red. This is the other paw print one. It, that is like an oven glove. I could definitely use that as an oven glove if I wanted to. But please do insulate that if you are going to use it as an oven glove, <laughs> just a warning. Um, so yeah, again, you've got a stocking there, that paw print stocking from Jennifer Taylor. But the fabric combination, another fabric combination for that is in your reindeer and your solid red with your red thread and again your templates, 19.99, and then the green one that you saw previously as well. So I'm going to grab the um, template. Okay, Paul, I'm coming to see you with a friend. <laughs> How are good morning. You? How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. We've got bees. We're bees. All... I love the buttons on that shirt. Bee buttons bee as well. Bee Yes. They're all bee, ready to go. Do you have a dog? No, I've got a cat. You've got a cat? Yeah. He's so probably you... about as big as that. Though. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a big cat. What do you feed him? <laughs> cat food. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and finds his own food, are though, sure as well. Is like a, a tiger or something? He looks a bit like a tiger. He's Does ginger. He? Oh, okay. Yeah, ginger toms are always a little <laughs> bit bigger anyway. So. You've got a tiger yeah. in your house. So, um, <laughs> The dog coat this morning that you can see here on our beautiful dog model um, in the Liberty fabric. How tricky, easy to make? What would you say, skill it, level? It's fairly simple. Um, you, you're learning a little bit of patchworking as well. So if you wanted to do it um, with the squares on the back. You can. You're learning how to put here. a collar on. So there's a few little things to learn and putting strap, a strap on as well to hold it on underneath. But you can see, I'll just show you there if you can just see how that's going to fit onto the dog and then that lovely collar here at the front and is that a similar process because it kind of is like no different to a neck collar with a shirt is it similar it's to like that process? the penny collar on a dress yes. okay yeah because it's got that curve to it at the front. yeah with a shirt collar you'd have a stand that you would attach the collar to so it's slightly different but um with off. with this it's almost like putting the the penny collar on a on a dress Okay, so it's velcro. Just undo that and pop that velcro. I'm just aware of the noise that that's making. Let's <laughs> move that over there, and then. But liberty for your dog. Very nice. I'm going for it yeah. this morning. Let's look at that. There you go. So that's sort of the basic shape you can see there, yeah. and that doesn't look too tricky. No, it's quite it simple. Quite it's literally putting pieces together. But you've got so much choice with this. You could line it the back with a different colour. Uh, you could put the plane on the back. I'm going to do it with different side to the collar, so I'm going to have a plane underneath and the patterned on the top. So you've got plenty of choices. And you must have a little bit of fabric left over, I'd have thought. Got quite a bit, because you've got enough fabric here to do the large dogs, or the extra large dog size. Oh, right, OK. So if you've got a chihuahua, then you're in luck, because yeah. you're going to end up with You'll have some about five yeah, costumes. Quite a lot of costumes. <laughs> quite a lot of fabric for your stash there. Yeah. Um, and again, you've got the line. You could have it reversible as well. Yes. It's just the Velcro, isn't it? That yeah. you, oh, no, you still could. Um, no, because the strap's put on, on the, the other inside. side. Yeah. So, okay. Unless you put the strap in two... As you're sewing it in, you could have the strap coming out of the sides. Yes, rather than underneath. So it could be and then you could flip it over if you wanted to. Yeah. Options. So yeah. how do we get started with this one then? You've got how your pattern. You get started? You've got all the pieces, you've got the pattern pieces. There's only what we've got. One, two, one, two, three, four, five pieces. So it's quite simple. Okay. Yeah. Cut all your paper pieces out. What I like about quick sew patterns is the the paper's quite substantial. So if you use this over and over again. You don't it's need to not going to fall gonna apart. Disappear. No, it's not going to fall apart. 
So um, the commons in all the sizes are laid out on the paper. So what I've done is cut the large size out, then I've drawn the smaller sizes from that. Oh, so you went for the so large size. So basically I've still got the large size pattern. Yep. I've so not, cut than... into, not cut the medium size out so that I could if still do a large a one, I could still can. do a small one. Okay, yeah. that sounds like a good plan. Okay, I always tend to do that with patterns anyway. I'll cut out the larger size and then I've always got it to use again. If, you put if somebody comes along and says, could you make me one <laughs> yeah, in, in, in a slim size? size? Yeah, <laughs> then you can go back and taper it down. But if you've yeah. already cut it down, then you can't go back and add no. size that easily. Yeah. So easier to do it that way. So I always tend to do that. So I've gone for the medium size just because what would work with and what would fit yes, our, our toy dog, dog here today. So, and yes. you've got here, you've got a, a layout diagram for your fabric and everything. Yes, you got... Open that one up. Pattern instructions, same as for dressmaking instructions. Very good. They take you logically through it step by step. There's only about six steps to this. It's quite a simple pattern. That's nice. You've Nothing. got all your layouts for all your different sizes. You've got your instructions. Uh, one main instruction to look for is the um, seam allowance. You'll find that in your written instructions before you start anything, before you start any sewing. So that's your so first piece. Always look cool. for that because that can vary from pattern to pattern. Uh, with this, it's a half an inch. Half an inch, 1.3 centimetre. Okay. Now, most dressmaking tends to be five, point, uh, five eighths of an inch, one and a half centimetre, which is totally different from the quilting, which they're always using the quarter inch tiny, tiny. or half inch. Yeah. So, do look at that when you're doing any pattern, because I was teaching a pattern the other day, and um, I think that was the same as this. It was a half inch seam allowance and instead of five eighths. it might just take you by surprise if yeah. it's not what you're used to doing. So yeah. just, just to check and figure it out. So always look for that one. Try and follow the layout. Uh, if you've got a particular pattern, like a, um, a plaid pattern like this, maybe try and match that up. It didn't matter so much with the Liberty. No. Because that's fairly random. But I've tried to get so that these lines will match up when we're putting the two squares together. So sort of fussy cut a bit. Yeah, you but can if you be. have got a plainer fabric or like with the Liberty, using the layout diagram just helping to maximise your use of fabric so you've not yes. you're not wasting too much. If you lay out where you've got those uh, the pattern pieces, then you can really make sure you've got enough to put in your stash and yes, use for something definitely. else if you want to. Always oh, we've, had a a yeah, we've had a picture sent in. Look, Izzy oh. in her a Christmas party coat. Love your programmes from Sally. That looks like a really <laughs> cosy coat, doesn't cute it? cute one, yeah. That, is it like a fleece? It's been quilted. Or, oh, done in fleece, yes. Is it a fleece? A bit. Yeah, I think that is in fleece. Nice and... Izzy's like, oh, I'm ready to go, ready for a party with my bow on. Love the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Fabulous. Um, so you're cutting out the pattern. Cut out all the pieces, yes. You have one piece for the back or the lining, which will give you the size of the overall size of the coat. Now, bearing in mind it's got a one centimetre or one, uh, what was it? One, half, we go for half, half an inch. Half an inch seam allowance all the way around. So that will bring it a little bit smaller. Always looks bigger when you first cutting anything out. So that is your back piece. Your other pieces for the top or the top of the coat, the outer part of the coat, um, are all interfaced. So you yes, need to cut interfacing out as well. Now you could, you could quilt this at this point. You could make it thicker. You could add a, a layer of wadding in between. So when we come to put the two, the front and the back together, you could put wadding in and then quilt it. So if this is a winter coat and you want yeah. to keep it a little bit more snugly, then you could do that. Or yeah. you've just got the interfacing that gives it that bit more structure and stability, makes it a bit sort of stiffer, doesn't yes. it? And just it makes it a bit more um, durable, really. Yeah. Okay. And then there's always the option you could uh, odor coat it and make it waterproof. Waterproof. Yes. So so keep stepping it up, make it a you dog a wee in a wipe of <laughs> coat. It'd be a nice Depending coat on the season. <laughs> So starting off, uh, interface all the pieces that you need to, which are the top pieces, the band piece, and one side of the collar. Okay. Okay, the collar comes in two pieces. So then it's a case of just patch working them together. So create this effect to on the top that create you can that just the, see there. Uh, the cross That's effect. Right. So right sides together, of course, half an inch seam allowance. And then we're just going to stitch 
Just looking find for... Find the foot to go for. I was just going to find the interfacing, so I can show you that we've got iron-on interfacing. Oh, and we've got fusible fleece as well, which I think is this one. Oh, OK. So if you do want to iron this on, then you, and you do want to add um, a bit of fleecing, then that's an iron-on fleecing here. Just adds a little bit of um, something a bit more snuggly. There you go. So that's the graphic on your screen, uh, and 9.99. So you get a metre of that, just iron that on into place if you want to add a little bit. Really popular, the iron-on fleecing. And then just regular interfacing, if you do want to just add that stiffness like you can see here. Particularly for the collar, it helps to add for the shaping, yes. doesn't it? And yes. things. That's your interfacing there. Now we'll need the iron out. OK. Because all these seams need uh, pressing as we're going along. Let's move this there. It just helps it all fit together better later on. Let's move those. Oh, I don't think the iron's on. We'll have to just turn that on. We might need a minute or two just for this to warm up. Okay, that warmed up, yep. And let's plug that in. So I'll just finger press those open for now. Okay. So just attaching those two, uh, this is the main body of the coat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. just put in the uh, top to the bottom, so what you'll end up with... Really is nice. that effect. Um, there is a choice in the pattern of adding a third colour in or a fourth colour, so you, you just be imaginative with it. You could really it. go patchwork yeah, if you Yeah, you could just to. go for it. You could even cut, cut that piece in, um, cut it across there. As long as you add extra for your seam allowance when you cut that, you could take that into two different colours as well. And divide it up. And divide it up. Okay. Yeah. Or you could print a picture like we were just saying. That'd be great. Put a picture you? on the Did side of the dog. Just on the front. Like, yeah. this is me. I'm home. Okay. <laughs> okay. Or if the dog gets lost, it knows where it to knows go home. Because well, it knows, knows. This is what my owner yeah. look, looks it's like. It's a picture of the house. This is where <laughs> yeah, you're meant to end up. I don't know if you A little street map down the side. You could do a whole map, couldn't you, of the road where the dog lives on the coast. So we'll just iron those up. So this is the Tim Holtz bundle. So the Tim Holtz fabrics are really lovely. They do have a more, bit more of a masculine feel, which is nice, because we have a lot of um, florals and, and prints like that. And you get a metre and a half of the Tim Holtz, and it, you get that sort of stamp um, inky detail in the background of that, which is his influence from his um, ink stamping that he does and his paper craft work. And then it's also teamed with the uh, neutral beige there too, so a nice warm sandy colour. AJGC11. Next, my cousin's got a really, really big dog, and I don't think he'd suit really well in no, Liberty. Might, <laughs> might do, might do well in. in <laughs> I did think that. Macho dog in yes. it, like a floor, and he's just going to walk down the street in. Whereas I think this is a very, this is quite a smart. Yes, I like this one. Colorway. I'd like a shirt in this. Would you? Yes. Now, I'm just going to match up that centre cross now. And the best way I've found of doing that is you put a pin through and see if it comes out through the seam at the bottom. Lovely. And then come back through. And that way you know when you open it up, that cross should match nicely there. You want that crisp. Yes, it's my sort of tribute to um, patchworking. <laughs> <laughs> I've not done... Have you that style of quilting yet? But I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I think I will. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying. I did a quilt as you go, and I really enjoyed that. So. So that's like your foot. That's yeah. in your first step into. Yeah. I'll I'll get there. I will work on that. Maybe one for the new year. Do you do New Year's resolutions? Or not? Uh, do I do? Do you, do you create? Do you set yourself New Year's resolutions, or do you not bother? Sometimes I do, but I'll do them all year round. I won't just wait to New Year. No. I'll sort of think right now. This is the next project. I'm going to do this. Or next time I do something, I'm going to make sure I learn another skill or another another aspect of uh, dressmaking or clothing that I've not done before. Just to add, add you know, a new yeah, skill. Yeah, just to, to, to keep your adding toolbox. knowledge. Keep adding knowledge on. So again, open that up. And um, we're going to press that. Lovely. And skip round. Do you know what I find most Mondays? On a Sunday night, I think, oh, I set myself things for the week. Like, yeah. Go, I think it just depends, doesn't it, if you see that as a cycle or whether you 
and sometimes New Year's resolutions, if they're normally, you know, whether it's weight related or smoking or giving up, you know, I don't know, alcohol for a month or January. But I think we can do we can do those all year round. Yeah, we can do those all year round. It doesn't have to be New Year. I think if you do them at New Year, the pressure's on. Everybody's doing them as at well. The same time. So whether you get support they're doing it that way also as well in some ways I think it's worse particularly if it's the like the diet ones when you've just had Christmas and you've really got to enjoy <laughs> food and then it's like not only are you going back to your normal routine but you're going to take away all the nice stuff as well the things yes. to look forward to so that is the outside of the coat quite straightforward Lovely. so now we're going to build really the collar quick. so we can put the collar on you see that the collar it looks like it's not going to fit no but when it's sewn it creates like a little curl that will make it stick out a little bit. Okay. Which you see, it doesn't quite lie flat. But I think that when it goes on, on the, dog, the dog, it Almost lies like a bit differently. Almost lightning, it's yes. going to stand up a little bit. It's, yeah, you want that bit of, <laughs> yeah. bit of rough dog collar. Yes, ready to, ready to go. <laughs> so again, we've, I've interfaced one piece. I've interfaced the, the top of the collar, which I'm going to have the Tim Holtz on the top. But okay. I'm going to have a plane underneath. Just, to, just for something different, just to mix it up. So this I one did you did the, the same liberty. both sides, yep. but this one you're going to go for a half and half, mix yeah. and match. You can just see the collar here if I show you on the Liberty. There we go. Careful when you go around curves, it's just, just take it slowly, don't rush. It's not too sharp though, is it, that curve? It's not... Um... No, it's not a shallow curve, that. And we're going to clip the corners, or the, clip the curve anyway, so that when you turn it out, it, it turns quite nice and flat. Nice and crisply, which yeah. I've, I'm sure is going to mean we need Derek. Yeah. Derek the dogger. Yeah. Imagine that, seeing all the dogs at the park in their Tim Holtz and Liberty coats. <laughs> we must have Derek the dogger. We, um... My trend. mum has been saying for ages that she really wants to get a dog and she knew that my dad wouldn't really be that keen on the idea and um, so she just decided she was going to just find the dog that she wanted to get anyway and she's <laughs> been talking to the breeder and she, it's a um, cross between a Maltese and a Poodle so it's called a Multi-Poo which I think is an awful name for a dog but the dog <laughs> itself is very cute um, and she told my dad yesterday and she sent me a video of him in the car and he's like well there are some very practical things that need to be addressed here Leslie I mean, what are we going to do about, um, you know, you need to have training and insurance. Like, he went into full practical mode, whereas my mum's just like, I just want a dog. I want a dog, I want a dog. dog. <laughs> She's got a name and everything, so you're gonna, I'll probably be putting it all over social media. Keep already, it already got a name. <laughs> so clip around the curve. Right. So just grow quite close together, but make sure you don't cut through that stitching. You only really need to go around till you reach a flatter part. Okay. So again, go around there. Now you could trim those bits off as well if you wanted to get rid of more bulk when you turn it through. So just trim all those pieces off. Similar to doing a collar. And so yeah. we're used to doing collars on shirts. That I like to try and trim as much out of the way as I can before you start turning it through and it just gets the bulk out of the way. Now, I think, I'm trying to think, did I... I may have actually top-stitched that collar when I put it on. The pattern doesn't say to top-stitch all the way round the, the whole coat when you finished it, but I did. Just went for it. I just thought it would hold it in place better, so this line of stitching around the outside Again, is... Again, it gives um, it that professional... It holds it more, I thought. You see that there? Yeah. And you get that nice sleek, sort of, that's that stitch line along here on that ochre fabric. Which one's most popular at the moment? Is it the Liberty or the Tim Holtz? The Tim Holtz is most popular at the moment. I thought the Liberty might be. Very good. But um, nice to see. Maybe we've got some maybe masculine some, dogs. Yeah, maybe it's, yeah, all the male <laughs> dogs are watching. <laughs> <laughs> like, please include me. Is Derek around? He's not. He's not, okay. But I don't know if you've got Derek well, no, in yours. No, I haven't actually, so we can manage without. It's only... Okay might need it for the for that so i'm going to press that now okay turned it inside out press it now i want to get a nice neat edge to that the best way is just keep roll roll the two 
piece of fabric between your fingers till you're pulling it out. And just to recap, you interface the top side or the bottom side? I've interfaced the top side. The top side? Yeah. So like with a collar, so you've got that softer bit to your skin or to yes. the dog, in this case to the dog. But this soft bit is just going to go against the, the top the of the coat, coat there. Anyway. Go top of the collar. Now you know, I'm oh, sorry. That's fine. I'll just <laughs> have a little down. I'm going to lay it on the way that it's going to be. Okay. All right. And then pin it in place. So you find your centre point by folding that in half. That's your centre point. Pop a pin in there. Line that up with the centre line of your coat. Just before you carry on with stitching that into place, I'm just yep. going to recap the fabric bundles of these. Okay. So we'll pop back in a second and we're going to just pop the collar in. Is that the yep. next bit? Yeah, and I'll then... just pin it into place and okay. I can sew it in when I'll you come back. I'll take this one with me and we'll okay. back in a second. So the, um, the Tim Holtz bundle is the most popular at the moment, so I'll start by showing you that one. So there's two fabrics. You get two and a half metres of fabric. So this is enough for up to the biggest size of dog coat, so the extra large if, you want, um, if you've want if you got a bigger dog. So you've got the, um, the beige and then you get a metre and a half of the Tim Holtz, which I'll open up so you can see. Because it has got some print on it as well. It's not just that um, sort of gingham or tartan, I should say. Let me open it up. Can we see, if we look a little bit more closely, you get that inky stamp. Because Tim Holtz, he really does have a lot of influence from the um, paper crafting, from inking. He does a lot of stamps and um, sort of paper craft. And you can just see that inky, almost like a newspaper, the residue from an, an inky newspaper. So you get a metre and a half of this. There's that text you can just see there. And a metre of the beige that's been um, colour matched perfectly. Then we have also got our Liberty colourway. Oh, you do need to check out your baskets on, um, on this one. It's, really, it's gone really, really um, popular on the phone, so please make sure you do check out your baskets. The Liberty, you get a metre and a half. This is the new Liberty quilting fabric, so it's that slightly thicker weight, really beautiful to work with, and then teamed with the ochre, but a metre and a half of that really lovely, classic Liberty print. And I think whether, you know, for a boy or a girl, that works. Then we've also got some stocking bundles. So this was from uh, Jennifer, one of Jennifer Taylor's shows. Again, another really popular item on the 7th of November. So you can go back on YouTube and watch our shows if you missed that and you want to see the tutorial. But in these kits, you get the pattern for this um, bone stocking, which is really cute with a little paw print there. You can just see here. That's... And you also get, or you could just stuff it if you wanted it as a little cushion. So you get a metre of fabric, half a metre of that star on the canvas fabric, and then half a metre of your cream. Then you also get your felt for the paw print detail, your wadding, your template, and your thread. 19.99, I think that's a bargain. Let's have a look at that little paw. There you go. And then we've also got the bigger paw, so you get the template for this one too. Again, utilising the felt. I just think that's great. So you can see that way. I've got a little thread on there. There we go. So that's the first option, but then also we've got two other colour options. So we've got the um, a red version with reindeers. So this uses a white felt for the paw print detail and then a solid red as well. So half a metre of each of these fabrics. Got a nice little glitter detail on the nose there of the reindeer. Your thread, again your wadding. $19.99. And then you've got a green version of that. That again comes with your templates in your forest green. This was really, really popular when we had it on with Jennifer Taylor. So we bought it back today, back by popular demand. If you did miss it last time, MIGC 77. So you've got the paw print stocking or the uh, dog bone shaped stocking. And the template for that that comes with this, you get a kit all bundled up. But all of these sheets here, so you can 
use those ready to go. I wonder what that is. <laughs> That's the ball. Then you've also got the patterns. So for the dog coat, we've got, oh, I haven't got that pattern over here, actually. I'll grab that one in a sec. But then we've got two other patterns as well this morning. So first of all, we've got a dog's accessories pattern kit, which is really great value. For $7.99, you get five different patterns in here. So you've got a dog bed in three different sizes. Then you've got a, um, a sort of a little carry case for a lead. You've got a dog coat or harness. And some different um, combinations there of that, so different shapes. And again, just on the back, you can see those three different cushion sizes. So nice to have maybe in the lounge or um, depending where your dog lives. And you can see there the coat, the lead container and the harness. BYBR58. And then the other pattern that we've got from Butterick is the, um, again, the two cushions and the two dog coats. There we go. So we've got those two there. And the cushions. On the back, you can just see the size options there too. And then the final pattern that I haven't got over here, but this is the one for the dog coat. Well, I'll go over and grab this um, from Paul. So if, we ha if you do want to use that for the uh, Liberty pattern or the Tim Holtz, then the pattern for that that comes in, well, you can use this from an extra small to an extra large dog, the patchwork coat this morning. All of your instructions and layout details in there too, as well as obviously the paper pattern. Lovely. Where are we up to, Paul? Okay, what I've done, I've basted the collar into place. Along there, I pinned it on, basted it into place. This is just really to hold it. Yeah. Because when we put the other, the lining on the top, we'll sew all the way around and that will hold it in as well. Okay. So this is just to place this it. This is temporary almost. And to yeah. almost, yes, just tack it into place. So what I'm doing now is uh, the, the strap that goes underneath the coat. Under your and tummy. under the tummy. This bit here. So this is in one piece. I'll just show that there. There we go. On our invisible dog. Yeah, one piece is interfaced and folded in half lengthways. So one big long strip. One Again, big long facing. strip, yep. And I'm sewing so far down, stopping and leaving a gap because that's where it's going to be turned through. And then sewing along that long edge again. So you're going to cut this? Along. No, it goes on as one piece. Oh, it goes on as one piece all the way yeah. under? Oh, yes. I thought it was two tabs, but you it's can, not. You can't, you can't see it against the... Because um, the fabric the, goes... The, it's the same match, You can see it all the way across. Here we go. So that one long strip all the way under, or over patch, I should say, of the, um, the dog's back. Can you just see that there running along? Okay. So like anything you're turning out, clip the corners on both of them. Then clip that corner off, clip that corner off, and this is where Derek would have been useful again. Yep. So then you're just turning that back through. You know, this is quite a quick cell. make, isn't it? It is quite a quick it's not make. Too, no. Not too um, sort of time consuming or bulky. We do need Derek. We do need Derek. But, uh, you can turn that through. Yeah. Is it possible to get a Derek the Dobber? Can, I, we get a, can Chris maybe grab one? He's going to grab one. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the conversation in my ear, they're saying, because we've got a new floor manager, Chris, they're saying, do you know what Derek the Dobber is, mate? Uh, well, like, who, who <laughs> who's is, Derek the Dobber? They think it's going to be someone who's like dobbing people in in the, in the office outside or something. <laughs> Derek the double for anyone who doesn't know, it's like a big knitting needle knitting that we needle use to just like poke that. out no, the, um, any bits that need to be turned through. No, never mind. I'll show you in a second. Right. So we, have, we are also using Velcro on this, which we've got this morning on the show. So I'll show you, we've got this in black and white, so depending which um, colour option you're using. Here we go, here it is. Thank you, Chris, ah, we just grabbed that. Star man. This is Thank what you. we need. So that's the white Velcro. Obviously, you've got your two sides there that come together, 60 centimetres. $3.99. And then the black option. 
Oh, we've only got four left in stock of the black. So if you like this one, which is what I would put with the Tim Holtz, actually, I would go yes. for the black. Um, only four of this one left in stock, so you will need to check out quickly on that. Again, 60 centimetres. TLGQ49, 3.99. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so strip turned out. Now we're going to just press that again. Okay. Because the pieces that you've turned it through, it said to, you could hand stitch those. But the way this gets attached to the lining at the back, I didn't see a need to hand stitch it because I'm just going to top stitch over the whole lot. Okay. Just trying to hop. You need a, yeah. a um, small iron there. Might press have been good. that. I was in London the other day. I was um, doing some filming in London. And I, pop, we were, I was working near Liberties and I walked past it on the way and I thought, <sighs> if I finish tonight, I'm going to pop in there and look at the fabrics. <laughs> I dare I do it to myself. And I went to the main, you know, the flagship store in London. Oh, lovely. Yes. And it's just beautiful. It's not like any other department store because it's just, it's like stepping back in time and the Christmas decorations in there. I bet. They have a whole Christmas floor, you can imagine, can't you? And they had Christmas puddings wrapped in Liberty oh, fabric. Oh, wow. So you can give those as presents. Um, all the new Liberty quilting fabrics. Really, really beautiful. And they had that whole floor it is with that whole haberdashery. And, but yeah, I thought the Christmas puddings wrapped in Liberty fabric were, um, were a nice idea. Fabulous idea. idea. Now, I'm going to attach this to the lining at the back. Attach it. If you're using a print, make sure you attach it to the right side. Yes, Because this will be outside. Right side. Yeah, it doesn't matter with what we're using here. And I've lined it up with where the, that cross is going to be. Oh, there is nice. a placement marking on the pattern. It tells you where to put it, but I suppose if you've got a high-waisted dog or yeah. a low-waisted <laughs> dog, you could move that yourself. So I'm or just going no to try and line dog. it up. A no-waisted <laughs> yeah. dog, yes. Or you could make this longer if you've got a very wide dog. So, <laughs> so you've got a big fat dog with no waist and you can't quite get the band over, you can make it a bit longer and, and uh, figure out where that needs to lie. So I'm just pinning that into place. And again, you could decide where you want this to pin. Uh, I've gone quite close to the edge there. So okay. it's not flapping about too much. There we go. It's quite hard for you to see, but it's just a th probably a thumb width there yeah. where that's attached, both sides. Ah, oh, there we go. Perfect. Just remember, if you are buying two of these, because some people are multi-buying, this fabric will already be cut. So if you get the, uh, say, the Liberty Newland bundle, you'd get a metre and a half of Liberty um, print and a metre of ochre, and then you'd get that again. So another metre and a half of Liberty. It wouldn't be three metres of Liberty cut off the bolt because these are pre-cut already, ready to send to you. So now I'm going to stitch like a box around there, which will attach. To secure it. Just this. So straight around. Again, this is attached to the right side of your fabric because this will be on the outside of the coat. It's underneath, but it's the outside of the coat. So this isn't, uh, you will across. see this, although you yeah. won't see it when it's on the dog, it will be. <laughs> Those fabrics do work really well together. Yes. Do you know what? I think pets bring us so much happiness. <laughs> they just, no, but they do, don't they? I just think, you know, when you get home and they're just happy to see you and... It's nice to treat them at Christmas. I think most people don't even need encouraging to treat their pet at Christmas. True. Most people are ready to spend money on their cat or dog. And you find if I buy the cat a toy, he'll spend more time playing with the wrapping paper oh, yeah, than he will, than he will than with the, the toy, toy itself. itself. Yeah. But that's cats for you. Well, it's children as well, isn't oh, it? Oh, children some games. Just like the wrapper more. They'll play with the box, won't they? Do you know what my mum always says my favourite toy was when I was younger? Was to get the laundry basket. It had holes in it. It was one of those plastic <laughs> ones. And to poke pegs through the, the holes in the laundry basket. And yet you could have all the, all the actual real toys in the world. And, and, all these uh, fancy toys. Yeah. And, yeah, and sit in the, the washing peg basket. basket and just poke pegs through it. Fab. <laughs> so we've got front and back. Front and back. So now we're going to put everything on the inside. So... Tuck your straps in so you don't end up sewing those into your, your seams. Now the main thing you've got to line up are these top parts. Sorry to interrupt you Paul, just please do check out your baskets on this. Which one's most popular? 
still the Tim Holtz. So by far, this Tim Holtz is way out in the lead. So if you do like this one, please do check out your baskets. We are limited on the stock of both of these now, AJGC11. Um, or you can give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. Treat your pet. It's not going to lie very flat at that. Just to show you the Liberty as well, because that one's also been popular, IXGC66, the Newland Liberty print. Lots of people with that one in their basket, so you do need to check it out. It's not a guaranteed order um, until you have checked out all the way through, so just make sure you do that. 29.99, And you get a metre and a half of the Liberty, so it's not... Um, they've not been stingy on the Liberty. You get a metre of the ochre and a metre and a half of the Liberty. And you will have some left over. It's that quilted and weight um, Liberty fabric, which is new. And you will have some left over for your stash, particularly if you've got a small dog. You can see that there. It's beautiful, really lovely. Let me show you it that way. It is like a bib. <laughs> it's like a bib, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you ready? Ready to go? And you could, oh no, I was going to say you could put that round your waist, but there's no way that's going round the waist. <laughs> Or like a shirt. Hang on, I'm going to wear this like this for the rest of the show, just like a top. How does that? So you'd never know. If someone's just tuned in, they think I've got a Liberty top on. Especially if you're going out for dinner, you could wear that and then you're yeah. not going to spill it all With down. With the collar, the collar looks perfect. Yeah. Now this is going to be stitched all the way around, but leaving a gap at the bottom to turn, to turn, out to, turn it all through or bag it out, as we call it in dressmaking. Um, in terms of the right side with this um, beige fabric, do you any tips for finding the right side with a solid or not? Not really. You really can't tell with this. I think one's got slight more of a shine to it than the other. Okay. Um, I, somebody did say that you can tell by the selvage. Yes. And where the holes have gone through when they've actually been um, punched. Um, or no, yeah. making it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of a word, what word for that then? Um, I've not really noticed. So just really, you just have a little look at it. And just if you, yeah, if you have a look and see and, and choo choose which one you're happy with. So now I'm just going to go all the way around the outside, starting at the bottom. Uh, again, your half inch seam allowance. Doesn't really matter if you've gone a little bit bigger or smaller on your seam allowance, as long as you've got both parts of the fabric caught in. Careful you don't get those straps, you've got those they want to tucked, be tucked well away. away. Yeah. Because you could go all the way around and then all of a sudden oh, you yes. can't get them out. Now also you could make this as a gift for somebody else's dog, couldn't you? Yes. If you perhaps you haven't got pets yourself. Not just for any old random person you see in the park, although that would be nice. <laughs> like a, it's like a random act of kindness. Those, I like those days. Um, I, think it'd be fun, I think it'd be fun in the Christmas fabrics as well. Yes. I guess, uh, yeah. well, you could do they, Have you seen the um, dog coats where they have even little hats, don't they, that they yes. put on the dogs? Yes. If your dog's happy to wear it, I think... I'm sure they'll just soon tell you if they're not. <laughs> Try and get my cat wearing one of these. It'd be fun. Not a chance? Not a chance. Not because he's fat, just because he wouldn't no, wear No, just because... No. <laughs> Paul's got a chubby try cat. Book, no, try book clothing <laughs> on a cat. Just no, they're not quite enough for it, Impossible, no. They'd soon let you know. So careful when you go around the corner for the collar. You've got thickness of the collar and the interface in there. We've got about 10 minutes. So you are just okay. going over the whole collar. So at this point right here now, you're going through two layers of fabric and a layer of interfacing. Uh, two, well, you've got... Four layers of fabric and two layers of oh, interfacing. Oh, yeah, because of the collar. Because you've got the, the collar, the you've got the main body, you've got the lining. So a lot to get through, but... Okay, just take your time around the corner, flattening everything underneath. OK. Pin down, pivot. Going around that edge, half yeah. an inch, all the way around. Well, so you're getting quite close to your collar there, so you might want to make sure your collar's not tucked in underneath as well. So just move that out the way inside there. If you've got a couple of dogs, you could have them all in matching, <gasps> couldn't you? That'd be great. 
<laughs> matching outfits. <laughs> Or you could applique their names down the side. Yeah, or an initial, or those yeah. little felt paws if you yeah. wanted to. Then you go to put them on, the dogs all keep moving around, so you don't know what their names are. Not going to stand, sit still. Yeah. Are you doing any personal sewing projects at the moment, love, or are you busy with work-related sewing? Oh, I'm part way through making the shirt in a lovely Liberty fabric. In I've made so many Liberty Fabric shirts for other people and never one for myself. It was time. So it was time. So I got bought some fabric last Christmas. And, last Christmas? Uh, I, I know, you last Christmas. Year. And I've had the fabric for a year and not got round to doing it yet. So it was well over. It was time. I was hoping I'd have it finished for this morning, but I didn't. Next time. So next time, yes, yeah, so watch out for that one. It's all, autumn that. leaves. Not, not next Christmas. Oh. No, it's autumn leaves, so I've got to get it done pretty soon. 35 so, days to Christmas. Oh, Crazy, isn't it? I bought a single crazy, present. No. Have you? No. No. I don't do Christmas till about a week before. No, I'm exactly the Typical same. Typical man in that respect. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a man and I leave really late. Producer Paul said he's bought nearly all of his. Very organised. No, very organised. So now we're turning it inside out. So your best way is to get hold of the furthest part. Okay. A bit like putting a duvet on. Yes, I'm yeah. the turning out okay. the, the bed sheets. Get hold of the furthest part and, and bring that through. And the same with the other side. So get hold of that. Talking of presents this morning, they um, had a bit of a mishap with the delivery here in the same quarter offices and they ended up with 20 big air fresheners. So they were coming <laughs> around this morning saying, does anyone want an air freshener? Producer Paul's going to give one to his mum as a present for Christmas. <laughs> Did you get an air freshener? Paul? I got one as well, yeah, yes. Paul's got an air freshener, I've yep. got an air freshener. And then they said, having given them to us, oh, there's no fragrance in there. You have to get that, you have to get that bit yourself. So it's just the container, <laughs> just an air freshener container. So uh, they know how to spoil us. Yeah, that was going to be a, a Christmas present for somebody. It won't be you do, no, you do need to kind of have the spray <laughs> in there, or it's just yes. an ornament with a hole in the top. So using Derek, we're going to turn out, though these are the little tabs at the top. These have turned out to be quite a bit narrower than the other ones. Okay. Don't know why. Cut the pattern the same. So poking out those corners, because these are where you will attach your Velcro to these corners. And Everyone's the loving those patterns this morning as well. So the um, please do check out your baskets. I, this is it's gone crazy quickly. So um, if you do like the remember, you can check out as many times as you like throughout the day. So if you see something or you bought something earlier, it's two ninety five per day. It's capped at midnight. So if you buy the dog pattern now and then you see something later on, then you can always add that to your order and you won't be charged again. But the um, the dog coat pattern from Quick Sew, you've got two coats in there. That one is uh, we'll get that one up on your screen in just a second. But you can see there the two patchwork options from extra small to extra large. $8.99. Okay, so now I'm just going to press all that all okay. the way around the outside We're there. of it. That was really quick. And this all you've done in advance one. is the cutting and interfacing those. Yes, so interface yeah, interface well. the, um, the top pieces. So again, Roll the edges, bring them out, but try and get those even. So what I'm going to do is get them as even as possible. And then I would, what I did with that one, I top stitched all the way around that outer edge. Again, tucking that out of the way. I used Wonder yeah. Clips to keep that oh, out of the you? way just to make sure I didn't sew that in as well. And just bringing those edges out. You could definitely do, um, do dressmaking in that fabric, couldn't you? Yeah. A little jacket or a shirt. Yeah. It's getting it nice You and could do crisp. yourself a jacket to yeah. match when you walk couldn't in the you? dog. <laughs> For Christmas, oh, yeah, what I always like the idea of doing, and I'm never organised enough to actually do it, is, you know, when people send Christmas cards with their, like, a family photo on the front or, um, like, the old fashions that they do in films. Yes. I think there's an episode of Friends, isn't there, where they do it, they're trying to do, it's for a wedding um, card, and they do a picture for the front, and imagine having the dog in a matching outfit to the whole family, <laughs> and, or, or the more for children, if you had the children all dressed up. Now, the way of finishing that off is to turn the, those edges where you've, or where I have turned it through 
and then hand stitch those. But way, because I top stitched all the way round, I just found that I could top stitch that and not have to hand stitch any. So hand stitching all the way. How long have we got left? Can I do we've that? We've got, or? we've got, yeah, four minutes. Okay. What do you reckon? I reckon or, we could do that in four minutes. Yeah, I'll do or that in do four minutes. The and then, well, the Velcro is, is um, stick on. So easy peasy. It, yeah, it literally come. Oops. <laughs> In That's the sewing machine. Got it I'll in do that quickly, then we can do it again. Um, it literally, you've got your two pieces of Velcro, soft one, hard one. The pattern explains how to put it on if it's not so straightforward. Don't have them both like that. No. You, if you just took one over like that, so you're putting one on the top, one on the bottom. Because it needs to loop. So that when they meet up, they'll meet like that. Okay. So it's just yeah. going to be as well about checking yeah. when you cut so that, that strip, the body. size of the dog really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so do that. If you wanted to shorten those because you had a narrower dog, or you could put a couple of these Velcro strips on. Mm, depending. And then yeah, everybody <laughs> puts on weight or loses yeah. weight. <laughs> but something like that is so easy to do, to put the Velcro, because I would naturally go, oh, yeah, same yeah. side, off you go. But it's not. But it, you do need to just check no, that it's going to just get it on, connect. Yeah, but the pattern will tell you that. It's quite straightforward. And it's sticky back. So you just peel it off. Should I feel this like one? so? And sticks on, and it's very sticky. It Let's says to leave it 24 hours. It says on the back of the Velcro pack, leave for 24, uh, 24 hours, and it'll be solid. Okay. But, but quite you feel quickly, how, how sticky that yeah, is already. That's, that's, that's really not coming come off. Off. You could top stitch around that as well. Sometimes you do the cross, don't you, through the Velcro? Yeah. You could do that if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, just to hold it even more, but and then you that's... see. That works. So that will keep that out of the way. And you do the same oh, there if you so want to just the on there. Pop your Velcro on the... Yep. And the part that's going to go around your... Uh, the neck. And then just the top stitching Just round. the top stitching. So I started just under the collar here. And you could choose and a colour. And then go all the way around. You could choose a contrasting colour. You could go for, couldn't you? Yeah, that would work well. So you start just under where the collar is, so that way you will end up back at the same point and then the collar still stays loose and I'm just going about right close to the edge top stitching is done close to the edge as possible without going over the edge I'll do that little small fiddle yeah. first and then yeah, would some. you top stitch before you put the velcro on or does it really matter well, it doesn't matter I probably would because that way you're not putting the velcro under the machine because it might not like you might catch that although i've stitched through velcro before now and it's stitched okay okay yeah so yeah watch careful you're not getting those straps tucked underneath they're the only thing to watch out for just on keep this. reminding yourself yeah to just keep away. reminding yourself get them out of the way and when you get it to the bottom here you're closing up that gap where you turned everything through. And just while you're finishing that, you're back in an hour, aren't you, Paul? And we're doing um, sort of a yes. Christmas roundup, if you like, of all of well, a lot of the very popular products. So we've got some of your exclusive designs, haven't we, at 11? Yeah, we've got my gingerbread house and my Christmas doorstop. cracker. Gingerbread house doorstop is lovely, <laughs> really, really cute. And then the Christmas cracker, which yeah. is a draft excluder. So we've got that one as well. And then we've also got the um, big Christmas stocking. So if you're giving more yep. than a little sack, so you're in stocking and you need like a big Christmas, more of like a big sack, isn't it? Christmas sack. And we're going to be looking at that one too. You are speedy. Ah, uh, nearly there. Okay. I'll uh, take these with me. Corners. Just finish that bit off there. Perfect. So we've got the Tim Holtz and the Liberty bundles this morning. This one here that Paul's just finishing off is the Tim Holtz. Really incredibly popular. You do need to check out your baskets. AJGC 11, 28.49. Look at those. Let's just hold those up. Yep. Can I hold that one? There we go. Our two little dogs. Ready to go. Thank you, Paul.
You're we'll welcome. see you're getting it out for okay. our draft excluders Lovely. and the gingerbread doorstop. Yes. Lovely. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to take this one with me and the pattern. So the um, Liberty pattern that you can just see here in this one made up, we've teamed with an ochre solid from Macau, so picking out some of the floral detail in the petals. But you get a metre and a half of the Liberty floral, and that's in their quilting weight fabric range. So that's a, their newer range. Really nice and sturdy. And then the ochre solids you get a metre of for $29.99. Oh, also, you do need to check out on that one as well, I'm now being told, IXGC66. And then the one that we've been seeing and um, Paul demoing within this last hour from Tim Holtz, you've got the plaid look there in your um, white, black and your sandy colour. And then you've got your beige as well, so the beige solid. Again, two and a half metres of fabric. Then we've also got the pattern for this. So if you have got your eye on the dog coat and you do want to make that using these kits this morning, the pattern is separate. So you could either use your own fabric or you could use these. You've got two little pet coats in here from an extra small to an extra large and just two variations on the patchwork detail on the back of the coat that you can see there. $8.99. And the most popular thing of the hour, which we've skimmed over really quickly, is this paw kit. So really lovely stockings for your animals. So this was on the 7th of November at 8 o'clock. If you want to go back and watch Jennifer Taylor make these, you've got the, um, the dog bone pattern and also the paw stocking. So you can hang both of those up. You can just see here it does hang this way. So the fabric bundle for that, you can see, is these stars on the linen look fabric with your cream, your red felt for the paw detail, and you get all of your templates in that. Then you've also got a green colourway, so a green reindeer fabric, I've paired with a solid, so a metre of fabric in total, half a metre of each of those. You get your white felt for the paw detail and a green thread. And your wadding. And then the last option is that exact same kit, but we're swapping it in for red reindeer fabric. So this one just here, again with your white felt, there it is, perfect. Now after the break, have I got it here, uh, Tilly Rosie's back and we're going to be looking at this beautiful stitch journal, so a really lovely way of showcasing all of the stitches that your machine can do. We're looking at the Elm 680 which is a fab machine, Tilly's husband if he's watching she wants this one for Christmas. She told me yesterday he was like, I get the hint. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in three minutes to look at the Stitch Journal. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a ladder stitch. Now this is a great stitch when you want to sew something up and create an invisible stitch. Now first of all, I'm just going to use the example of something like a pincushion, but I need to bring these two edges together using the invisible stitch, which is known as the ladder stitch. So first of all, I'm going to take my needle up through the fold. So I'm going to be concealing the knot in the thread. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle in through the fold of the fabric and come out. So you can see that I'm on the actual fold there, so obviously there's the, the raw edges are inside my pincushion. I'm going to take that through. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side and repeat that stitch. So I want to make sure that this is parallel. So I'm going to come in through that fold and come out. So again I'm making these stitches really big so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see how I'm going across the whole of the fabric. If I just keep doing a few stitches.
So as you can see, we have the ladder stitch there going across the two pieces of fabric. So when I pull my thread, you can see that almost makes those stitches invisible. Join us on Thursday the 23rd of November when we'll unveil our new Alison Glass quilt kit. This stunning Meridian quilt designed by Alison and Jessica Bobrovsky showcasing the beautiful Sun Prints range. You'll love the modern jewel tones and subtle prints. Live in the studio, guest designer Lucy Brennan will talk you through this project so you can master the art of quilting with regular and elliptical curves. So, tune in at 8am on Thursday the 23rd of November for this exclusive show, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back. In this hour, we're looking at the Elna 680 sewing machine. So Elna are our home brand here at Sewing Quarter. We have lots of different machines on the show. We try out all different ones. And the 680 is a really popular one with our designers. So we're going to be looking at lots of the lovely features that are on that machine in this hour with Tilly Rose. Now we're going to be making a stitch journal, which I'd never seen before today. And Tilly showed me this this morning. And it's a really lovely thing to have next to your machine to use as a reference guide for the different stitches that you can, um, that you can do using your machine. So utilising all of those different stitches and incorporating them, using a calico to make this, but you can add all different sections to it. But a really lovely visual way, a bit like a mood board really, where you can show the different letters and numbers. You can write little notes to yourself. You can pin in little uh, post-it notes if you want to. You can also mix the mediums if you want to use um, sort of pens to add markings on there. You can just see that as well with applique and things like that. But Tilly's going to be showing us how to do that. And the calico that was used for this, this sells out every time we have it on the show. It's fantastic value, 199 per half metre. So this is cut off the bolt for you. You're going to need to be quick if you want this this morning because it's really, really popular. Um, this is fantastic if you want to make a toile. So I know that Jennifer Mills quite often says if you want to make up something um, as a practice run, really. So say you have bought, like Paul was just saying, a Liberty fabric to make a shirt in and you don't want to ruin it. You don't want it to go wrong. You could make up a toile, first of all, or for a dress or a blazer in this really great value fabric, 199 per half meter, in that cream color there. But the best advice that we can just give you this morning is please do check out your baskets immediately on that. If things are in your basket, they're not guaranteed until it has been checked out all the way through to the end. So with this one, you do need to make sure you check it out just to ensure that it is yours if you want it. But fantastic value, great for trying and, and sampling for different things. And Tilly will tell you a bit more about what you could use this for as well. And I'll take the stitch journal with me. Tilly, tell us about this. You're back. Hello, hello. Speedy, hello. speedy, you all right? I'm good, thank you. How are we? Thank how you. Are we, um, hello. Did you have a cup of tea? I did. Or coffee, what did you go coffee, for? Coffee, coffee. Coffee, coffee. Yep. Was it a fancy coffee or just a... We, yeah. don't, we don't have a fancy machine, no, actually, don't. do we? So I don't know why <laughs> I asked that question. You just got to go for a, yeah. a, just a stirring... Just an ordinary. <laughs> an ordinary coffee, but we'll do the job. So Calico, talk yes. to me a little bit about this. What do you use okay, it for? Okay, I have Calico in my stash. I actually asked for this to be on the show because, in my opinion, you can never have too much Calico. It has so many uses. So. Yes, I'm going to be showing you how to do it for the stitch journal today, but um, I do, um, so I do, besides the sewing machine, I do a lot of hand sewing, which um, sometimes needs a backing on as well. So Calico, brilliant for that. Yeah. If you need, if I work with a lot of vintage linens and lace, um, and they sometimes need a bit of stability. So again, that gives it that stability on the back of a project. But you can um, also use it, um, you might want to use it if you're doing some free motion embroidery and you, instead of using a stabiliser, you might want a thicker stabiliser. You can use your calico. Because it's a little bit thicker than a cotton, it isn't is. it? It yeah, does have a bit more body to it. But then also I use it for Selling really templates. quickly, sorry, Jimmy, I know. just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want a, a, you know, a template, we were doing the star garland on the earlier show, but you might actually want to cut your stars out as in fabric and keep them as a, per, you know, a, a pattern to have in. So um, again, I keep them in my stash. Um, Dressmaking patterns, you mentioned them, costumes for children, yeah. anything like that, you can um, change it so much. And because um, 
of the, the, the detail of it, you can write on it. That's what I like. So that's what I'm doing in my journal. You see this um, here. Yes. So you can see, um, obviously, there's other fabrics in here. It's where I'll, I'll explain why, but the base. Sorry, is half the stock's gone already. 26 <laughs> people with it in their basket need to check it out. <laughs> gonna be really quick. quickly. Sorry to keep interrupting you, but <laughs> XCFG65, over half the stock's gone, so you really do need to check mm. out your baskets. Don't wait. Don't hesitate and think I'll do it at the end of the show. If everyone had a meter of that in their baskets, that would have sold out, so please do check it out if you do want it. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's always popular. I don't I know. think you can never just, have I think too much. It's, like you no. say, maybe people just want it in their stash. But it, it will take any thread. Um, you can write on it, you can stamp on it, you can paint on it, you can do all sorts of, you know, um, various um, areas of sewing on there. It's just uh, one of those basics that you, you know, you have you just it need. as part of your sewing kit. Yeah. Just a go-to yeah. sort of thing, really, yes. to have yeah. there. Yeah. Adding some stability, but also if you just want to use it. Yes. So it's quite versatile, really. And for that price, you wouldn't expect to be getting something no, quite so... No, it's a really good cheap, you quite, know, cheap you know, quite deal so versatile. to keep it in, you know, sort of thing. Better than using sort of nice cottons and things if you, yeah. if you don't need to. No, 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 no. So what I'm going to show today is how you can use your calico um, or your plain fabrics and actually make a little stitch journal. I love this. <laughs> I really because, love it. Um, obviously, we're working with the Elna 680 today. And um, until I started working on Sewing Quarter, I hadn't actually um, used an Elna machine before. Oh, not. I, you know, there's obviously a, a, a variety of brands. Um, and I, this was the first machine that I used on the show. Well, I fell in love straight away because there's so many features. And um, I know we mentioned when we were on together yesterday, I cover a broad range of sewing. So I'm, I'm not a dressmaker, but I can dressmake and I do that at home. But I teach all sorts of stitching. Um, and so for me, it covers such a multitude of, of different areas of sewing and crafting. Um, and then... When you get a sewing machine, the first thing I, I sort of teach to all, you know, all my students is sit down, give yourself time. Um, obviously, this has not taken me just half an hour to. No. It's taken quite a while. Um, but you can but build it up. You can build it up, and that's the joy. So today, what I want to show viewers is um, how to just do your basic um, base for your journal and then how you can keep adding into, you know, and it, it almost like um, a, a directory that you can keep adding and adding and adding. And it's a bit like a mood board or um, a, a scrapbooking journal, but yeah. in fabric and, and thread, um, which kind of sums me up, really, because I, I put That's all sold out. Sorts. Sorry, the calico's gone. Okay. Just take that off the desk. Okay. Um, but you might want to use um, printed fabrics as well and use the printed fabric um, as a base. I, I, I've used mine as, um, you know, plain and then use the printed fabrics on top. Um, but you might want different coloured pages and then you can still add all your details and actually make it very personal to you. you know. It is exactly that, like mm. a mood board. We were saying, I said that it reminded me, you know if you see a garden or an interior yes. designer when they yes. have a big board and it is, yep. you've got little sort of snippets and things cut out from magazines yep. or inspiration yep. and ideas. And yep. This is to use as a reference guide really. So like a visual instead it of an is. instruction manual that yes. you can have that there just yeah. to and, and, and it feels you, lovely and you can write your own notes so whereas you've got the instruction manual and i have to say it's a really really um good instruction manual to go through really it's easy to read um if i compare it to my you will see so <laughs> <laughs> yours is very neat and very professional and mine's look you know a bit dog-eared now because it's version. got all my notes um but this tells you how your machine's going to work what it doesn't tell you is once you've changed your stitches, which stitch you like to work with and how you're going to use that. So that's where your stitch journal comes into play. So if you find a particular decorative stitch you like, or you might want to, you know, you think, oh, twin needle, I've never used that before, let's have a play. Um, get your manual out, um, and I'll go through it in a minute, um, but have a real play, and there'll be patterns, there's so many to choose from, um, but there'll be patterns in there that you think, no, I wouldn't use that. I'm, I'm, when I say that, I'm not a geometric style pattern. I don't, I don't sort of favour straight lines. Sharp lines. Yeah, and, and all the squares. And I'm a bit of a, you know, curly free whirly. spirit, curly whirly. Christmas tree kind of girl. With this hair, you, you've got to go with the flow. Um, so they're my style of, of pattern. But then equally, I've got students that will come to me and say, I can't be doing with all them flowy ones, you know, my yeah, style. I like the... I like the sharp, straight edges. Um, and you can take it into so many different areas. So dressmaking, patchworking, um, 
if you want to quilt in free motion, textile art, um, it might be that you just want to do a little bit of plique and personalise um, plain calico bags or printed bags and put names on for children, costumes, all that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes um, I know viewers have sort of said to me, oh, I haven't actually thought to investigate some of the stitches or even some of the there? features. There's 170 stitches yeah. on this machine, so it's... And, and the other side of that is I've had other viewers say to me, but oh, I, I don't think I'll ever really go down that road because there's too many to use. Well, I can guarantee the minute you open your little library of stitches, you'll be like, oh, what does that oh. do? And what does that do? And what does that do? And then suddenly this whole, you know, um, creative world opens up to you. And, you. and what I think with the machine is the fact that you give the emphasis of the, the sewing and the professional look to your machine and you have to be friends, with, make friends with your machine. <laughs> but because you haven't got to worry about that side of the things, you then are in charge of the creativity and the yeah. inspiration behind that. And that's where your little stitch journal and all your little snippets of practicing. Um, and even if you go wrong, put them in there. And I've, I've kept bits in there to just show. Just as a reminder, even, this bit doesn't always have to be perfect. No, no, no. no, no. And with the, so with the Arnold 680, it's about yes. being brave, jumping in, experimenting with all those different stitches. I said there's 170 different stitches yes. on this machine. And, but not only that, this machine is great, like you said yesterday, because you don't have to add a lot of things to it. It no. comes with so many no. accessories. You can see them here. You get this gorgeous cover, really lovely. Some of the sewing machine covers, I think, are a bit flimsy. And I know. This is a really nice yeah. one. This isn't um, a solid, um, it is out of fabric, but it's a very sturdy fabric. And you've got pockets in the front. Um, to put your foot pedal and your electrics in, in, there. in there. And then obviously it, it fits over your machine um, and you can put your, um, you, you've got a little pocket at the back as well so you can put your, your plate in there. Or your instruction, or instruction manual. manual. Yeah. So you've got your bag or the cover I should say. Then yep. you've got the, um, to extend it if you want to, if you yes, need that extra, extra wide room. table. Yes. Yep. Now if you're doing quilting or patchworking or curtain making, maybe home decor, you need that extra space because obviously it's going to support your fabric. Or it might be that you're dressmaking with fabrics like satin, silk, velvet, and you, you don't want to be pulling as you're, you know, as you're sewing. The last thing you want is for your fabric to drape down and actually be pulling against your needle and your thread yeah. um, because it will mark your fabric. So when you've got the table, that gives you immediately, that gives you that extra space to be working on. And the legs are adjustable. So, so if you you're working that. with a heavier fabric or a thinner fabric or the weight of what you're actually doing with your project, you can alter it to your um, style. To whichever size you want. So now it's wonky. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but if you're doing free motion embroidery or anything where well, you, you know you have got that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, sometimes when you say free motion um, embroidery, um, it's not always an A4 size piece of, um, you know, uh, fabric. It may be a big textile Quilting quilt things, yeah. without it being a patchwork quilting. And again, that gives you the support. So you've got your measurements on there. Um, yeah, it's just an extra feature, really. Extra so, room. Yeah. yeah. And then the real star, really, I think here is that you do get all of these feet. Yes. So let's yes. have a look at those. Let's go. We go in here. Okay. Well, I thought. Deep so breath, Tilly. I have got no. <laughs> I came prepared today Let's because. If I just take my fabric off, I thought, because you were talking yesterday, some of the feet you weren't too sure about what, you would, use them what you would use them for. So I thought I would actually go through on the machine because when you, this is how it arrives in your little goodie bag, sorry. That's all right. Um, but then when you get to your machine, you've got a place for every foot in your machine, which I think is fabulous. To store it. Yes. Okay. So, shall I just run through that and show viewers while we're talking this about that? This is my favourite bit up here. We'll okay, so, um, when your machine arrives, you've got your um, normal sewing bed, um, because your large extension table you would only put on if you need that extra space. And in your sewing bed, if we open up, we've got our little storage case. Now, in the storage case, you've got room for um, extra feet, and when I say extra feet, you'll understand why in a minute. Um, if we take the top layer off, so bobbins in there, you've also got wow. um, all your extra feet that don't fit in up in the cabin crew, <laughs> as I call it, <laughs> yeah. um, can go in your, storage, in your storage box. You've also got a little room for the needles, and in there, you, sorry, sorry yeah, I'll let you do it. There's a twin needle supplied in there as well. 
Okay, so that comes with it and you've got everything there. Your free motion embroidery foot, uh, your buttonhole foot. You've Ten different also... buttonholes on this machine. Yes, so I'll just pop this back and then I'm going to show you, which I think is a fabulous little feature. So, so this is where the air hostess comes in. I'm going to tell you a little story, okay, because I believe in being honest. When I first got it at home, because they sent the machine out kindly for me to look, this was when I first started. And I had all these feet and I was like, put them in the box. And I didn't look at the instru instruction manual, I was a little impatient. And I thought, half the feet, the half of the feet are here, but I haven't got room in the box, what do I do with them? And I thought, no, okay, I'll get the instruction manual out. And then you discovered I discovered the cabin crew. Like, this is, this oh, is like the overhead lovely. locker in the, I in know, the, on the airplane. It's fabulous. So, um, um, at the top of your sewing machine, you've got these little pockets up here, and they're actually um, already printed on. The, the letter that goes with your um, foot as a reference, so it tells you which little space, if I pull them out, where they fit. Okay, so every little foot has got a little home. Um, and then you can reference that, um, if, like, you know, foot E here. Um, what I would suggest, if, because some of these feet will be quite new to you, if, yes. if you're, you know, maybe you're treating yourself to an upgrade and you're, you've got a very basic sewing machine, some of these won't be as standard. Um, but they're all in your directory. So what I thought we could do is just um, on the top row, just run through and, and then I can just go are. through. So um, the foot A, which is your all purpose, that comes on the foot, uh, on the machine as it arrives. So that's your all purpose, general sewing and then zigzag, normal um, every ut you know, utility style sewing. Um, and then we've got M. Now I've done my homework. So M, post -it notes. Yeah, just in case I told you the wrong way around. So <laughs> that's for your overcasting on the edging, so neating your okay. edges. We've got D, and that's a rolled hem. Now a rolled hem is if you're doing fine, um, working with fine fabrics, um, and they're, they're, you want very tiny, tiny, neat little seams. So you'd use it with dressmaking, but you'd, equally you could use it in projects where you just want a very tiny, tiny hem. You don't want a, a, a usual. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you would use that for, for that one. Um, and then we're up to E. So that's your zipper. And then F we on your satin stitch. Now, um, obviously, then you've got all the rest of the feet in in your little storage here. Going on to your little panel. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, before I move on, the little one on the end, which I haven't used yet, and I, I wanted to out there, but I, I run out of time. This is our little pivot pin, and that um, when you put that on your needle plate, you can do perfect circles. Okay, so you can obviously um, put them in your quilting and your patchworking projects, if you want to just cushion decor, yeah, and it gives you that, that perfect circles. circle at different gradients. And again, all the instructions are in your manual, you can look through and work through there. Um, so that's my little cabin crew hidden away. I can see why Tilly said this morning you'd need a week on this machine oh, to gosh, do. We so could talk much. about this machine so all week. Much. There are so many features on here. Yeah, so on the um, LCD panel, panel. Now I'm just going to just very quickly show viewers um, because I do actually want to get sewing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit keen. Um, okay, this is your LCD screen, and I'm just going to refer back to the manual because out of all the pages that. that come in the manual, um, I know how listening to you know other sewers how frightening it can be when you get your machine out the box and you you open it and you think oh computerized panel and yeah. what do i do with it and i don't press anything um in the top if i just get this out you have a little um pointer um that you use a little stylus that you use with your panel and what it does in the, in the instructions here it tells you what every little button will do and That's if you're not easy. sure that then refers to later in the book. And so some of these features I'm gonna show you in a second, and that's what I've put in my stitch directory, um, if you've not used them before. Okay. So for example, this one here, it's got a yes. little key. So that says um, 21, and then it says the lockout key. Press this key to lock out the machine when threading the machine, and then it says refer to page 14. So there'll be extra detail on that there. Yes. But if you're looking and thinking, and there are undoubtedly buttons that you use all the time. So yes. whether it's your yeah. go-to. Yeah programmable stitches, you okay. know, straight stitch and zigzag So and um, what it does on the panel here, I'm just going to go very quickly and then I can refer back because I want to get sewing. But this, the blue screen at the top, this is telling you, um, I'm just going to lift up so that the camera can sort of reference. These are all your stitches that you've got on the machine. Amazing. Okay, and these are all preset. Um, 
and they refer to um, what's, what's going to appear on this screen. So if we've got different modes, um, and this will refer to different stitches. So mode one will refer to all the utility stitches and satin stitches. Mode two is where you have all the fun with the decorative stitching. Yeah, that's your kind yeah. of mode. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go into different fonts, uh, numbers and you know different alphabets european alphabets etc well, they've um, got nice different fonts in there as well and brilliant. different capital letters and lowercase so you can yes, mix and match and you those. can mix and match and you've also got a memory um and we'll show th we'll show that in the book in, in in a second so if i just show you if i just get started on okay. just literally sewing and then we'll refer back to the stitch deck directory shall we yeah and then as we go and go okay that sounds like okay a so because I just want to see it in action. So just so using that, that all-purpose foot that comes on the machine. Yes. Also remember, only one PMP, so it sounds ridiculous, and I know it, because obviously this isn't something you're going to buy on a whim. You don't just wake up on a Monday morning and no, think, no. I'm going to spend £999. But if you are looking to upgrade your machine, and it's been something you've maybe thought about for a while, and you would have seen these machines being used and referred to and spoken about a lot here at Stone Quarter, um, Elna are our home brand, and I think that probably says a lot about what we think of the machines and yes. what our designers yeah, think of them. Exactly. Um, I, I, I know if anybody saw the show yesterday, I really, um, I'm terrible as a customer because I really expect a lot for my money, if I'm really honest. And um, when I first got the machine, you know, one, the, one of the main things for me when I'm sewing, it doesn't matter what project I'm doing, um, there are some machines, as you sew, it will almost bounce as you're sewing. And you sewing. get that noise. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it drives table. me crackers, I have to say. <laughs> it does drive me crackers. Um, and this is a solid workhorse. You know, um, it's there to really produce that professional quality finish. And that's what you want. You want to be able to know that it's not going to be running away, especially if you're doing something like patchwork and quilting. Um, and you've got your foot, your, your walking foot. Because if you're... Um, if you're, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do three things all at once there. Um, if you're um, doing something like your quilting, um, you don't want to be thinking, right, I haven't got that foot, I've got to go and buy a foot. It's all here. Well, in that price, although it might look a little bit scary, quite often, say you bought a machine for five or six hundred pounds, you might then have to add a walking foot yes. or add a buttonhole, add a zipper foot or add yeah. additional things to that. So you and end up all here. spending up and up and up as you go anyway. So. You know, although it's one sort of take a take a quick gasp and quickly, um, you know, go for it in one go. Yes. Once you have got it, you have got everything there you need. And you were saying as well, you, you use the phrase a workhorse, but if you have got that, this isn't a machine that you get out and put away. And this is one that you can be you're going to be no, using it all the time. You're using it all the time. Yes, you are. Right. I'm just going to stop there because what I want to do is actually go through and show some of the details as I'm sewing. Okay. But I just wanted to see that actually in action. So. Um, Shall I, if I just describe how I've cut the, the journal book, first, the journal, yeah. and then how I would actually go through each stage, and then we can show the stitches. So um, using my calico, you can see um, I haven't done anything with it, and you can see the frayed edge. Now, sometimes when um, you use a plain fabric like this, I know I'll have um, students who say to me, I don't actually like this frayed edge. Mm. If you don't like that effect, it doesn't bother me, um, but if you don't like it, simply put two pieces together and go all the way round, turn it inside out, and then all your raw edges are inside. Oh, so okay? it out and, and then just... you're going to make a much neater style yeah. um, reference book. Um, but for what I want to use it for, I'm happy to, to leave it like this. So it doesn't have to be a particular size. My, you can see this one was sort of um, a much sort of a, a square... Like an exercise book. Yeah, so yeah. Shape. Whereas this one, I've actually cut longer strips so that you can see it's almost... Um, you can have it this way round, or you can I have quite it, like it landscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's entirely up to you. Um, so what you need to do is just choose a few pages. Now you're going to be sewing. There's two ways of doing this. You can either make a very basic book to get going, and then sew it as you go along. Um, I personally like to make the pages and then put them in and sew afterwards. Okay. But I leave some extras. Okay, do you always that's combine what I two layers of fabric to make a page, or do you just sometimes use individual layers? I sometimes use individual layers um, simply because, if I just show viewers, I like to actually pin things in. So um, this, was an in this was a piece of... Um, cloth this was an old bed sheet I had actually um, <laughs> because I'd run out of my calico um, so I'd done my uh, practice piece of the uh, pattern repeats 
um, on the satin stitch. Yes. So that was my sort of, you know, playing about. And I'll run through what I've done. So I, I, I put this onto my little bit of bed sheet and then that only produces one page. So it's quite flimsy. So what I did on this side, when I came to do the straight stitch and played about with the numbers um, and then zigzag, I just literally pinned them on. So you don't even have to stitch them in. So you, you don't have to no, have a you don't double have page if you don't want to. You can if you want to use a double page. When you put them in, if you use the folded edge at the top, you can make an instant pocket. So clever. Is this your idea? A uh, stitch journal? I don't know if it is my idea, but I have to say, Did you... I've been doing this for... So my background is working with children in, in an education with, with special needs. Um, and I've been working with cloth books now for over 30 years. I just all love the idea. <laughs> cloth books. Just, and, well, it might... It stemmed, really, from me going to different schools and different settings and actually having to have my directory of whatever it was I was doing with a particular pupil uh, to hand yeah and obviously it was it was a tactile book so um, everything went in my journal and that's really I've just then taken it into my craft side of things with the stitching um, with the stitching so yeah and lovely, I have loads so of these lovely. <laughs> Look, you can just showcase all of the different stitches there from the machine that's the different fonts we were talking about but in terms of putting the book together then so yes. you were going to go you could either assemble the pages and then sort of put those into the cover of the book yeah, yeah. or you can simply just stitch them all together you could now if um what I'll do is I'll use some decorative stitches and I'll just put one page and then you can see how I've done, the, done that together and we can change the foot to do that to um, showcase it. Okay. So I'm going to use one of the decorative stitches in mode two. Um, now to do that, I need to change my foot. So um, let's choose, shall we do 70? Yeah. So I'm in mode two and I want number 70, which this sort of um, free flowing one that we were saying, our curvy line. Um, so we come down to our panel and we press mode. Mode, mode is the different sections. Of, like the chapters of, yeah. and stitches, really. And at the minute, it's showing on number one. So I'm just going to use my little stylus. OK, so it's showing number one. We want it on two. So we just press mode, and it's on number two. And what that does, that opens up that chapter of all the stitches that you've got on the top That's in cute. mode two. OK? And we want um, 70. So we're going to type that into our screen and you'll see it change on screen. We just put literally 70. So it's telling me, these, this is the detail we need. We're now on stitch pattern 70, we're in mode two. That's the pattern we're gonna be doing, but it's telling me I need to change my foot to F. Okay. Okay. Is and that in the cabin crew the, luggage that's compartment? That's in the cabin crew. <laughs> so we literally just tip down, take out F. Okay, now the little foot has got a bar on every one uh, and there's a little clip at the back and when we press the clip, I'll just wait a second, there we go. Um, so when we press the clip, our foot will drop off. Okay. okay. And you literally, so you can do this as you're stitching along. You don't need to stop stitching. You click that back in place and you carry on stitching. So quick. Okay, so we're on F. And now don't just put it on the table because that's what this little case is here for. Pop it back in and you're not going to damage or lose those, those feet. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put two of our pages. We're going to sew... Now you can pin them if you feel happier. And all I'm going to do is run that around the edge. And that showcases one of our... Um, stitches. Stitches, so let's get going. And once you um, have got the stitches all in place, you also label them up, don't you? So there's no point just having them there. If you want to use it as a reference guide, you then want to say, this was stitch number yes. 70 or this yeah. was... Yeah, so you... if you have a look in the stitch directory as I'm stitching, I think it's near the front. Here. Ah, oh, there we are, these ones. Now you can see where, what I've done on there, I've done a few experimental stitches. Okay, and then at the side, I've put the number of the stitch and the mode that you need to be in. And then also even things like elongation, so taking yes. it up a level, up two levels, you know, so just yeah. lengthening that every time and showing how that goes from this size all the way up if you um, increase it by five for the elongation, but just referring to the mode. I like Tilly says, mixing the mediums here as well, using a pen if you want to, or a, um, yes. or anything, you yeah, know, to yeah. mark that yeah. book. Now, as, as I'm stitching here, you can see the patterns coming through. Pretty, isn't it? It's a really beautiful one. Um, I'm just gonna run through some of the features that are on the front of the sewing machine so that you can actually see for a second. So I'm just gonna put stop for a second. Now, um, we've got the buttons in the front here. Um, if you, 
I'm not using the foot pedal, so you've got the option of using the foot pedal or using the stop start button. Okay, okay. I'm using just the stop start button. And to control the speed on that, we've got the little hare and the little tortoise. Okay, now when you first get a machine that's you know a little bit faster and a bit more modern, perhaps the one you've had, um, it might be a bit frightening to think, oh gosh, I don't, I don't know, want to go you know, really quick. Take your speed right, right down to Mr. Tortoise there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to press start and show you how slow this is. Okay, it's really, really, really slow. And the reason I say to everybody, start slow, I do it myself. If I've got a new pattern or anything like that and I think, oh, I don't want to put it in and away, until I'm happy that I'm okay with that, I yeah. always turn the speed right down. Um, and, and you get can always used to go it. up, can't you? you can and that's always. the point. So to move it up, okay, I'm just going to move it up just a little notch and then a little bit more. Okay, and now we're going to go to Mr. Hare. Get ready. Here we go. That change in speed. You can just see the needle all of a sudden increasing its work there. And you can see it's not dragging the fabric, it's literally just sewing at such a speed, at a beautiful pattern. Okay, now I'm going to just stop for a second because if you are using one of the patterns and it's kind of, it's, it has a repeat and you don't want to stop in the middle of a leaf or you think, oh, I want to actually get the pattern, this little circle on the front here, if we press our pattern button here, when we start sewing, I'll turn the speed down now, we'll go back. When we start sewing, what it will do is just one repeat of that pattern. So if, you're do, if you've got a garment and you're only wanting to go a certain way, yeah. or you may want to go around a pocket or on a design or on a framework or something, you're in control. So it means as well, or, or if you just want the end of a pattern, if it is just one swirl or you just want one, yes, yeah. it will end where you yeah. tell it so to. So we're doing this pattern here and it's really difficult to get that perfectly at the end of a leaf. You don't want to stop it no, mid-leaf, no. you want to go so right to the edge. So we press the little button, okay, and I'm just going to press. Now we're actually near the end, so maybe oh, let's see where it takes us. Okay, and it'll do a few stitches at the end to secure the edges. Finish it off. Now we don't have to cut it, we've got the cutter at the top, we just literally press that, done. And it's all done Brilliant. for you. So you don't and have you've to got get your in there, pattern. you just, no. and it finishes right yeah. to the edge. Now I'm not going to go all the way around because obviously you can see what I'm doing, but that was the idea of going around there. So this machine this morning, the Elmer 680, really a real sort of workhorse machine, if you like. It's got so many different features on there, 170 different stitches. It's got, we'll, we'll show you the, um, some of the technical features on this picture just coming up now. But you can see you get that lovely accessory box at the front. You've got the LCD touch screen that you can use with the stylus. So you can go through there, you can program, check which mode you want to use, which stitches, whether it's fonts and lettering, so you want to personalise things or numbers. So you've got all of your different feet, so a zipper foot, 10 different buttonholes. And look at all of those accessories as well, amazing, all of those different feet there. Can I just say, while we've got that graphic up, you've got two stitch plates there. Now, I've never come across a machine that's actually got Comes that. with two. No, I've never come across that before. And at first it did sort of think, oh, why do I need two? One is if you are doing just plain straight stitching and it's where your needle positions can change and you can put it into a project. Um, to do all the patterns, obviously you need the, just the general, um, but again the instructions are in there. So you can, you can really personalise your sewing to the style of sewing that, you know, that you're going to be doing. This is the and it's spare. just literally a lift out plate. And with, with, I've seen that before, you just drop it yeah, into place. Yeah, you do. Then you've got the extension table, obviously you've got your case but so many accessories included within that price, so you're not going to have to add on and keep adding on additional um, different sort of features or things that you might need. You've got so many different feet included in that price. Um, right, and if what? Tilly's husband's watching. <laughs> yes, please. This for is Christmas. the one for Christmas. <laughs> it's on my Christmas list. Okay, what I thought I would do to continue with this page, I'm going All to show you that. some elongation. Um, so I've changed my stitch pattern. We're doing number 20 now, and we're doing a little scallop. Okay. Just looking at all those different okay. speeds and things on there. And um, so what we're going to do with our elongation, we've got this button on um, the panel with an E. And if I just get you to switch my page, we can refer back to that. This one? Uh, no, if you keep going okay. on, my darling. There we oh, go. Oh, here we go. Right. So I'm just going to, I haven't done anything to the sewing machine. 
Um, this is the preset. So I'm going to be doing, uh, I don't think it's that pattern actually, I've chosen a different pattern, but it's on the same sort of basis. So mine's just a plain straight stitch scallop. You can see it's just coming through. Okay, I'm gonna press my little circle so I get a perfect scallop. And then I'm going to elongate. Oh, have I chosen one that I can't do? That's a bit silly. <laughs> This is the elongation you can see on Which here. So you've got the, um, you have used. Oh, it's in the scallop, that's why. End of repeat so pattern. That's, but that's the elongation. So you can see when it's a smaller scallop and then just lengthening it, lengthening it every time. And just having that in the stitch journal so you get an idea of the, the variation in size. And you could even, if you were looking at something that you were putting this onto and you wanted to measure, you could figure out, couldn't you, an edge? Yes, you could. What, what really is going to work yeah, there? Yeah, you, you could. could. And because it's, it does bend and this is, is malleable, you could just move yeah, that. Yeah, you and can just measure it. And go, I'm, oh, yeah, that sort of I've works. actually swapped to that one so that it mar marries up. So I'm going to do my um, scallop and do my little circle. So this is the preset. OK, on that's on number one. OK, okay so that's this, that's one, this here. one there. Then I'm going to press my little elongation by, by two. So we've, we've just done number one. Now we want it onto number two. So again, we do a few scallops. And obviously you can choose how you want to put that in a design. I've come in on the page, but if you did it on the very edge, and I'll show that in a second, you can actually put it into your project. Again, use it as a scallop design and cut your fabric away. So I'm gonna press my little circle to get the finish. So you want the whole complete yeah. scallop stitch. Okay. Okay, so next one up. We're on number two, let's do number three. You can just see that there, lengthening. There you go. Things like uh, where you put your elongation. I know one viewer said to me, I'm not sure where I'd use that. And then um, I know when I got talking about it in a workshop, um, I said, one of the other ladies said to me, but I've put it on my pillowcases and my sheets and towels and things. Uh, table runners and because sorry I wasn't looking and I've moved the fabric <laughs> the wrong way um, yes and so you can match so she'd put it on her apron in the kitchen and tea towels and things like that I'm just going to put my little circle but it's quite subtle when it's elongated it sort of becomes a bit more fancy than a regular zigzag or a, yes, or a straight it stitch it just it adds is. a little bit of something but this this machine is the one that all of our designers request when they come on so we have all sorts of different machines on the show and more often than not they have a tool list don't you that you say yes. that you want for the show and then and then a machine and this is the one that they do all love working with and that you can just I think really it's the fact that you can you've got that freedom and versatility and yes. it's intuitive like that cutting I know that's a really simple thing but if you're doing lots of little fiddly you bits, will save so much on yeah, your thread to keep coming in yeah. cutting trimming things yeah. you know okay. it's just those little features that I think if you're using this over a long period of time the other thing is as well we haven't mentioned Ames Ames, Ames I did it. really well not to do I love it I like it it's super fun I, I must explain that my goddaughter's called Amy and when I first spoke to Amy I called her Ames and I went oh I'm really Which sorry no my mum does anyway so it's fine um, and I went through the whole of the show before and I didn't say it and I was no I've just said it let myself down <laughs> so I'm on the last one now on five this one okay and I've just realised I'm not sure if I've got enough cloth left to put that scallop on Oh, tails. I know, I didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's why if you... So I'm just going to actually stop there, turn it round, and you can actually see... Oh, I like it as a frame, like a border. Yeah, yeah. And then if you wanted to, you can actually fussy cut away on the edge and actually have a scalloped all the way around on the edge of your, so, your journal. I mean, I've kept mine very calm and, you know... Um, but you want if you want to jazz yours up, then that's, you know... You could do that all the time. And I love this um, as well, like a binding. Yes. So just, I was just very quickly going to show the scallop. This is my, these are my notes of all the shows. How oh, nice. Look at this. <laughs> um, I won't show you inside because it's a bit messy. But um, I love it. <laughs> with I all love the things scallop, like this. So I've put mine right on the very edge and actually sort of made a feature of that, if you can see amongst all my threads, and used a contrasting thread and it changes it all together. And then I've just played with all the <laughs> stitches. I know, I know. That's so lovely. <laughs> I'm just going to finish here because I want to go on to some different features. How are we doing for time? We have got about 15 minutes or so. I'm just going to show these cave fabrics that we've got this morning as well because if you do want to make a stitch journal, you could, and you want to have something a little bit more, um, 
sort of designed for the um, for the front cover, so you want to have a patterned yes. fabric. Yes, yes, then yes. we've got some really beautiful K-facet fabrics, and also if you want to mix and match in the stitch journal and show some different styles of applique, so raw edge applique or reverse applique, then you could use these fabrics for this. So we're going to whiz through these. Okay, facet, here we go. So we've got the uh, brown background fabric there with that lovely bold blue flower. So that's the brown gerbera. Next one, I like these. So we've got these in different colorways. So first of all, we've got this lovely, yeah. isn't it? So you've got that really lovely china in the uh, classic blue and white in your teacups on the yellow background. They're fabulous for um, applique work. Fussy cutting yeah. as well, oh, if you brilliant. want to just take one little. Or um, little English paper piece in. On a quilt, yes, e you know, like individual. a little EPP. You yeah, could yeah. do a tiny, yeah, you could do amazing. a hexi that fitted just that with a teacup lovely. on there. It's nice on the red, really beautiful. So that's the Delft for the for the cover of a little book like that, or a laptop case, or something like that. Yes, that would tablet be nice. case. Yes, because you could actually um, either free motion embroider around each individual element, or just um, raw edge applique. And just to, and so you've still got that. Oh, with Wonderweb you could do yeah, that, couldn't you? Yeah, do all sorts of things. Yeah. In the blue. Then we've also got some florals. I love this. These are so oh, bold this and is like so lovely. Look at that. And that, there's lots of floral stitches that you can oh gosh, pick yes, out that you would could. that would sort yeah, of really take this to another level. Really. Those are gorgeous beautiful combination of colours. And they've also got that in a um, really bright, bold, it's quite a summery print in the orange. You need a bit of colour though, don't you? In, in the winter, in the winter we all get autumn. sad, don't we? Yeah, although this is kind of autumny colours as well, although it's a summery theme. I mean, See, I think like sarong or something, yes. that's what it is. Yeah, you're thinking of your summer holiday, that's yes, what you're doing. Yes, I am. It's too early for that. I can't think of some holidays yet. Then we've got that on a really lovely fuchsia pink background with some greens. You've got some nice pistachio greens here. And then some darker forest greens as well. But just to opening it up so you can see that lovely sort of blooming rose. Blooming lovely. I'd like that. It's cushions. Do you know what Lucy and I were saying? Lucy was saying that um, a viewer messaged in and you could do cushion covers. You layer mm. them up so you just reveal the next sort of season, oh, yeah, season's um, cushions. This is this the one that you've done? Yes, some this is with? what I'm going to be using in a second. I'm going to show the walking foot. So I'm using this lovely fabric. It's a bit psychedelic, isn't it? I think yeah, that those 70s, backgrounds. It's retro. Sort of, yeah, retro. Yeah, yeah. And again, lovely for fussy cutting. It's also like the kaleidoscope. You won't remember no, that. I'm I don't, my age. No, I don't. I, I, I do remember those, but you twist it. That was one of my favourite toys. Yeah. 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 And, but you could fussy cut those or also for oh, patchwork. You could. Yeah, patchwork would be fab. These are lovely. And again, we've got this. And again, this one's in a, a more of a pastel colourway, but you have still got some bright, bold uh, yellows in here and some greens. Sunburst. $6.99. So all of those are cut off the bolt for you. So you can have as much or as little as you like by the half meter. So if you wanted two meters, you could order four units of fabric and so on. So um, these are cut and delivered in a lovely little sewing quarter box. I've got one here to show you. Just like that. All wrapped up in tissue paper. A nice little delivery if you do want one of those. And also if it's your first order today, over 10 pounds, we've now got these really lovely scissors. I'll show you these, which you get for free. I use mine all the time. Little snips. Mm. They're just one of those things, aren't yeah. they, have next to your machine. But they're lovely. You can see that detail on the handle there with your gold handle. So if you spend over £10 and it's your first purchase from us here at Sewing Quarter, you'll get one of those sent to you as well. So just quickly showing you those K-Facets, we are really focusing on the machine this morning. If you've just tuned in, nice to have you with us. And this is the Elna 680. It's one of our designers' favourite machines to have here on the show. And today's just sort of showcasing some of the different stitch features that you've got on here, the different feet. And now we're just going to look at some quilting as well. Yes, so one of the feet that nine times out of ten you have to buy as an extra is your even feet, your walking foot. Um, now, if you're not a quilter, I personally am not a quilter. Um, I love patchwork and I have done, um, you know, some quilting in my time, um, but it's not my sort of main area of sewing. And I have so many people say, but I don't really need a walking foot because I'm not a quilter. Walking foot is actually there to help with um, the uneven feed of fabric going through your fabric, uh, through your machine. So, yes, 
perfect for quilting, but it might be that you're using it for dressmaking. Yeah. So um, slippery fabrics, um, got a satin, and yeah, you're anything like that, yeah, satin, lining. silk. Um, so I'm going to show you how to put the foot on. All right. Now bear with me because <laughs> the reason I'm saying this, I'm going to be. There's a bit more work involved yes, in this so, one. Yes. Um, so I'm standing up. What you need to do, we've got our little um, f, uh, f that we were using for our satin stitch. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually instead of just taking the foot off, we're going to take the whole shank and foot all together. So there's a little screw on the left hand side, just here. and to take that off, you've got a little screwdriver. Which comes okay, obviously with your machine. that comes in your kit. Now that's going to drop. So I'm doing this very slowly. Okay, trying to do it delicately on air. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I sit at home, you know, I don't think twice about it. You just do it really yeah. quickly. Don't and then when think. I come in the studio, I think, oh, I've got to look a bit more. You know. But these are about sort of 50, 60 pounds, aren't they? Gosh, yeah, easily. Easily, easily, easily you know, yeah. depending on what machine you have. Now it does look a bit of a beast. If I just turn that <laughs> round. And I don't so, know if any of you have ever heard anyone describe a walking foot as a bit of well, a beast. If you, compare, <laughs> is, if you compare our little foot that's normally on a sewing machine, look, compared to the walking foot. It is a lot bigger. It's like a big dinosaur, isn't it? You know, <laughs> also, you can see these little cut, this yeah. on the side. This but is what pulls it through evenly. Exactly. And, and the difference between the different feet. So when you, let me explain very quickly while I'm doing it, is um, you can see you've got an extra row of teeth here and a walking foot um, clamps down on your fabric, pulls it through your machine, and then goes up. So in a circular motion, it's, that's it's what's giving it that feed through for the extra bulk in your fabric. Now we've got a little lever, okay, on your walking foot. Sorry, okay. I'm the wrong, uh, should that's I be? That's all good, no, that's, that's fine. Okay. This little lever needs to sit on top of the bar um, in your Outside. machine. Now you've got the instructions in your manual but I thought I'd just show viewers if it's new to you. This is the most likely foot that you're going to probably change to put on in most cases you find people go between the all-purpose and the walking. They're, those are the most common um, feet that we have tend to have on machines when we're working with them. Yes, to actually change the foot or free motion. Yes. Yes, free motion. Right, so let me just make sure I've got it in position because I've moved it now. What have I done? See, I did say delicate on a... And it's because you won't be working at the same height. Oh, there we go. Plus it's locked and I can see from the yeah, side. Okay. What so it's just making sure that that lever just sits over the bar. Yes, yeah, so you've got a little grippy arm here. If I just bend down, that's got to be locked around the bar. And then the little lever that I mentioned, that's sitting on the bar. And that's going to bounce up and down. If I just bring my needle down, can you see just under here? That's sitting on top. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of engaged and ready to go. Okay. And then do you drop the feed dogs? Now I need to be back on straight stitch before I start doing anything. No, not for a walking foot. You only need to drop your feed dogs when you're doing your free motion embroidery okay. or quilting. So um, with all those stitch, um, stitches on the top there, to take your um, work back to the beginning, on the panel you've got these buttons, straight stitch and zigzag, because they're your common stitches. So all I did was come away from the elongation, press my straight stitch and I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm actually using a little quilt sandwich, using the fabric by um, Kaf, Kaif. We were just having that discussion. Oh, really? I've always called him Kaf. Have you? It's Kaif. <laughs> programmed in your head. Yeah, I so think this is quite nice then. You could do a, um, a quilted cover. Yes, so you, you could, could have, you that could have the actual be... cover of the journal with the wadding that to make it a good. little bit sort of chunkier and bigger. Yes. Um, and also to showcase a bit of patchwork. And then... And it's, and it's really good practice. It's, you know... And this isn't about... What I like about this is it's not about perfection. No. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate and perfect. This is about getting to know your machine, really. It is. And, and, it's the and result making of getting notes. To know it. So you, if you were a dressmaker, you would probably be looking at zips, and um, buttons and buttonholes. Um, I'm more, I'm a textile artist, so for me it's the decorative side of things and, and the free motion and the embroidery, that side of things. Yeah. Um, again, you've got to make your journal personal to you. If you want it for a professional business, and it might be that you create home decor um, items, cushions, curtains, that sort of thing, you might want to make a personal label. Yes, you can that put, you, can... you can put in there and keep in the memory. Um, you know, we, we skimmed over that actually. It's programmable, so you can yes. save certain stitches in to, the memory. Do you want to just turn to that got, page um, and we can just show viewers? Because I know we're running out of time. It's very it's hard, I've got to be honest, to f try and fit so many features Things in, in here. just to an hour. Is it the, it's the letter one, isn't it? Yes. Here you go. 
So memory up to 50 stitches in any combination you can store in the memory of the sewing machine so it will remember that, it will retain it so you can go back and use it. If you can just see here, so using the memory mode and then you can just see, so for example it might be a Tilly Rose, you can just see here. Now, if I move that down. This is, I've written in here, I've stitched over my little um, note here. So that's because this, yeah, because that's the different fonts that they do and you can see where I've changed it. And I've also put a little note in here. When using the memory mode um, to put, so I put a little asterisk so that it reminds me, to put a little space in between each letter because um, I prefer it looking you know, with, with a bit of space, but you can experiment. Yes. And that's where you write all your little notes your, in there. You, you, know. you remember, so you go, oh, I actually don't like it, that space. I like no. it tight, or you can just play and around. Then when you get your machine, or if, if it's out and you go back to it, it might be that you've not come back to that for two, three months, and you think, I can't remember what did I do. You turn to your page, it's written there, all you do is you know, pop it next to your machine, boom, 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 away you go. Have a cup of coffee, do a bit of sewing and done. Do you know what else you could do? You could have a contents page, couldn't you? Yes, you could. In the front? Yeah, you could. So you could have in here, you could have, you know, um, elongation and then yeah. you could have that little section yeah, to perfect. go through. That's quite good. That would be quite cute, wouldn't it? A little it? pocket in the side, I'm going to put, so this is my little quilted bit that we've just done on the walking foot, okay? Now, um, on the back, I've used a plain piece of fabric. So okay. if you wanted to write any notes, again, that just folds up and it can go in your little pocket this yeah pop that in there if in you there. To. now when it comes to i know we're running out of time when you've made your book you've done all your pages that you want to um, to sew it together you can either sew straight down the middle um, or this is how i've done this one here i've actually closed my book now depending on obviously the thickness of how many pages you've put in yours and then i've done a straight stitch all the way down or a zigzag depends again it can be a decorative one and that's um, made sure that you've got the binding. Was it happy to go through that many layers? Uh, yes, yeah. Well, yeah, it's similar to that, to that size there. Um, again, use your walking foot if, you, if you've got quite a few. If you're not sure, get a few pieces of scrap fabric first and just test it to see if it's going to be OK. okay. Um, but I would use my walking foot on, on that and just go down. And then on the back page, what I've done is I've actually played about with some of the stitches. So um, I've used my twin needle. That's OK. Um, I've Paul also, was loving those this morning, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, Paul was like, oh, I've not seen that before. <laughs> with the twin needle. I don't know if you can see that, if we look a little bit more closely. That's not one colour. You've got your, no, um, your, twin needle. You've got your twin needle there working the purple and the blue. Yeah. Can we look a little bit more closely at those two? Let's have a look. And then you've carried on playing around with all different stitches, even on yes, the back. Yes, but also one thing as well, this um, next to the twin needle here, this is actually a stretch stitch. And normally you would use that on jersey fabrics, but you can use stretch stitches on plain fabric as a decorative feature, because it's a tiny, tiny it's little It's just zigzag. a bit more interesting than yeah, a straight stitch. Yeah, exactly. So don't be put off that you can't. Again, you know, you've got this sort of edge in here, which I've, I've put around the edge. Just have a play. And then I love as well, you can even pop just there on the, um, on the spine of the yeah, book. Yeah, you can. And we were talking earlier as well, we, we didn't put our little, um, I've got my air erasable and that's the only thing I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these little features, you've got quite a few, you've got the stitch bobbins on the side, but these little flowers, I do quite a lot with my fabric. Once I've put the stitching on, I like to colour in, um, depending on the project. Now I'm just going to use the air erasable because obviously it will show up but you can see how you actually use your stitches as the base. So you don't need to draw, you don't need to be able to design in that respect, but um, you can put, depending on the project. Colour it in. Yeah, you, you can colour it in, fabric, paints, anything, and, and then using the stitching. And again, you can alter the size of some of the patterns in there. So you could have, in your memory, you could put maybe a large flower, a small flower, a large flower, and a bit of a scallop, the individual hearts, you can sort of dot spools, about loads of different yeah, things. all sorts of ideas. Tilly, one last thing then, finally. Yes. Favourite thing about this machine, if you had to pick one thing? Um, I would say, actually, all the feet. All the feet? Yeah, for me, that, that's a winner because I don't need another foot for anything else. It's all in here and my extra large um, bed. And I did forget to say, we've actually got a, um, a large font. If you're quilting and, and personalising, it goes up to, I want to say, nine mils. Do I, am I told here we people go. right? I want to make sure I tell you the right information. Uh, that one there. Yes, yes. 
And so that's kind of if you usual. want to, to personalise your quilt with little labels or yes, tags, and yeah, you can do perfect. all of that on there. Yeah. So Tilly's yeah. favourite thing about the machine is the fact that you get all of those feet, all of those accessories all included in. I will show you some of the other, um, sort of the instructions and things we've got in there. But a really lovely stitch journal. I love the idea. I just haven't, I don't have a cloth book. That's not something that I'm sort of really familiar with, and I just think it's... It's gorgeous, really lovely. And then you can take it along to your workshops and your classes with Just you. on the go. Yeah, you can even roll it up a bit, doesn't it? It does. Really? Squidge it, it in does. your bag. It washes. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been really lovely. Thank you. Really lovely sort of run through of the machine. And I know we've had to go super quick because there I are know, so many so features. Much, so much. Yeah. Um, but really lovely yeah. to sort of get to grips with yeah. what's going on there. Put it on your so Christmas list. Yes. List. It's on Tilly. It's, it's on, on your list, list isn't it? <laughs> what's your husband's name? Steve. Steve, if you're watching, we know what you are. <laughs> I'll see you shortly. <laughs> okay. So, um, the 680, this is what the whole thing this hour has been about, really showing you. So, rather than skimming through the fact and just referencing when we have it on the show normally, oh, it's the 680. We wanted to show you today all of those incredible features that are built in. Look at that. Let's just take a second to look at all of those stitches. 170 different stitches there. So, you've got all different alphabets. You've got different font sizes. You can scale those up and down. You've got your numbers as well. Then you've got decorative stitches, all your utility stitches. Then you've got lovely, all your stitch quality there, the LCD screen, which is great at display. You can use it with your stylus to really, um, if you've not got that dexterity in your fingers, just meaning you can work with that really sort of simply and easily and it's nice and accessible. And you can see that you've got the elongation button. You've got the option to program and use the different modes. Then you've also got your space for all of the feet, so built in, like, like Tilly said, in that cabin crew section, in the overhead locker, everywhere, a little slot for each foot so you're not going to lose them. Then all of those, and some of them are covered by the graphic there, all of your standard accessories built in to that whole kit with the, um, with the machine. So your standard foot, your satin stitch foot. We've looked at the walking foot today and fitting that on. Then you've got your um, convert convertible freehand quilting foot, your button foot, your zip zipper foot then you've got the um, additional stitch plate as well so the straight stitch plate you've got your bobbins you also get a bobbin case that you can see there you get your screwdriver your seam ripper you've also got that large extension table as well so you can make that workspace a little bit bigger if you're extending and you are working with a quilt or you're doing some dressmaking and that's adjustable, the height of that too. So if you're working with a, a fabric with a drape where you don't want to be pulling that through a silk or a satin. So you've got European, English and Russian alphabets. You've got the, you can use the, um, the actual foot with the machine with the pedal. You can use a stop and start button on the machine if you want to. Then you've also got the tortoise and the hare. So you can up and up the speed if you can work quickly. You can pull it right back if you're working with a new stitch that you want to try. This is the extension table you can see here. So you get this with it. You can just slip that on the side of your machine to extend your workspace. So as I was saying, if you have got something you need to hang over where you've got some heavier weight and you don't want to distort the fabric in any way, you can use that for it. You also get the really um, comprehensive guide and instruction manual. And we know that when you get it, the first thing you want to do is probably not sit down and read a manual, but lovely as a reference to go through, talking you through the fantastic features and everything built in there. An incredibly popular machine with all of our designers here at Sewing Quarter. Only one PMP, 295, despite the fact it's a big, heavy machine. So if you do like that 680, check out your baskets and Paul Clark coming up in just three minutes. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. As soon as you place an order with us, we get to work on making your shopping experience that extra bit special. Our warehouse team pick your items and cut your fabric with the greatest care and precision. Cut fabric is neatly folded and packed in a tissue paper lined presentation box. And when we're satisfied that it's just perfect, it gets the sewing quarter seal of approval. So whether you're giving a gift or treating yourself, you can shop with confidence, knowing your sewing quarter purchases will arrive in style. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website, www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. 
Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. The house of Alastair founder and sewing extraordinaire Alastair MacDonald is back on Tuesday the 21st of November for two fun-filled hours. After his debut on Sewing Quarter, where Alistair showed us some luxury Liberty fabric and coordinating haberdashery, Alistair returns to our screens once again. He'll be in the studio live with me, Natasha McCarty, sharing some fabulous Christmas gift ideas, and we'll get to look at Alistair's must-have templates and fabulous fabrics, all available for you to add to your creative stash. If you're looking for a perfectly packaged Christmas gift for a fellow sewist, or simply want to treat yourself, you won't want to miss out on this show. Watch on Tuesday the 21st of November from 9am for an abundance of Liberty, Christmas kits and fantastic sewing tips. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back. In this hour, I'm joined by the lovely Paul Clark, and we're looking at some of these Christmas favourites that you've had on the show before, but that you absolutely love. They were really, really popular, so we bought a couple back. Paul's going to talk, walk and talk us through those this morning and how to make them. So you might be able to spy on our desk this gingerbread doorstop. I absolutely love this. I, I didn't see this when Paul did it last time, and it's really gorgeous. Look at that. A lovely little doorstop that you can use at Christmas if you want to, but that d detail on the top, like you've got your icing there and all your, what's well, making me hungry, all your jelly tots. And then that beautiful embellishment on the front with your windows and your little flowers there and your front door. And this is a weighty doorstop, so it's got pellets in there. So you can make that nice and, uh, nice and sort of weighty. And this was so, so popular, we bought it back today. So the, cut, the kit for this one, I'll start with that. Let's move our crackers. Going crackers this morning. We'll start with this kit. So you've got your two different fabrics. You've got the fabric for the roof, so that chocolate roof, and then you've got your uh, gingerbread house, the, the sort of more latte color fabric there. You also get your thread. You get your uh, felt for the, all of the um, extra applique detail on the front. You also get the pellets. So Paul's gonna talk you through that. You get a big bag of those weighted pellets that you can use to, um, to create the doorstop and the wadding. And then the other option we've got is the um, Scandi style. So if you do want a more um, sort of contemporary twist on the gingerbread house, again, you've got that icing detail on the top there. But really gorgeous with the roof and then the main body. And if I just drop that there, I don't know if you can hear that, it has got the pellets in the bottom. And I'll just show you the fabrics in that kit. So using your sandy colour neutrals there with your red detail and again your thread and your felt. Really popular last time this was on. You do need to check out your baskets on that one. And you do get Paul's instructions. So this is um, an exclusive design that Paul's done for us here at Sewing Quarter. You won't get this anywhere else. It's not from any of the magazines. This is one that Paul's made just for you this Christmas. So this is what you get your instructions there. Talking you through all the step-by-step -step instructions the cutting out, the making of the pouch, the making of the roof, making the back of the house, the front of the house, decorating it, and also your template on the back. It's a really achievable make, $24.99 for the Scandi one, HGGC00, which is this one just here. There you go. 
Now, we've also got the Christmas sack. So this one here, another really popular Christmas make that we bought back this morning. This is my kind of Christmas stocking because you can get a lot more presents in this one, can't you, than a little small sort of sock shaped one. But really lovely with that um, nice big drawstring on the top, if you can see there. So you, can, you could fold that over if you wanted to, like a um, sort of a cuff. But under there, you can see that drawstring. Then you've got the lovely eyelet detail there with the nautical rope. But a nice big size. Now for this kit, you don't get the fabric in this kit. What we've done this morning is we've put together everything you need to the accessories, so the, the notions and things. So we have got some fabric on the show, but you can use your own fabric or you can have a look on the website if you want to order some Christmas fabric. And then you've got all the accessories you need there to make the um, drawstring bag. So you've got the rope, you've got the bonder web. This sold out last time it was on the show. You've got the eyelet. And then you've also got your lovely instructions here from Rebecca Reed and Amanda Russell. So this is a lovely um, sort of set of instructions, a whole book. I'll show you through that. And once you've got this pattern, you could certainly use this with other fabrics for a laundry bag if you wanted to. So you could go for a, a nautical fabric and have it in the bathroom, on the back of the bathroom door. And then your templates too. So $20.99, everything you need to make the bag, just need to add your fabric. Then we've also got, we've got Paul in the studio, so we've got another of Paul's design. Again, this is another um, exclusive design from Paul for Sewing Quarter. So this is the Cracker Draft Excluder. Look at this. Really lovely. So this is the foil one, first of all. So it's a lovely squidgy draft excluder there. And we've got two colorways for this kit this morning. So first up, we have got the one you can just see there. That's the foiled one. So you get that glitter detail in the red fabric, your thread. You get the bolster, the draft excluder, that cushion, bolster cushion that goes in the middle. Now the draft excluder on its own is $12.99. So for the price of this kit, you're also getting your fabric, all of your instructions and your thread. And you've got enough fabric there if you wanted to make an additional one, but you've also got that beautiful glitter detail. Then the other option is in a different fabric. I'm just gonna, this isn't, it isn't this one, but I'm just going to show you the shape of the cracker that you can create. So this one is using your, um, your holly fabric in red and white. So I think this is the one we're making in this hour, is it Paul? Yes, it is. So we've got Christmas cracker draft excluders, we've got our gingerbread houses, and we've also got the stocking there this morning. Lots of your favourites that we've brought back. So we're listening to what you like and we know what you, what you um, enjoy making. So I'll take these over to Paul. Where are we starting, Paul? Shall we go for gingerbread? Let's go for oh, gingerbread. Do you fancy a gingerbread? I could eat a gingerbread man. Oh, that'd be nice, mm. wouldn't it? Gingerbread latte. Oh, yes. <laughs> have you had any of the Christmas drinks oh, yet? Oh, yes, yes. What ones have you had? They do a Black Forest one, which is really, really nice. Is that like sort of berry-ish, how does... You've got cherries in it. Yeah. They've got like a cherry um, syrup mm. in it with the fresh cream on top. And I like... It's not like drinking coffee. No. <laughs> no. I like a, like a salted caramel hot chocolate or something mm. like that. Mm. Yes, very nice. We probably shouldn't talk about no, that now. No. <laughs> Just talking about <laughs> food for the rest yes. of the hour. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so have you ever made a gingerbread house out of gingerbread? I was bought a kit, but I never got around to making it. No. I just had to all, I didn't all, want all the gingerbread. It was so wobbly. <laughs> I thought if that, I, and I was taking it to someone's house, I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to transport that without the whole thing no. just collapsing in. So we're, we're doing the Scandi one with the um, fabric in this yes. hour, but you have got those two kits. The one on your screens is this Scandi one. So using this really lovely um, sort of linen texture fabric, isn't it? Yes, it's a nice, nice weight to that. And how do we get started with this? This is obviously your design. I get started. Um, all the instructions are on the pattern which you will get. It gives you an, how to cut out all the pieces, all the, the shaping of all the pieces. The only um, strange piece is that shape. Now this, this which is on the back. It's on the back of the instructions there. So if you cut so you out get that, that, it's basically the same as that. Okay. Okay. So you cut out two of those, which is the front and the back of your house. Now I've cut them out slightly differently because I thought that with the line of bigger hearts up the front would almost be like a front door. Like a path going And in. the back I've done offset and got a narrower line down the front. So we've got the two pieces All the way over different. the top and back of the house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, 
There is one strip which goes, starts at the bottom and comes up the sides and then meets at the top. So that is which is this, this section. This strip at the side. You can actually see it better on that side. Okay. Starts at the bottom, comes up, and meets at the top. There, like that. Okay. I've joined this at the bottom so that the hearts will both go the same way. So oh look yeah, look that, how you've cut that fabric so it lines up perfectly. Yeah. If you haven't got directional fabric, you can just use one strip. Okay. So again. So you've cut out, in, uh, yeah, all in your instructions, yeah. and then you've um, made a quilt sandwich, have you, with that? Yes, I have. For the back piece, uh, on that one, I made like a log cabin effect. I saw that. So I did lines going across to just create like the effect of logs stacked up one on top of the other. With this fabric, I've quilted it going that way instead. Sort of vertically instead and th of them. This is just really to give a bit of extra body to the back. It helps sort of even make it, it stand, doesn't it? Solid. It gives it a little bit more, yeah, yeah. exactly that. Um, I haven't bothered with the front because um, you could decorate that however you wanted. I've just applied two windows on that just for simplicity. Yeah, but you, you can go to town if you want to. Look at this the one. Door, the whole lot go mad with it. Front door, flowers, the whole yeah, shebang. Yeah, really go over, overboard with it. The one thing you need to do before you start putting all these pieces together is make yourself a little weight bag. Now this is like a brick. Right. This is like a brick. It's filled with the pellets. Yep, which come um, in your kit. Yep. And the instructions are in there as well, how to make that and the sizing of it. It's basically the same size as the inside of the house. The base. Yeah. Yep. So once you've constructed it so far, we can fit that inside and then fill the rest with normal toy stuffing. Okay. So you've got the heavy weight at the bottom. This is here, and, and this is what makes it soft at the top. Weighty and like, yeah. this is like a stress ball. Yes, it's a little bit like, like a bean bag. You throw that around. Yeah, like you could. Yeah, it's like a drama game with that, like a drama <laughs> yeah, exactly. invitation game, catch the bag. But yeah, so you're going to make a brick like that. And is that in the instructions as well? How you that can do that? That's in the instructions. That's how quite to do straightforward, that. Quite I would simple. imagine. Yeah. There you go there. And Just your pellets in the kit. Okay. Yep. So we've got the back that you've um, used the lining fabric, your wadding, and then the scandy, and then you quilted that. Yep. You've got the brick, then you've also done the front, appliqued on that detail, and the strip now that's going to go right. around the main body of the house. The strip I've centred on from the centre of the front of the house and started stitching it out. Okay. To get to the corners, again, there may be a, a better way of doing this, but this is the way I managed to do it. <laughs> I, I stitched to about half a centimetre, or a centimetre, half a centimetre, half an inch. Something like that. Small amount. Yeah, so Small amount. <laughs> Fold that back and then stitch again. And then that would carry on all the way up to the top. Leave about two inches at the top of the house. Just where that sort of apex of the roof. Just literally where the yeah. apex meets. So if I carry on doing that and then down the other side as well. And this is just to fix one side. Let's see if we've got the right pedal. I'm just going to show you some other fabrics as well while Paul stitches okay. that. And that we've got by the half metre in this sort of Scandi feel. So these would be great if you are making the, um, if the, the Christmas uh, sack. But also if you wanted to make more doorstops, maybe you got the pattern last time. Also send us a picture if you did get the gingerbread house last time. We'll show a couple. Studio at sewingquarter.com. Paul would love to see them, so would I, so send them in. So the first fabric is one that we've actually got in that kit this morning with the hearts. So these are by the half metre, cut off the bolt so you can um, order this if you want a metre or five metres. Really beautiful print there with your reindeers and hearts. This is a linen look fabric. So these are all much thicker than those regular cottons. They do have um, more weight and body to them. They're lovely for those projects that are going to be maybe used a lot, things like bags or um, things that you're going to have in the kitchen, whether that's a doorstop or oven gloves and things like that. This patchwork one is really popular. This would be lovely for the big Christmas sack. And you could even sort of pick out some details with some, um, with the quilting or some free motion embroidery. You could fussy cut that really beautifully too as well, take different patches and sections. Then I haven't seen the grey before and I love the grey. I like it in the grey, yeah. Really contemporary. If you don't want to go for that quite as in your face and this doesn't, um, you know, this, this would be really lovely if you want to keep things a little bit more neutral. But that looks like lace with the white detail and then the hearts. 
I'll pull you there on the house. We it's need okay. to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to romp away show, too much. Show me where we get to. I don't want anyone to miss it. Then the next grey one is the patchwork in the grey. I'm going to open this a little bit because this is stunning. Look at that. Really lovely. And all those different squares have got a little something different to offer. So you've got little houses and reindeers and Christmas trees and. So that's the linen look Scandi patchwork in grey. Everyone's loving the Scandi prints this Christmas. Mm. It is a little bit Come. less in your face, isn't it? Yes. It's a bit more, um, feels maybe a bit more grown up. Then you've got your classic sort of swirls on this one. This reminds me a bit of a, um, you know when you have a gate in metalwork or something yes, like that? It's like a little filigree. bit like that. Yes. yes. Or a trellis. So that's the large swirl, $4.99. Then this one actually uses some of those um, prints. So it's got the swirl here, but in a patchwork design using more playful reindeers and also some hearts and stars. But some of just lots of the classic Christmas motifs coming through in that one. Then again, we're nearly there, Paul. It's then so we've got... cute. I really <laughs> like these. Do you like this one? I really like these. I've not seen this one. Santa's reindeers and hearts. Nice for as well if you want to do a um, children's project. Christmas love. So again, that might be a nice one for the Christmas um, sack. Then you've also got the swirls this time on a red background. This this is lovely mm. with um, that gold swirl coming through there. So you could mix and match those two together if you wanted to. And there's a nice sheen in that, like a glitter. If you can see it there, just catching the light. $4.99. All of these by the half meter. Then we've got another reindeer one. This one's just reindeer with your snow and sort of sparkles and snowflakes. Do you think we'll have snow this Christmas? I hope so. Do you, do yeah, you like I snow? I like snow at Christmas. I know it's not easy for driving, but no. it just looks so nice. It does nice. complete the look. Yeah. Have we had a white Christmas for not for years, not have we? Not for a while, no, a long time. No. Apparently they... Producer Paul said they reckon it will be this year, White Christmas. OK, we can play. We mm. can hope. And we can hope. Yep. I, only, I literally have shows Christmas Eve, shows Boxing Day, so I get to drive home for Christmas Day. If it snows, oh, no, I might be a bit that. like, please, no. <laughs> and then we've got one more reindeer one here with our Santas. Dancer, Dasher. No, what do you start with? <gasps> oh, I can never remember. Um, What's the first one? Da Prancer, Dancer, Rudolph. Dasher, Vixen. Comet. Comet. Rudolph. Rudolph. Da, 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 da. There's two more, isn't there? Oh, I don't know. That's your dancer, Prancer Vixen. Comet Blitz. Blitz. Blitzen. And... Oh, I nah, feel like we're missing no. one. Probably make up names. 499. <laughs> Bob. Bob. <laughs> JLFG 83. Those are all of your different um, lovely linen look fabrics. Perfect for the stocking. And for all those other Christmas projects you might have on the go. Yeah. So we've paused you, Paul. I just press pause. Okay, start. Right. Where we get up yep. to? Off we go again. Uh, so in all the front round, so you can now see the shape and the house starting to build up. There's lots of extra material I've left here that is literally so that uh, I know I wouldn't run out. I'd probably cut more than I need to, but that okay. is basically what it's going to end up like. And you left a little gap there, didn't you? You didn't stitch right to the I've top. I've left a gap so I can feed that weight bag through the top there. Ah, oh, I see. That makes okay. sense. Okay, and then that I will have, you can either finish off with machine stitching or hand stitch. I think I hand stitched when it did last time. Now attaching the back piece, you've got your centre line again, which I'm matching up with the centre line at on the, the bottom. bottom. Okay, so we're going to go around and again stitch that the same way. So why have you only used wadding on the back and not on the front? What was your reason for that? I wanted to create that low cabin effect purely on that. That quilted so look. There wasn't a need to do it on this one, but on that one I wanted that sort of log cabin effect you could even do it all the way around the sides yeah you could go right well. around couldn't you yeah if you, you could have done to. i could have done it right across the front so but it's that nice extra detail yeah there's your choice it's your your make you do what you want with it i thought the plainness of that material needed something it needed something to yeah. just because the front obviously is very yeah you, well you can jazz it up as much or as little as you like but you can really go to town with your buttons and even sequins if you wanted to and pom-poms and things like that but you could have put more doors on, you could have put more doors and windows on the back as well. 
You can make a little place map for this with a path coming yeah. through. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the most popular? This traditional gingerbread house, this is the most popular one this morning. Okay, good. So if you do like that one, you get your fabric, you get your felt as well. So for these applique windows, you get your instructions from Paul. So those are exclusive to sewing quarter. You get the pellets, you get your filling, your thread, and your meter of fabric, everything you need there, 24.99, LLGC 35. I didn't make up that you can make two out of that amount of fabric, did I? Or was that the cracker? The cracker you can make two out of. It's the cracker you can make two out of, okay. I think you probably could get two out of this. Do you think? Yeah. Because I was just thinking it's not Maybe huge, is it? Not, you might you need quite a bit for the roof. If you reverse the fabric, you'd have to have it as a dark house and a lighter roof. Yes. Mm. So again, my way of folding that around the bottom. Also, just a quick note as well, that Elna 680 that we just had on this morning, if you did like that, it has been a popular one, so you can uh, check that out on the website. We were going through all those features um, with Tilly and our designers. Well, if, if you've got the 680, no, you haven't got the no, 680 this morning. No, I've got morning, 540. Got the 540. 680 is a lovely machine now. But it is a, um, yes. a really lovely machine. Yes. I wouldn't mind one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, when you're a sewer, you end up coveting different machines and you keep thinking, oh, I need that machine, I'd like that machine, I'd like that machine. You have a house full of sewing machines. It's kind of justifying it, isn't it? Because yeah. I think it is an investment. And it, it is. And we're maybe not always that good at spending the money on ourselves. You wait for someone else to yeah. give you permission or to do it for you, and, you and especially on a big buy like that. So there, everything turns inside out now. And you're starting to look actually like a house now. Okay. Where's that brick? It's right over <laughs> here. Now this, make sure you leave a big enough space to get that in. Because yes. it might not look like it will fit, but there you go. So do you lay that flat in the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to level it out. So it's, it's the same sort of shape as the bottom. So give it a good shake about till you've got that weight. Obviously as well, there. using those um, the pellets and putting them in a bag, it means if that fabric cut, you're not going to end up with all little beads scattered everywhere. It keeps them all in one place and it also keeps the weight distributed nicely right at the bottom in one place as well. And I know Jo Carter's done that when she's done some of her toys as doorstops, mm. just to keep it all together. And if you manage to get some calico in that last hour, well, that's a perfect thing for the... Um, well done if you did manage to get it because it's sold out in minutes, but um, you can use that for this because yeah. you're obviously not going to see it or something that you've got in your stash. So what I'm doing is just pushing a little bit of toy stuffing down the side if the weight bag wasn't quite as big as the house. To fill Stuff it out. this in just to fill it out so that makes sure that weight bag stays in I place I can do that there. if you want. So you can that, that really ju is just filled right up to the top. So if you keep going with that, Stuff I shall go on to making I'll the roof. I'll carry on doing this, okay. Okay. But you're going to have loads of stuffing left over. There is. I think you only use about half of it because you've got most of the, the bottom is already done. I love stuffing. I find it really therapeutic. <laughs> I really do. Just, doing what? Sit there watch really, TV doing like it. just like cotton wool, just like, ah, like clouds. <laughs> have we got any pictures of door, um, doorstops sent in yet? Come on, send in some pictures. Let's have a look if you've got any. We'll try and get some sent in. Okay, so the roof. The roof. The roof is done. I've done it in two pieces. There's, that's one I've done before we'll come back to. Um, a piece of wadding gives a nice bit of structure to the roof. You could use interfacing as well. You could to quilt as well, that's Stiffen it a bit you? more. You, well, this is in effect quilting. When I'm putting the rick rack on, oh, you quilt okay. it. I've put three strips for rick rack going down and three across. One in the centre and then two evenly spaced. And they are stitched through the wadding and... So you are quilting with that? That, that was piece, my mistake, yes. yeah. So I just stitch those other so that, two um, on. So that the rick rack, well, that is available on the website. I don't know if we'll be able to get that up on your screens, but it's like the icing, isn't it? Yes. Do you bake? I do, yes. I cook more than bake. Do I haven't you? baked for a while, but uh, I bake bread. Bread? I love making bread. A bit of a Paul Hollywood Paul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's up from the same area as me. Oh, we, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we're both in that, that, that northwest area. Is he in Liverpool? Isn't he called Wally? Uh, Birken, Birkenhead, I think. Wall oh, okay. Wallacey, Birkenhead area. So this that. just... A, it is quilting, basically. We're putting the um, rick rack over the top. And this is where you could sew, sew the buttons on, like we've done with that one. OK. Oh, now, last time, someone messaged... 
walked in to say, which I thought was a really nice idea, what you could do with this, if you didn't want to use it as a doorstop, um, this is a, I love this when people, viewers message in ideas that we've not had, it's great, is that you could not, rather than sewing this on, you could Velcro the roof on, then you could leave the top undone and have, fill this up with sweets, so inside, then you could obviously make it a doorstop afterwards if you wanted to, but if you wanted to give it as a present stuffed with sweets, and then you've got that Velcro yeah. roof. Kind of like the piñata, actually, yes. but in the, no, certainly, in the shape You wouldn't have to break no, it. <laughs> you could just pop your hand in the top and take them out. So that's a really nice idea, because we've left one there on that side. What we said about see. that one is if you interface the front and the back, it would make them very stiff. So like that a gift bag. It would hold itself up, because otherwise you're relying on the stuffing inside. To keep if it. If you would take the stuffing out and fill it full of sweets. It's just going to be floppy fabric. Take the sweets out, yeah. so it's going to flop. But if you put interfaced front and back, that would create the structure. Just like, like a, a building like, house. Yeah, exactly, yeah, like a gift bag. And house. then you could have the roof like this, yeah. just Velcroed on, but you would just pop it off. You just see that there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so finishing off the roof, I'll, I'll put the other piece, which is the underside of the roof, goes on top, and then so all the way round, and then just gets turned inside out. Lovely. So you end up with that. So you end up with, end two, up with those. two halves of the roof. So and then that's we how just... to do that. So should we skip on to yeah. building it then? And we okay. Can get on to the crack. Has that got line. enough stuffing in there? A bit more? Uh, that will do, just, just for what we're, we're going okay. to show. So, so I can took, carry on took with all pleasure. The bits. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would fill it so that you, you do get quite a, nice a bit point. of a point there. But if we just leave, we leave that for now. Because what I then did is stitched the top. Okay. okay. We'll just quickly um, chat through this. So and then quickly we'll talk through the... this. The two roof pieces. You imagine that's already that's already been turned out. Put one on top of the other and stitch the two. If I just pin that one. So right sides together. Right sides together. And stitch across. So you'll have to use imagination here. <laughs> the graphic on your screen is for this traditional gingerbread house, but the Scandi one as well, we've got, and this is the most popular one, so in the two colourways with your browns there, but you've also got the option for the Scandi one, which is what Paul's making up at the moment. Okay, so you would have the two pieces of roof, that would be the same shape, the same Imagine size. That those Imagine it's the same size. Yep. So that goes on top there. So I folded one piece back and then just hand stitched all of that together. As one there. big sandwich, really. So when it's hand stitched on, you have it attached at the top. Okay. I did sew another piece of rickrack across the top there, as you'll see on that one. Like the icing. Just to make that join. It also look like it's a bit of snow on top. Yeah, just a yeah. little bit sort of icy. <laughs> By the way, we've had a few customers messaging in uh, requesting to see some items this morning. So they are working upstairs to try and get those for you. And we'll try and show them in just a minute. But just finishing this off with Paul. So um, you would sew all of those layers underneath. Yep. And then you just leave it. Would you leave it hanging or do you then attach at the no, side? No, what I did then, where you've got the, where the rickrack is, I peeled it back and then hand just tacked the inside there. Yeah. And then the same again on that row there. And not necessarily on that bottom one. So what you get is just some hand stitching, you can see it there. To stop it just sort of flapping all the way it. back, yeah. And also because people are going to pick it up by the roof. Yeah. So you don't want to, yeah. the roof coming off. Or if, you, so if it, it fell over sure and really then you get well your foot, fixed. you know, if yeah. it just stops anything coming away, doesn't it? Perfect. Well, so that's the, that's the gingerbread it. house. That's yeah. how, that was a quick skim through of how to do it. I'm um, looking at all of your instructions as well there yeah. that come in the kits. So Paul's put all of that together and the template as well on the reverse for the main body of the house. Yes, all the other pieces are just oblong or square pieces. So just, they're and you've got the measurements here. And all here. the measurements are on there. So. And you've got your seam allowance and everything yep. all, talk, all talked through in that. Exactly. Now, we've also got some other popular makes in this album because you did a Christmas cracker draft Christmas excluder cracker. as yes. well. So it's like, oh, I think that's your little, I don't want you to lose your bit of pattern. Now we've got two kits for these. We're just going to grab, have we got those Christmas crackers? I might just grab one. I'm just gonna grab one. Thank you, Chris. Um, so I'll show you what one of these looks like. Lovely. So this is really lovely to so just to pop by your um, pop by your door or your patio doors yes. or somewhere, can't you? Yeah. And under the tree, when under, the presents are all gone. Some, you've still got some, something yeah, else under the tree. Yeah, you could stack them up, couldn't yeah. you? So you could have like a little pile of crackers. Yeah. Even in the middle of the table. 
you could have good. it. That'd be that nice could be good. And then you could have plates yes. by the side. So you've got that big cracker, and it uses a, a bolster cushion, which comes like this as part of your kit. Now, this one, it's only $12.99, so if you were... Um, with this kit, you have got enough fabric to make two crackers, but you will need to buy an additional uh, bolster cushion if you do want one. Um, but So, yeah, within the uh, kit itself, you do get the bolster, you get your fabric, you get your instructions and your thread. And this is the foiled cracker you can see here. But Paul's going to work with the um, holly fabric, which comes in the other kit option. How do we get started with this? I'll take us started with this. Um, on this one, I just cut one, only again, the measurements are on the instructions. I cut one long piece and then I attach in green and then I attach the red pieces onto it. Okay, Where so I, kind of layered it. I went differently with this one. I actually cut strips because I thought, well, if, I, if you're doing that, you're covering up some of your, your fabric. Yeah. Okay, it makes less it wastage. a little bit thicker. But this way, I thought there's less wastage. So I worked out what the measurements were for each piece. I did a bit of seam allowance. So it's a bit like patchwork, so, so really? So that way, I could get two different ones. So oh, I've ended so you up can with, have it. Yeah, so from the two half metres, you're in, I could get two. Two crackers out So you don't out have that. to just buy another bolster and you've got enough, two. For, enough for two. So yeah. you cut your strips. I've cut the strips and then I've just seam them together. Okay. Like in traditional quilting style, pressed towards the dark. Side. Yes, so you can't yep. see it underneath. So exactly. you haven't got that shadowing under there. Yep. So we've got two different options here for making crackers. Then the next bit would be... The next bit we're is... We're going to roll at some point. We're going to roll it. So you fold it in half lengthways. And I'm just going to stitch along there. Now, I've cut two... So I'll cut around the circles for the end in, in a moment. Get those out of the way. Don't want to stitch okay. those in yet. I'm okay. stitching halfway along. Again, leave a gap in the middle to turn it out through. So if I go as far as the, the red colour, just a little bit more and then back stitch. Back stitching so that when you turn it through, it's not going to unravel. No. And also, again, this is the sort of thing that might be, I don't want to say kicked around a bit, but if it's on the it floor, might it's, it might do. Yes, you so never a bit know. of wear and tear. A nice simple make. Yes, but we're going to finish this opening off with a hand stitch at the end anyway. Do you know what this reminds me of? My great nan, when we used to go to her house, and, it's, and it was years, I lost my great nan years and years ago, but that she had a big um, draft excluder in the shape of a snake. And when I was younger, yes. it used to really scare me. <laughs> I, thought, I used to be like, I don't want to go to great nannies because she's got a snake. She's got a snake, <laughs> snake by the front door. <laughs> but she just had it like all the way in her like, flat by the patio doors. Now I'm putting a circle into the end. So sewing a circle into anything like that is never the easiest of things to do, I don't find anyway. So I found a good way to do it, fold it to get the quarter points. Yeah. Now you can either just finger press these or you could mark them, mark them on with a pen. Okay. So to do those. So if you match those up at the quarter points, You've just got something you know to refer to, even. yeah. So pin your first one in. Open up your seams. You would press these normally. But we're doing a quick roundup, aren't we? That's all right. So I was trying to think of a, a, another way of putting these into here, but I couldn't think of a... Of a different way. A simple When you've got way. a whole circle, it's never really sort yeah. of... Yeah. I thought maybe if you, if you just... What? Cut little notches all the way around, and that might be yeah. easier to do. But um, I just thought, well, if you go with it and go for that sort of scrunched effect. Yes, on here, on the bottom. Kind yeah. of like um, little darts almost, aren't they? Yeah. Or like pleated, you can have that effect it's, there. It's gathering in effect. Just pushing that through. So again, putting that through, find your quarter point. Do you often design things from scratch? Have you done much of, of that before? Do you, have you um, previously I've, followed patterns? I've done some fancy dress costume from scratch. <laughs> have you? Yes. What have you done? <laughs> I did a, oh, going back years, you know, the um, Busby that was the um, big yellow bird. Yes. That, uh, yeah, yeah. From te advertising. Um, I've done, I did the elephant costume for on the Great British Sewing Bee. I used to make uh, my own costumes when I was in the... Civil War reenactment society. 
Oh, wow. So we had to make all our own. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, you know, many years ago. And um, we had to make our own outfits then, or outfits, uniforms, because you couldn't buy them. No, so you have couldn't to just put, them, throw so. something together yeah. and sort of... So I'm just oh, going to go so around good. that circle now, and then we'll see about how to turn that through. Okay. Oh, I've just had that. a little announcement in my ear, a very exciting announcement in my ear. We, Paul, I'm going to have to pause... If you just leave you for a few minutes. We've managed to get a needle threader back in stock, so we're going to quickly show you that. Have you oh, seen this before? One, yes, yes. Irene Colt, you're, well, okay. Last week when we had this on, um, was Irene in last week? She or was, we, yes. We didn't have the we stock, so um, we didn't have it. We've managed to get it in today, so we've managed to get what little VT put together to show you exactly how to use it. We're going to show you that now so you can see the uh, needle threader, and then I'll give you the graphic number for that if you do want to buy one of those this morning. If you've not seen this before, Amazing. This Irene, I did Irene's first show with her when she was here at Sewing Quarter. Some of the team discovered her at one of the, uh, the big shows. I don't know if it was Festival of Quilts or somewhere like that. And this is absolute, this is magic. If you, can't, if you can't quite see your needle eye or you want to take that work out of it, um, then this is the trick for you. So let's have a look at this little VT of how to use the needle threader. can't see which direction we're putting the needle in. So well, it's the hole of the, the needle. eye. It's yeah. called an eye, eye joint. Eye, okay. oh. eye goes down. Thread's hanging without any tension. And okay, where, where did, so it just went... Just drop it. Okay, just, yeah. drop, oh, just drop it in there, right? And then as we slide the button, if you watch the needle, it's actually turning or nudging yes. the needle to find the eye. How does... Well, I'm not going to ask her just that, because that... No, that's a secret. Then we pull the thread and we take the needle. So you just drop the needle in any direction whatsoever? Straight, and emphasis on the dropping, because if you try to place it and dig it in, it can get trapped. Oh, OK. So, or it goes at the wrong angle. Yeah. So I'm going to confuse it now by twisting you it around. You do that. And I've just dropped it in. Yeah. Thread's there. Yeah, oh, no oh. tension on the thread, and just slide the button. If the loop doesn't come through the first there, time, we do it again, but it usually is there. Right, keep so going, what do you keep, keep going, pulling? Keep going until the end comes through, and then you've got single thread. Oh, because this is just for this is just, just for single, single thread. thread. And then you just pull it out. Yeah. <gasps> so don't put a knot. Don't even put a knot. With in a knot. Mm, even with a knot. That's got a knot on it. <laughs> so even with a knot, that will work. Not intentional, but okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Single. Got that? Are we do yeah, it once yeah. more. Yeah. Hannah's got very quiet. But right. Yes. Okay. Double. She's just watching. She's enthralled by <laughs> I'm you. I'm glad. So, equal length on either side. What are we doing now, sorry? We're doing double. Oh, OK. Yeah. But you still put the thread in? In the, the same, same position. Way. Well, the obvious way would be to double it, That's wouldn't it? That's what I was thinking, right? yeah. So I thought you were reading my mind. So, oh, no, I was reading yours, yeah. maybe. <laughs> so, look, then we tend to only get one loop through, and you would uh, be hoping for double. So okay. you could keep hitting and hitting. It doesn't really seem to happen. So you hold that little bit of thread, and I'm pulling that through. And sure enough, it's double, and we take out the needle. Right. But a customer with a rather more logical mind than I've got yes. said, why on earth don't you just half the thread? And then we got exactly the same oh, loop. Oh, yes. And then, of course, you pull it just halfway. OK. And we're out. And it's shockproof as well. Yes, <laughs> it is very durable. <laughs> and then a lot of ladies, oh, not sexist comment, yes, a lot yes, of people <laughs> who do cross-stitch use that loop to go through to start. Shall I quickly show? I mean, I, I didn't mention that to you, but we could. No, you didn't mention that no. to me before. Shall we show it? Yes, but yes, the yes, ladies yes. know it, so it's like yes. teaching granny to. No, okay. no, no, it's fine. not. Isn't you could never presume. No, I'm sorry. There could be somebody watching that so, like Hannah today who knows nothing about this. So that little loop, and you go through the material, needle through the loop, and there we don't need a knot. Oh, wow. And we Did teach you that, that to school, to kids in school, because they make a, an almighty knot, and yes, it's, it's yes, a big yes. mess. But that's a fantastic, because a lot of yeah. the times, when you're, when you're um, sewing the binding on and things like that, you, you normally have yeah. to take the end and push it back through, whereas that, you just, yeah. you just start off. Oh, sorry, so I'm not putting the end yeah, go, go. on the table. Yeah, single thread through, yeah. but half and Way. half, right? Now, it's no, missed it the thread, work. so I'm moving... Oh, terrible. Seriously. There you go, there you go. Right? Now, pull that just enough to make it secure, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. And then take the needle. And then go through... Then level it off. Yeah, and then go through that loop. <gasps> OK? So we've done single thread and we've done double thread. What else does it do? Glitter thread. Shall we talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's like no. a lame metallic, he throws yes, it in. Exactly. Let's have a look at it. And because that's quite... I call it springy, I don't know yeah, what the yeah, word yeah. is. That's, that's it's kind of not springy, but it's kind of a bouncy, it's kind of a, it's not word. stretchy, but it's, oh, you can, here, look, this is what it's, you know the, the, the threads you can use, it's kind of like um, a lame or a lurex, or well, a lurex thread, really, isn't it? But anyway, so. And very effective on Christmas um, work. Oh, you're you being know, all Christmas. topical now. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say it's Easter? Nice <laughs> very good for decorating bunnies. your Easter eggs <laughs> your and your bunnies. bunnies. Okay. So I've, I've doubled that because it needs a little bit more weight. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've, you've actually doubled when you put it in there. You've doubled. I've laid it, it there yeah. double. Even though earlier I said don't lie, they double. Yeah. But, and I tend to hold that button because so that it doesn't spring back because, in. Because yeah, on the normal thread, you let go of that yeah, button at the beginning, didn't you? Yeah. Whereas this one, you keep hold of it until you yeah. pulled it through. Would you like double or single? Are you really single, please. Single for, yeah. Make me work a bit harder. Yes. Oh. Brilliant. Right. So we've done single, yeah. double, oh, springy. Springy, springy. Um, invisible, if I could see it. Well, that's because it's invisible. <laughs> oh, was that you making a joke? No, no, no. I could, genuinely couldn't see it. Right? This yeah. is invisible. A wee bit more tricky for obvious reasons. Yes. But you've done a double one on that I've as well. I've done it double, and I have to go down to make sure... There it is. It's there. I think. Is it there? I don't know. I can't see. It's invisible. <laughs> <sighs> There we are. You see, because that's really difficult it to is. thread a needle it normally, is. isn't it? Right, OK, so... So now, multiple threads. Why would you need multiple threads? Very pretty. Cross-stitch, embroidery. Oh. It's called blending. Blending? It's a new Indeed one on it there. Is. It was to me when I started 20-odd years ago. Normally, normally when we use cross... When, when we do embroidery, you use a bigger eye needle, but I'm trying to be... Oh, show, OK, so show off, off. yeah. yeah. So whatever comes through, which is usually one, occasionally two, we just pull that and then realign the thread so that I haven't mentioned what's happening inside. There's a little bar. I didn't tell you about the bar. Oh, so it pulls the third one through. Yeah. So then I'm going to move the thread again. Oops. Get that. Now, let's hope they're all through. So this is and if you're doing multiple strands but with a normal needle. Yeah. I must emphasise, most ladies would use a longer eye. Yes, Certainly yes, a longer yeah, eye. Yeah. And does now, the machine work with a longer eye, then? Very much so. Oh, okay, I'm just right, right. showing it on tiny yeah. ones. Now, usually it's done, but I wanted to double-check. And by checking, I mean making sure that the bar I've just mentioned to you has gone through the not eye. Not the normal bar. <laughs> not the bar we like. Uh, you. <laughs> right. We. Hold that little button, yeah. which is spring-loaded. Yeah? yeah? And if the needle doesn't move, then that means that the bar is engaged. So now I know that one's 100% thread. Okay. So then I'm taking my multiple threads. You see, okay. oh, there's the invisible thread trying to make another comeback there. You'd, because you'd never be able to do that just by I, trying to put it through a in a ne so. normal needle like that, impossible. I don't think so. OK. And that, I think that's about it. I can add that one to this if you wanted to. Oh, you the, can the, actually oh, oh. try. It doesn't always catch it, depending on the size so of the eye. So you wouldn't put your lame through with your... I would. I just oh, okay. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, meant to, I meant to do four, but I only did three. So I'm definitely going to check it to make sure that yeah, it's got it. Yeah. So we've well, added... Is, there yeah. we are. And that's double, so that's kind of five threads <gasps> through that little eye. Yeah? Brilliant. Permission to go to the other side? It, it, oh, 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 there's another hole. Oh, there is. OK, so we've that, been using one with the white... Only with the white cap. Top, I didn't realise there yeah, was another one. Yeah, and yet. the top lever. Oh. So now we're... Yeah. So what you... Ribbon? Ribbon. What needle have you put through? What needle have you put in there? Oh, like a bodkin yeah. needle, yeah, like a darning needle. You're going to ask me what size. I is it the same thing? Can you put it in any direction again? <sighs> More or less. Shall we do... Shall I just drop it in? Yeah, it? see what happens. Right. Sometimes it turns it. Oh, it turns Again, it I can check it. It yeah. did turn it. Um, <gasps> but given that we can actually see the eye, why not put it in in the right direction? Okay. And I forgot to say, for health and safety reasons, thread first. <laughs> That's what they tell us on my risk. Well, just in case the ladies catch their eye. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. That's for my risk assessment. Yes, so that's, that's fine. Double. You covered yourself there. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's brilliant for when you're doing ribbon work, isn't it? When it, you're yeah. kind of um, threading it, if you're threading it through any other kind of fabric, that's exactly. absolutely brilliant. Um, then, I don't want to jump ahead, but can you, do it, with the, can you do it with elastic? Um, yes, next time. No, no. Bring no. elastic. <laughs> can, like sharing a elastic. Sharing, sharing elastic, elastic very much so. Elastic. How yeah. brilliant. So that's ribbons. Ribbon. What have you got now? This, we're not sure. 
Organza, I think it is. Yeah, Organza That's ribbon. That's what I yeah. call it. Yeah. Same. Brilliant. And then, oh, which shall we use? Oh, my Slightly, word. Because that's the challenge, the last What on earth's is that? It's for putting eyes in teddy bears. It's for what? Putting eyes in soft toys. I've never seen, now maybe we show Joe Carter this. I've never seen a needle that long before. Okay, sorry. And it hasn't got a particularly big eye, so no. I have to do this. I have to kind of feed it through. It is through, but so, just do so it a couple of times. So all the thicker times. ones on that side of that. Exactly. Yeah. And Identical. I don't think we'd want that double, so no, exactly. we're going to pull one end through. And then <gasps> take the needle. And... Knitting wool? Knitting wool. Is that the same needle? No, this is a bigger eye. OK. Now, I can't tell you what I'm, uh, size. I think a 20, but big. OK. Big as well. Yeah, that's the kind of... People who work with wool, that's the kind of needle they have, yeah. And again, make sure, look, because this can split it a little bit so just really really feed it through and be brutal yes. when you pull it through okay brilliant and that's the wool fantastic Okay, so you've just seen there that demo from Irene. Last week we had this in. If you're wondering what's happening, it's because last week it was on and the stock wasn't there, so we didn't have it for you. So this morning we've managed to get it back in stock. We have got these here. So our apologies about that, but we did want to bring it in as soon as we got it back. And we quite literally did that this morning. As soon as these arrived, we've got these back on air for you. So if you did want to get a needle threader, one of these in feeder needle threaders from Irene, absolutely fantastic. You can... People buying four, three, multi-buying eight. One lady's bought eight of these this morning. So maybe giving them as little presents, um, stocking fillers. But you can drop different needles in there, as you've just seen, and automatically thread that needle without having to worry about pushing it through the eye. Really simple and straightforward to use. And it just stores away really easily. You just slip that back in there like that. I've got one of these. They're great. They are really easy to use. ZBZI91. So you've just seen that demo from Irene. If you did miss out last week, you can check your baskets out on that now, 595. Now, something else that someone asked for this morning is this case that we launched yesterday. So this was a premiere yesterday, a brand new product. So if you missed us, maybe you're not around at the weekends to see us. Um, this is a brand new product that we've had from Prim. And it's a storage case here that you can see with all these different compartments. But it comes with these poppers inside. So you get 300 poppers. There are 10 different colours. I'll just peel that back so you can see. But those little snap poppers there that you can use um, for dressmaking, for um, attaching and securing maybe little bags or purses in pinks, blues, purples. But someone's asked to see those. You get 300 in total. And then inside the actual case itself, let's tip that down. I do not want to drop those everywhere. Um, you can just see you get these little dividers that you can use to separate the sections. So look, oh, that's upside down. But lots of people asked to see that again today, so I'm just going to show you it quickly, if you did miss it. Let's slide that into place. Doing it upside down. There we go. So that is the Prim Colour Snaps box set with those 300 poppers in there and the case itself that you can then use. And stackable as well, if you wanted to have multiple uh, ones of those to store your bobbins or your threads or notions and things like that, then you can do. So, back to Paul. We were in the middle of doing our cracker before we quickly showed you that interruption for the, um, Irene's needle threader. So we were just going to finish this off, weren't we, Paul? Yeah, just quickly. I've uh, sewn the circle onto the, the end piece. Yes. So I found the easiest way to get the, this sort of stuff was a bit like putting a, pin, putting a duvet on. Yeah. Duvet cover hand onto right a duvet. In. Put your hand through, it's like a sock grab hold of the end bit and grab hold of the filler. Do you know what that reminds me of? My screen test the first time I came into the sewing quarter studio. And I was in here with John, and um, John was pretending to be the guest, so you can imagine the fun we had, and I was obviously being me. And um, we, John was making like a sock puppet toy, and he was, <laughs> that's what he was making, and I was asking him, so how do you do this, and da 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 And that was just like that. So that gets stuffed right into the end. In there. Have we got that made-up cracker here? And the same on, on the other side. OK. I'm not sure where it goes. So you push that all the way through. Yeah. And then, imagine you've done the same with that bit. I just tied a piece of ribbon around there, so in effect you've got the centre of the cracker, the bit of tie, and that is the end of your cracker. To make the end. So that is quickly. I wrap presents like that as well. Cracker. If you've got like tubes of sweets, or yeah. I do ribbons around the wrapping paper on the end. Yeah, just tie a piece of ribbon, or you can make um, a, a ribbon tie yourself out of what you've got left. 
pom poms or but oh this. yes, you could do like a binding if you wanted yeah. to, like a bias binding. Yeah. Lovely. So that's the cracker. Okay, just so quickly skim through that one so you can get an idea of how to do it. In your kit, you get your bolster, you get your fabric. So you've got a meter of fabric there, which is enough to make two draft excluders. And then you've also got your instructions and everything that you need and um, that Paul's written down. And got. So you've got everything there that you need in order to actually do it from start to finish. So two different colour combinations for that. You've got the um, the holly fabric in the red and white, and then you've also got the foiled version in the green and red with some gold glitter yes. for good measure. Yes, something different. Now, the final thing, this is really popular this morning, the Christmas sack. So this one here is a really lovely... Have we got the made-up one? Stay here for one second. Let me just grab it. I'll keep talking. Here we go. But it's a really lovely big... Um, big Christmas sack for all those presents. So for Father Christmas, you could tie this. You could pop this on the um, fireplace. So this morning, you're not getting the fabric for this. You can use any of those um, Scandi or linen look fabrics that we've had this morning, or in fact, any fabrics you might even have at home. This is an accessories kit to make the big sack there with the drawstring bag. So you get the ribbon, I mean the um, rope, which has got a really nice sort of rustic feel to it. And then your eyelets as well just in here and you, you can't see on the graphic we've got the end of that's missing but you also get your um bond web don't you included in that kit too yes so everything there you can see and what i like as well about that um plus those instructions but about that nautical rope is that it would look really lovely with these scandy fabrics i'm going to pick out that gray patchwork one yeah go well with the both of them you can you could team any of these up with that linear look fabric with the rope, if you want a more of a natural feel to that. Okay, so how do we do this one then, Paul? This was done in strips, pieces. So I've done it in the Scandi. I've Good served, old patchwork. Yeah, you can see it better from looking at it from the back because these two are very similar. Yeah. Um, might have been better with a plain colour top and bottom and your pattern in the middle. Okay. So your front and your back are basically the same. So you're stitching two together like that. The front piece where the eyelets are. Now this was the only, I'm, they may fall out when I turn it because I haven't hammered them into place yet. You attach with your bonder web a small piece to the back there in the center and then stitch it in place. Cut two little notches to feed your eyelets through. Yep. Now they come in two separate pieces. Once they're in, you Once can't always in. get well, them Well, I haven't out. hammered them in okay. yet. So you pop one through from one side, pop the fixing ring over the top, then it comes with a tool, put on top of that and give it and a good, good, good hammer. You yeah. may have heard me trying to hammer <laughs> earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what that noise was earlier oh, on. I, yeah. I heard a noise earlier on, so you, you and bang that, that, that into that's place. That's what it comes out like, so it's quite fixed from both sides. And which is really lovely to thread the rope through. If we've got the end yeah. of that rope there, you can see. That will go neatly through It just through stops there. it. It's, it's going to just flow really nicely through there to create the drawstring. Yeah, and it stops it fraying. So you've got those two sides of that, two sides of the bag. Then what was, what's the next okay, bit? Okay, so I'll take those out because they're going to fall out anyway because okay. they've not been hammered We've only got in. about two minutes or so, but just okay. to give you an idea. So you sew right sides together. So all the way around on that one. And then turn it the right way inside out. We've got time to do that. Um, and throw yeah, the line because I've, I've already stitched the lining. Okay. Okay. So I quickly go all the way around there. Like I said, this bundle doesn't include fabric, so you can use anything you like, but the bundle does include all of the accessories to make it with the rope, with the eyelets. You get all of your instructions, their colour instructions there with your templates as well for the drawstring sack and your bonder web too. And you'll have plenty of eyelets there left over if you want to start adding them. You'll be getting... Um, it's about 10 in a pack, 10 or 12 you'll be in a pack. Them to everything. Yeah. And that bottom edge. But you could put any colours in this you wanted. Mix and match Mix them. Mix and match. It's a nice heavy weight as well, this. So make some... The linen look fabrics yeah. are. But also as well, you could. what I like the idea of with these is that you could embellish it with an initial or a name yeah. and make it really personal. You could like, pop along the back bottom strip there if you wanted to write, you know, Merry Christmas or something like that. It comes with that Christmas tree template in the booklet as well. So you can add that in if you want to. That's where the booklet comes from. 
those are your instructions. And again, as well, the same technique you could use for a laundry bag if you wanted to. So you could do this with regular fabric as opposed to Christmas prints and have that as a laundry bag. All your templates there. Oh, oh, okay, we've only got a few seconds go. left. Oh, okay. I know. Oh, goes too quickly, doesn't it? Too quickly. Oh, too quickly. So we turn that through. Sorry to rush you. Yep. Turn that through and then the lining goes. You drop that in. No, you, I'm doing oh, you that don't. the other way round. You stitch your lining again the same, but you leave a little bit of the side open to turn everything out. I put the bag inside the lining. This is like making so they are right sides together. Yep. So all the way around the top, and then everything gets turned through. Pull it through. There, and it's the right side round. Then you would stitch this line of casing to, to create a, a tunnel through. for the rope. Yeah. So basically, you've got stitching there and stitching there to allow a right channel for the rope, and that goes through the lining and the front. Perfect. Feed it through and tighten knots. Speedy, speedy, speedy. Sorry, <laughs> take a deep breath. I know, that was quick this morning. I'll come and see you in a minute. Anyway, but thank you very much. Will you in again soon? Uh, yes, about two weeks. Okay, yeah. see Paul in a couple of weeks. I'll just recap those kits we've again. had this morning and I'll see you shortly. Right. Okay, so take these instructions. So the needle threader, if you've just seen that demo that we played and um, the VT back from when John had Irene on last week. So this is an automatic needle threader. If you do struggle with your eyesight, it's a really great tool, even if you don't, just to make your life a bit simpler. You just slide that in the top there and you can see these two different holes where you drop in the needle and you can use needles of all different sizes. You don't have to worry about the direction of the eye of the needle because it will find it. So what happens is, Irene mean, quite often suggests that you can just take off those little caps, but you drop the needle in. Can you see that there going across? It would help if I move my finger. Just sliding, that there slides through and it pushes the thread through the needle, through that hole at the side. And it finds the eye of the needle just so it can get that thread pushed right through. So a really nifty little tool, a great stocking filler, 595. And you can use it with thicker threads. So perhaps if you've got a metallic thread. So many people with this in their baskets, you do have to check this out. ZVZI91, the automatic needle threader from Infila. And this is Irene's little gadget. She was in last week and we didn't have the stock. Now also you do get a little, um, there's a little stopper there, but you can keep your needles in the side. And then you can take that off the top, slide it under like that. We wanted to bring it back as soon as we had it back in stock, kind of as an apology, really, because we know last week that was a bit of a setup to show you it all and know that you could see it and then to say, oh, we haven't got it. So we have got it back in today. If you do want it, loads of you multi-buying these. Someone's just bought eight in one go. So they're obviously giving them maybe to everyone in their sewing group. So ZBZI91, the needle threader this morning. If you missed it, today's the day to, we'll make it up to you if you do want one of those. Now, the other thing we've brought back, back by popular demand, is our popper snap box, which we launched yesterday. So this is a premier project, uh, product, brand new. You get 300 poppers in here in all of these different colorways. So they're all just in those little sections there. You've got all of your different colors, 30 of each color. And obviously you get the um, sort of male and female parts that you can pop together to create that snap in clothes or bags or purses. Rain Max, that's what that, those little plastic poppers remind me of. And inside, you've got those channels. So you could use this um, if you wanted to, just as general storage. You could take all of the poppers out and, and pop them in a bag or a container of some sort. And then you've got these removable, dividable sections. Oh, that's a good idea. Producer Paul just said you could use these little poppers for the gingerbread house. You could pop on the lid if you wanted to make that um, removable. Or like one of our viewers said, if you wanted to use the gingerbread house to um, give someone a gift of some sweets. So you could keep the, um, keep the lid removable, have that Velcroed or poppered on, take the lid off, have your sweets inside if it's interlined. And then you've got a, um, you've got a little gingerbread gift bag. Talking of gingerbread, they have got a kit for that there this morning. The most popular one is the gingerbread house kit in the traditional colourway, which is this one you can see here. So you've got your browns and creams and your um, felts for your applique too. So that's the one you definitely need to check out your baskets if you like the traditional gingerbread house this morning. 
Now let's have a look what's coming up tomorrow. So is it Tash in tomorrow? The Tash is in tomorrow morning. Bags of Fun at eight o'clock. That's with Jennifer Taylor. Then at nine o'clock, Alistair's in tomorrow. So House of Alistair with Tash as well. Then at 10 o'clock is a Christmas tree skirt. I know we've had some requests on social media for that one. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And 11 o'clock, House of Alistair again. So more Alistair. So you've got a double whammy of guests and Natasha back in tomorrow morning. Now, I'm not in now for absolutely ages because I'm off to do Cinderella in Epsom this Christmas. So, oh no, I'm not. Oh yes, I am. What's the other one we've got? It's behind me. It's not behind me. No, yeah, I'm off to do Cinderella, playing Cinderella this Christmas in Epsom. So if you live in Surrey, come and say hello. I'd love to see you. Off to do some panto. Um, I'll be in after Christmas. Obviously, you've got John and Tash and Derek. They're still, oh no, you're nodding in my ear. Uh, Derek Lovett might be here a bit in December as well. But a big thank you to our guests and for you for joining us this morning. We've obviously had Paul and Tilly in doing our gingerbread houses our stitch journals, those lovely pet stockings and things as well. I'm going to miss you all. I'll see you all after Christmas. I have a lovely Christmas, which seems crazy to say it. And I'll see you in the new year. Bye. Christmas has come early with a special gift to you on Tuesday, the 21st of November, exclusive to our Facebook followers. Head to our Facebook page at 12.30 p.m. on Tuesday when I will host a half hour Facebook live show. As well as fun with festive fabrics, I'll reveal some more special surprises and an amazing discount, so you'll be sure to grab a bargain. You won't want to miss out. So be sure to like our Facebook page in preparation for this exciting event and watch me, Natasha, live on Tuesday the 21st of November from 12.30pm.